it up to Dowling, and there's the pass to Dowling. Dowling going to take a shot. Audrey Keeter across to Keezer. Keezer shot in. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to day two of the 2022 USPSA MK Battery Conference Cup Championship Series. We are live at the Plasman Athletic Center here at Turnstone in Fort Wayne, Indiana. For Power Soccer Shop, I'm Tony Jackson. And joining me in the broadcast booth this morning from the Bay State Falcons, Brendan White. Brendan, good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? Good, how are you? Doing well, doing well. You're having a good tournament so far. We talked about that, right? Oh, yeah, we're 2-0 so far. Start off day one, go to two wins. And we're hoping to keep that going today with two more. Fantastic. So our first game of the day is LASC versus the Courage Kenny Blizzards. Both of these teams are undefeated. They started off their tournament really well with two wins. So we'll have to see who's able to stay in the field after this one is finished. We'll say. So one of these teams will not be anymore undefeated by yeah. the end of this match. Alexander Laro now for LASC, preparing to take the kick. And there's a shot, and that one right behind the goalkeeper, and a goal early for LASC. Great start. Great start for them indeed. Let's catch the replay of that one. LASC starting off fast, 1-0 the score. This is going to be interesting to see how the Blizzards rebound from this because as you said they're undefeated so far they haven't faced much much adversity yet during this competition he had a lot of space on that shot he did and actually it was a really good shot because he took it right behind the goalkeeper Wyatt Sexton oh, smart play. we restart play here Chase Martinez And we got a two-on-one violation on LASC. The Blizzards with an indirect free kick. Joe Boerboom over to Bardell. Bardell with a pass. Oh, my goodness. Perfect shot. Let's watch that one again, ladies and gentlemen. The Blizzards almost got one in. Wonderful pass by D. Bardell. And, wow, they were just late on it. Great opportunity. They should have capitalized on that. Martinez, that ball bounces off the back of his chair. Lauro now taking on Bardell. And I have to say, it's great to see Dee Bardell back out here. She has been playing for quite a long time, but this is her first return to Nationals in a while. So it's really good to see her out here. Um, she's really been through a lot over the last few months, um, losing her mom not too long ago. So it's really good to see her out here playing again. Yeah, that's good. Alexander Laro now off of Martinez. Blizzard's ball. Bower boom over to Bardell. Nice touch to Bardell. Bardell now driving. Now you'll see D. Bardell is playing in a quickie P200, which for a long time was the chair of choice mm -hmm. for players around the country. Um, and then the strike force came along in 2012 and rapidly became the chair for everybody to use. And we have a three in the box violation, it looks like. And so now LASC oh, looking to go up 2 0 here. Could take a 2 0 lead early on. Bardell does a, it seems like he does a really good job using that quickie because, I mean, Everybody has strike forces nowadays, and 
You don't see much of those, but he keeps up with everybody with that guy. Yeah, she's got that pretty finely tuned. And uh, yeah. that pass earlier was really good from her. Yeah. Lauro now. The shot across, and that one oh. went behind Alba. That's going to go out of play. I think there was a little bit of miscommunication, miscommunication there, yeah. yeah. That ball caught off by Alba. Boerboom and Alba. Nice move by Boerboom. Alba, the pass across. Lara, that's close to a two on one violation. That ball out of play. Kick in coming up for the Blizzards. So for the Blizzards, also on the floor, 007, Tejash Rana. 007, really? That is correct. Wow. You don't see that every day. You don't see that every day. The last time I saw 007, he was being consumed by a nuclear fire. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm glad he's made it out. <laughs> Chase Martinez taking on Dee Bardell in the Blizzards goal area. Fighting for the ball, both of them, Martinez. Working, trying to get that ball around Bardell. The kick out to Lauro, back to Martinez. Uh, he almost had some good passing there. Yeah, Bardell's doing good trying to hold it off. And now Martinez gets around her. Wyatt Sexton, the goalkeeper. That ball rolling out over the end line. Corner kick Corner. for LASC. Another opportunity. See what they can do, see if they can do the same as the first one. Yeah, it looks like they have a pretty good setup here. Alba at the far post, Martinez at the near post. Sexton and Bardell in a classic L defense. Martinez laid on that, Boer boom, sends it down the floor. Rana now, nice turn, gets that ball heading toward the LASC goal area. And Anthony Lopez in goal, pushes it out. Now I think he could have let that roll out for a goal kick. He probably could have. But now it is a kick in for the Blizzards. Let's see if they can get a goal. The kick out, Rana with a shot off of Martinez. Rana now driving in. That's going to go out for a corner kick for the Blizzards. Seventh minute of the match. If you're just joining us, LASC leading 1 0. Both teams have had some good opportunities. They that have a, indeed. That was a good set play by. The Blizzards, but also good defense in California. The referee getting the LASC players in proper position. Now, Martinez in the plain white jersey needs to be five meters from the corner triangle mark, which is just in yeah. front of Lopez in goal. So now Boer Boom taking the kick for the Blizzards. Trying to find the space. It looks like it's going up to Rana. That ball comes all the way across. Bardell comes out to save it. That's a close to a two on one. And there's the call. Come Rana on, and Bardell. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, LA can get it down there and get the pressure off him. You know, let's see if they can hold it on this end of the floor. I will see. Martinez, nicely done to no. just let that ball slide through. And it's going to be a kick in for the Blizzards. And now LA will have to try to keep the ball on this end of the floor. Yeah. So Brendan, your first game of the day is coming up next. It Who's is. your opponent? We're playing as the Dasa Firecrackers. Dasa Firecrackers. Yep. They are, I believe they're currently 0-2. Yeah, so. we saw them playing yesterday. I believe it was against the Hot Shots. Yep. And that was that was actually a really close game. The Hot Shots won that at the last minute yesterday. Oh, really? Was it, that was on court one? It was indeed on court one. And now we're going to get a foul on Lauro. Rana got knocked around there in the goal area. So free kick coming up for the Blizzards. People are starting to file into the Plasman Athletic Center. It's day two, all four conferences are here. 36 teams, over 260 athletes are in the building this weekend. It's going to be a full house for the next two days. Oh, yeah. 
Rana now on defense at the top of the goal area. Close to a two on one. The pass across to Alba. The shot saved by Sexton. Alba trying to get his way through there. And we're going to get a foul. And it looks like it's going to be Blizzard's ball. A little too much contact. Yeah, Let's see what the referees are talking here. Let's see what happens. Can't quite see what's going on. No, it looks like the referee has called a penalty, penalty kick. Strong. It looks like the referee has called a penalty kick. Oh, wow. So I didn't see the signal pointing to the penalty mark. So this is a penalty kick for LASC. So you have to be behind the line. The goalie has to be behind That's the line. That's correct. The goalie has to be completely behind the line, but can sit sideways. Right. That's a new rule, too. That is a rule change that came from FIFA. So we'll see which way Alexander Lauro decides to take this kick. Looks like he's going to go behind Sexton. Yes, Let's see if Sexton is. can stop it. Oh, no. Oh, and L Lauro went behind Sexton. Sexton misread the ball yes, and went right. forward. It is now 2-0 LASC. Perfect execution by Lauro right against the post. And you see Wyatt Sexton, Wyatt Sexton moved forward. Lauro went right behind him. It is now 2-0. Substitution into the game. Out is Chase Martinez and Alexander Laro in their place. Xavier Burrell and Jaden Alba. See if the Blizzards can get one back to cut the lead in half. This is a good opportunity for them. Yes, it is. Bower boom sends the ball into the area. Rana That's across good. to Bardell. Bardell back to Rana. Rana's got open space. The shot off of Alba. There was some open space right there. Right, a lot of open space. Let's see if we can catch the replay once the ball goes out of play here. Rana had so much room there. He had room oh, right in front of the goalkeeper, and space between the defenders just could not get the ball over the line. It looks like he might have been going for the pass back. It was blocked by LA. Good play, though. Boer boom now. Bardell couldn't control it and hits it out of play. Awesome. Good movement by the Blizzards, but just not able to get it over the goal line, Brendan. I know. They were so close. So close. Be nice if they could at least get one before half. Bardell trying to get around Burrell. Xavier Burrell trying to turn the ball around. Bardell knows she has a teammate back there. Rana waiting. And there's the kick out. Rana now with a shot off of Alba. Two on one violation on LASC. It was a great opportunity. Right now. Indeed. And the Blizzards have the Blizzards have already shown that. They have good power on their kicks. And there's Boer Boom. Bardell with a shot across to Rana. Rana with a shot saved by LASC. That's close to a three in the box. Jaden Nalba needs to be really careful yeah. about going in there for that. That was very close to one. Good defense, though, by LA. Boer Boom. Bardell back to Boer Boom. That's another two on one violation. Oh, yeah. LASC looking quite flustered on defense right now, Brendan. I know they're getting pounded with shots. They're just gonna keep their space up. Not doing. Bower boom. Bardell. Bardell with a shot. Oh, D. Bardell nice. with a goal. <laughs> Wonderfully done. Yeah. Phenomenal shot. And we'll watch this again now. Wonderful shot by Bardell, and she just turned, and Alba just came up, anticipating a pass across, and Bardell just. Fooled him and went behind him, scored a goal. It's 2 1 LASC over the Blizzards. Yeah, she did an amazing job turning the chair there to get that angle right below. And I think right what below. tricked Alba, or excuse me, I think what tricked Lopez was that she moved forward just a little bit, so Lopez thought she was going back across the box. Yeah. And she just slid that ball right behind him. 
Boomer Boom. Off of Jaden Alba. And that ball off of Alba. Boomer Boom chasing, but he should just let it go out. It should be a Blizzard's kick in. No, the referees oh. say LASC with oh, the kick in. Tough one. Could have gone either way. Oh, and that ball hitting the assistant referee. <laughs> Blizzard's with the ball once again. Boer boom over to Bardell. Bardell splitting the defense. Two on one violation. I think Bardell was looking for the advantage to be called there. Yeah. Blizzard's now setting up, looking to equalize here. Boer boom going to go over to Rana. Let's see what happens. Boer boom. Rana mm -hmm. slides the ball across. Nice defense there. Boer boom. He had an opportunity to pass to Bardell, but passed it up. Bardell, Alba, that ball right in front of Boer Boom. Alba, pass across Bardell with a pass. Rana's there, Rana with a shot. Can Bardell get there? And that is a two on one violation. Oh my goodness, indeed a two on one violation. Action. Some unbelievable action from the Blizzards like that. Just why the post, the far post attacker wasn't able to get down quite fast enough. Martinez can't control the ball, it goes out of play. Boer boom. Right into Martinez. Rana taking on Martinez. Martinez, nice turn, but Rana's right there. Nice steal by Rana. Well done. Great move. Rana has leverage. Ball still in play. Rana, nice control there. And LA the assistant ball. referee says LA ball, correct. It will stop this momentum somehow. Or is it a find a way to get it back on there? Martinez, that ball sneaks all the way through. Rana's there to collect it, though. Martinez hits that ball, and it looks like it's going to go out. Sexton saves it, though, oh. sends it back up the other way. Now Bardell with an opportunity to take the ball, and that's a two-on-one violation on the Allball brothers. Bardell oh. looking to take a quick kick before L.A. sets up, and she does. Martinez, Boerboom gets around Martinez, and now James Allball. On defense, Boer Boom gets around him. Can he make the turn? And he can. He takes it to the end line here, and it goes out. Referee signals goal kick. 18th minute of the match, 2-1 LASC. I'm Tony Jackson, joined by Brendan White of the Bay State Falcons. Got a really good game going here. Looks like it's gonna be a close one. So James Alba to Martinez. Bardell tries to cut him off. Boer boom right there. And it looks like we are going to get a foul on Bardell. She kind of cut in front of Alba, so it is going to be a free kick for LASC. Martinez, Rana, nicely done. Alexander Lauro. Came back into the match with the ball. Passes off to Alba. Pass. Alba, Rana. The pass. Actually, it looked like it was a pass, but he was he taking the ball away. No. But he couldn't keep it in. It's out. Kick in Blizzards. He almost got that one in. He almost did. It's really hard when the ball's rolling along the touchline and you want to go grab it, but sometimes you have to wait as long as you can to get around the ball as much as you can before you try to turn and save it. Yeah. Martinez with a shot, and we're going to get a two-on-one violation on LASC. Martinez and Lauro just way too close together. A lot of two-on-ones on LA. There, there are. Yeah. 
Gonna watch their spacing. Martinez looking to pass out. Alba with a shot. That ball goes across. And Lara with a shot saved by Sexton. Four boom. A goal has been signaled by the referee. Let's look at that again real quick. That one barely snuck through. I don't even know how that ball got yeah, through. I didn't see it through. Right here. So there was a save by Sexton. Bowler Boom turned around, but he just didn't close off the gap at the post. Interesting. Hold on. The referees are talking now. It might get pulled back. Let's see. We're in added time here in the first half. To me, it didn't look like there was any room between his guard and the post. But well, I couldn't really see around. Well, the referees are discussing it right now. And from our vantage point, we don't have another camera down there to get a better view, so we're going to have to rely on the official's decision yeah. here. Did the post move at all? No, it looks like the post did. didn't move at all. Let's see what they say. The referees are all convening now. Let's see what the official word Let's is. See what the official call is. Hard to tell on it looks like they're going to signal a goal. It is a goal. A goal. Wow. It is a goal. 3-1 LASC. Nope. She signaled toward the center mark. What? But I guess I, I, I guess I misinterpreted the call. It, it is like a goal kick. So goal. the match is still 2-1 LASC. Blizzards, that would have been a crucial goal for both, the, for both teams had it gone in favor of L.A. It definitely would have, been a, would have brought a way bigger lead for this L.A. I see. And there's the halftime whistle. That was a very confusing moment, Brendan. I know. I wasn't sure what happened. But as it stands, the score is 2-1 LASC. We're going to take a break. Brendan, you have to prepare for your game. I do. So I want to thank you for joining us here in yeah, the broadcast booth. And, I'm uh, glad I got a chance to join. Yes, likewise. Glad you could be here. Good luck in your match. Good luck the rest of the weekend. Right, good luck to you. Thank Thanks. you very much. Take care, sir. And good we'll time. be back for the second half. You're watching the 2022 MK Battery Conference Cup Series. Uh, Nimi is a manufacturing company for 25 years. Uh, we started out of our garage uh, manufacturing products and for the industrial market as well as disabled products and outdoor products too as well. Uh, we were able to help out uh, the disabled sports uh, world by building a power wheelchair. We have developed uh, many products for the industrial market like uh, vacuum fixturing that holds down, sucks down parts using vacuum power versus using double face tape that customers would do uh, and use clamps and vices and traditional stuff like that. Um, we can do full five-sided machining uh, by using vacuum chucks and different products of ours. Strike Force has redefined the uh, power soccer game, uh, giving the individual the ability to express inside of him how to play the game um, without holding back. We have built a chair, the Strike Force, to be low profile, fast, quick, um, and take over the game. The manufacturing of the Strike Force has led us into the manufacturing of the Track Force chair, which is an outdoor rugged chair built for the beach, uh, hunting uh, any outdoor enthusiast that wants to get out of his everyday chair and uh, be able to go around in his yard even.
Second half coming up, LASC versus the Courage Kenny Blizzards. For Power Soccer Shop, I'm Tony Jackson. It's day two of the 2022 USPSA MK Battery Conference Cup Championship Series. LASC up 2-1 over the Blizzards. Lots of scoring chances by both sides. Both teams undefeated. Only one of them is going to come out on top. Unless they tie. Looks like the players are ready to go. Referees are just about ready to go. We have a tactical change for LASC in goal. Number one, Chase Martinez. Out on the floor right now, Alexander Lauro. James Albaugh and Xavier Burrell for LASC. For the Blizzards, TJ Rana, Joe Boerboom, D. Bardell, and Wyatt Sexton in goal. Blizzards will start off the second half. And we are underway. D. Bardell will take the ball against Burrell. Bardell backs the ball in towards the goal area. Good control, but all ball takes it away. And we have a two-on-one violation on LASC. An early free kick near the LA goal area. Boerboom going to take the kick. It looks like she's going to be the one to potentially receive this ball here. But Burrell is right there, ready to defend. Let's see where he places this ball. Bower boom, all the way in. Bardell. And there's a shot. Rana off the post. TJ Rana just off the post. You see him right there. Oh, my goodness. That ball almost went in. Alba, Boerboom, taking on Burrell. Kick in coming up for the Blizzards. Positive start for the Blizzards to begin the second half. Boerboom sends it across to Rana. Rana down to Bardell, and that goes off of Lauro. That's a corner kick for the Blizzards. LASC just looked confused down there, setting up on defense. Now Bardell at the top of the area, Rana at the far post. And it looks like Alba is too close to the center mark. He's got to be on the outside of that green line where the referee, Brooke Matula, is standing right now. They're trying not to leave any space between the defenders, but unfortunately there will be a little space. It's going to be up to them to close it off. Boerboom and Bardell are now having a conversation here, trying to come up with a little strategy to score a goal. Can they get the equalizer here? Boerboom, Bardell off the side of her chair. That ball bounces up in the air and skips around. Loose ball, Rana, and a spinning move that slams into Alba. That is a foul on Rana and a free kick for LASC. That ball just ahead of Burrell and the Blizzards get the ball right back. Bardell calling out a play here. Boerboom gonna go to Bardell. Bardell tries to kick it across. Close to a two-on-one violation. Rana coming in too close. And now Alba counterattacking, but Boerboom is there on defense. And Alba just lets it go out. Boerboom. Bardell gets it off the back of Alba, and that's going to roll out for another Blizzard's corner kick. 
they are really putting a lot of pressure on LA this second half. Boom, boom. Bardell. Bardell with a spin kick, but it glances off the back of her chair. Rana now has an opportunity to keep the attack, attack alive for the Blizzards. Burrell taking on Rana, trying to get the ball the other direction. Bardell calling for the ball. There it is. Bardell across to Boer Boom, but it's cut off by Alba. Good anticipation, and that's going to go out of play. Kick in coming up for the Blizzards. Bardell stopped by Alba, or excuse me, Lara that is. Boerboom and Laro going at it now. Boerboom's got leverage on Laro, and he loses the ball. Bardell's got it though, and close to a two on one violation, but Burrell holds on to the ball. Play continues. Rana cut off by Alba. Kick in. Blizzard's coming up. Boer boom. Right into Burrell. He sends it towards the goal. Sexton out to Bardell. Nice pass by Sexton. And the pass across. Nobody there from the Blizzards to collect it. Alba dragging Boer boom towards the goal area. Now Rana and Sexton. In the Blizzard's goal area to defend. Alba dragging Rana towards the post. The kick out to Laro. LASC getting dragged down the floor now. TJ Rana towards the LA goal area. Chase Martinez steps up. Rana with the pass. Bardell is there. Bardell with the save. Or excuse me, Chase Martinez with the save. Bardell. Looking for space in that defense. There's space behind Martinez. D. Bardell sends it behind Chase Martinez. Scores a goal. We are level at two. Smart play by D. Bardell. She noticed the space there. And we'll see it here on the replay. She saw Martinez was just giving him space. He didn't move and close off that gap. And D. Bardell just took it and scored. We're tied at two. James Alba, now to his brother Jaden Alba. Alexander Laro, the third person in for LASC. Boer boom. Stopped by Laro. Laro now driving towards the goal area. Sexton's in there by himself. Jaden Alba with a shot saved by Bardell. Another save by Bardell. The Alba brothers combine here. Alba with a shot again, a save by D. Bardell. Fantastic defense. Let's watch D. Bardell once again just all over the place in that goal area. You see that last save there by her. That one nicking off the back of her chair. Alba, another block by D. Bardell. She is all over the place in that goal area. And we're going to get a set ball. Actually, we're going to have a re-kick here. Alba tries to go behind Bardell, but she read that one all the way. Now the goalpost is off of its mark, so the referees are just putting it back in place. James Alba, Jaden Alba. Blocking, making a wall there, but now the ball bounces out of the area. And it looks like the referee was going to call a two-on-one, but play continues as D. Bardell's pushing James Alba out of the area. Wonderful control by D. Bardell. The pass out, Rana is there with it. Now T.J. Rana driving down the floor, dragging James Alba towards the corner. 
Alexander Lara waiting at the top of the area. Rana could not control. It goes out for it. a corner kick. Joe Boerboom for the Blizzards. Going to take this kick. And that metal bevel giving Boerboom a little bit of a problem there. It's throwing off his rhythm. Now Boerboom over to Bardell, but it's cut off by Alba. Boerboom lets it go out of play. This is a much better angle for them. TJ Rana waiting at the far post. Can Boerboom get it past the defense? Boerboom tries to go between the defenders, but not enough pace to really deceive anybody. Two on one violation. The Blizzards get another free kick. Boerboom. You can see what's going to happen here. Well, potentially, Boerboom goes off of Bardell and then off of Rana from there. Let's see what happens here. Boerboom, Bardell. Bardell, oh Bardell, she just slid it in herself. Let's watch that again. Oh my goodness, what a wonderful shot by D Bardell. And it looked like she was gonna go across, but she just decided to take the goal herself. It's 3-2, Courage Kenny Blizzards. Jaden Albaugh now going into the goal area. Anthony Lopez coming in on the attack. James Albaugh in the middle. Alexander Laro here on our near side. LASC desperately needing a goal now as they find themselves down by one. Alba, right into Bardell. She's reading the ball so well in this match. That's close to a two-on-one violation. The pass comes down. Sexton with the save. James Alba preparing for another kick. Alexander Laro at the far post. Anthony Lopez at the near post. Alba, Bardell, Lopez, trying to bring the ball back toward the center of the goal area. There's the pass, cut off by Sexton, nicely done. Two on one violation on LASC. <laughs> Boerboom goes behind Bardell, kick in coming up for LASC. Bardell, nice spin move to get that ball. Well, that ball just could not get under control. So LASC with another kick in. Coming up on the 34th minute here. That ball off of Sexton. Kept in play by Alba. Bardell clears the area. Two on one violation on LASC again. They just cannot maintain their spacing. Just breaking any momentum they have. Six more minutes plus added time here. Alba takes a shot on goal. Sexton is there. Boerboom. The pass out. Still controlled by Alba. Boerboom doing nice to hold things. Under control, another two on one on LASC.
And it looks like Chase Martinez is about to come back in. Alexander Lauro coming out. Bower boom to Bardell. And that's a two on one. But the advantage called. Let's see if they bring it back because that's going to go out for a goal kick otherwise. I didn't really see an advantage there for the Blizzards. But as it stands, it's going to be a goal kick for LASC. Martinez back over across the goal area, excuse me, across the pitch to Lopez. Rana taking on Lopez. Rana goes behind Lopez. Rana loses the ball. Gets turned around a little bit, but now is in back in position to drive the ball into the goal area. That's close to another two-on-one on LASC, and the referee is going to call it. We're going to get an indirect free kick from just outside the goal area. The Blizzards now with an opportunity to get their fourth goal. Let's see if they can convert on this opportunity. Borbo might try to rip the ball across the box. Bardell's wide open over there. Bower boom all the way across. Bardell with a shot. D. Bardell goes behind Jaden Alba for another goal. D. Bardell is absolutely on a tear here in this match. You see right there, Alba leaves the post and D. Bardell takes advantage. Jaden Alba turned to hit the ball, but it was already over the goal line. It is now 4 2. Courage Kenny Blizzards over LASC. Rana to Bardell. And I have to say, in my statement that's about to come, it may be a little bit biased and colored, but D. Bardell in a Quickie P200, a chair that we really don't see in power soccer anymore, is absolutely shredding LASC right now. And quite frankly, I'm impressed. Bower boom across to Rana. And that ball is just going to sail harmlessly out for a goal kick. 37th minute. Martinez, that ball bounces back to Alba. Boerboom's there. Boerboom now on the attack. That's a three in the box or a two on one. Multiple fouls on that play there. And the Courage Kenny Blizzards are just dominating at the moment. Indirect free kick coming up. Joe Boerboom. Looks like he's going to go over to Rana, but let's see if he changes his mind. He's redirecting Rana. A little bit of contact there along the goal line. Now Boerboom may just try to kick it off of Rana. See what's going to happen here. That ball off the line and it just rolls over off of Rana. Oh my goodness, what an unlucky bounce for LASC. They made the initial save, but it bounced off of Rana into the goal, 5-2. Courage, Kenny Blizzards. And this is an incredible development. LASC were firmly in control for much of the first half. And in the second half, it has been all Courage, Kenny Blizzards. <laughs> TJ Rana going to come out. Coming on in his place, number one, Brighton McMahon. Lauro taking on Boerboom. Lauro with a shot saved by Boerboom. Lauro determined. Oh, and there's a shot and saved by Wyatt Sexton. Let's watch that. He almost missed that one. He saw that just off the front of his guard. Wyatt Sexton very calmly just pushed that one out. 
Alexander Laro now taking the corner kick for LASC. And Bardell needs to get into position here. There is a green line on the goal line that is five meters away from the corner triangle. And the defender needs to be on the far side of that line. Laro, the kick across, off of Bardell, and there's a shot that's going to go wide to the post and out of play. We are in added time, and the Courage Kenny Blizzards in an impressive display of offense have scored four goals in this second half. It is 5-2, and barring an absolute miracle on the part of LASC, the Blizzard are going to come away with all three points here. Sexton coming up to defend. Bardell is there, nicely done. Bardell again with another block out of play. Corner kick, LASC. Lauro, the kick, Burrell with a shot. Xavier Burrell in the match, blocked by Bardell. Again, Burrell blocked by Bardell, two on one. Advantage called for the Blizzards. D. Bardell down the floor on the counter attack. Jaden Alba, and that's the final whistle, ladies and gentlemen. Courage Kenny Blizzards, just absolutely coming out on fire in the second half. They win this one 5-2. We'll be back. Our next match coming up in a little bit. You're watching the 2022 USPSA MK Battery Conference Cup Series.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are joining live action in progress, Tidewater Piranhas versus Brooks Barracudas for Power Soccer Shop. I'm Tony Jackson. And once again, you are watching the 2022 U.S. Power Soccer MK Battery Conference Cup Championship Series. Brooks Barracudas and Tidewater Piranhas, two very familiar opponents. Nikki Dwyer now for the Piranhas over to Samuel Sawyer. Harris, Dwyer, the pass over to Sawyer. Two on one violation called on the Piranhas. Bovaro splitting the Piranhas defense. P.J. Shaw has to make a save on it. Harris now cut off by Dwyer. Harris, another shot cut off by Dwyer again. And that ball is going to roll out of play. Bavaro off of Pineda. Hannah Trail. Michael Bavaro. Sawyer, the pass to Trail. Trail cuts across. Bavaro. Still in control of the ball. Now Sawyer coming up to make a move on Bavaro. Sawyer trying to pass it with the back of his chair. Nikki Dwyer takes it now. Trail, two on one violation. On the Piranhas. Sawyer, Pineda. Samuel Sawyer. Has the ball taken away by Bavaro. Now Bavaro heading towards P.J. Shaw in the Tidewater goal area. Harris, Bavaro, close to a two-on-one violation. Harris was right behind Bavaro. Going to look to rip one across to Nikki Dwyer. That's off the back of her chair. An opportunity for the Barracudas. Bavaro with a spin kick. He misses. Harris off of Bavaro. Two on one violation. Tidewater Piranhas with another indirect free kick. Shaw, Pineda now trying to make a move toward the other goal area. And Sam Sawyer doing well on defense. Close to another two-on-one violation on the Barracudas. Ball still in play, and now it rolls out. Bavaro off of Sawyer, out of play. Another kick in coming up for the Brooks Barracudas. Sawyer. 
Sawyer. Trail right there. And it looks like the Tidewater Piranhas are going to get a free kick here. Dwyer at the near side. Hannah Trail at the far side for the Piranhas. Sawyer looking to take the kick. Now the Piranhas are really far away from Sawyer. The Barracudas should be able to defend this, and they do. But that's going to be a two-on-one violation. Nicholas Pineda did not clear out early enough. Bavaro had to come up and make a play. And now this is a much better position for the Piranhas. Trail with a shot off of Bavaro. Corner kick coming up for the Piranhas. Dwyer trying to find Sawyer at the top of the area. Sawyer, that's close to a two-on-one violation on the Piranhas, and it is. That one off of trail. Nicely done to keep it, the attack going for the Piranhas. Dwyer now with a 180 spin kick off of Barraro. That's close to another two-on-one. Harris and Bavaro just cannot get separated. Sawyer looking like he wants to go over to trail. Bavaro is right there, though. He's anticipating this pass. That ball comes straight down into the Brooks defense. Dwyer's there. Dwyer can't hold on to it. Goal kick coming up for the Barracudas. And we will have a substitution coming up. It looks like Pineda and Harris coming off. Coming on in their place, Justin Cox, Devin Johnson, Devin Athey. Now here is an interesting storyline. Devin Johnson plays for Brooks Barracudas now, but formerly played with the Tidewater Piranhas. His father is active duty military and was stationed in Virginia. His son played on the Tidewater Piranhas and then they got stationed in Jacksonville where Devin Johnson now plays for the Brooks Barracudas. So former coach and athlete for one team. Taking on their old team. Cox, Athey, Johnson now. Took a shot on goal off the back of his chair. Sawyer battling Athey. Sawyer, nicely done, good move. Gets the ball away from Athey now. Justin Cox coming up to defend. Good turn, but Sawyer just takes it away. Nice touch, Greg Crawforth. Defending for Brooks, the kick out. Trail, trail a little late on the ball. Crawforth is able to make a play and it goes out. Kick in, coming up for the Brooks Barracudas. Justin Cox, Sawyer. Sends it into Cox. Now Sawyer had an opportunity to make a play on the ball. He missed it though. And a trail now for the Piranhas. Athey takes it away from her. PJ Shaw, one on one against Athey. Sawyer's back in the goal area to defend. Sawyer, nice move, Samuel Sawyer. Sawyer looking to kick the ball back out. Nikki Dwyer waiting. Nice touch there. Justin Cox to take the ball away. And now Cox. On the counterattack, Athey's there, Johnson's there, Athey now. Looking to 
do something with the ball. Cox across to Athey, back to Cox. Sawyer takes that ball away. Tidewater now on the counterattack. Trail, passes up to Sawyer. Sawyer across to Dwyer. Dwyer with a shot off of Cox out of play. Wonderful back and forth action there. You can see Nikki Dwyer had open space, just could not get the ball past Cox. Dwyer, Sawyer with a shot, back to Dwyer and she could not angle it back towards the post. Out of play for another Brooks kick in. Cox sends the ball away. Sawyer sends it right back into the Brooks goal area. Lots of back and forth action here. Really exciting match. Cox has to send it out of play. The Tidewater defense just too tight right now. Nikki Dwyer going to take this hit in for the Piranhas, but not before we have a substitution. Coming into the match for the Piranhas, number 16, Amy McKee. Dwyer looking for an, out an outlet here. McKee trying to get into the box, but Johnson was just preventing her from doing so. Now she's in. McKee cut off by Bavaro. And Nikki Dwyer is right there. That's close to a two-on-one violation on Tidewater. Now Justin Cox dragging McKee. Cox gave the ball to Dwyer, and she sends it back towards the Brooks half of the court. That's going to be a kick in, and honestly, you could not have asked for a better spot if you're Tidewater. You have Brooks pinned extremely deep in their own end. Let's see what the Barracudas do here. And referee is going to ask McKee to move away from the ball. She has to be at least five meters away. And Johnson just trying to get in her way. Nicely done by McKee to cut that ball off and keep the attack going for Tidewater. Sawyer now with a shot. Cox could not be denied by Nikki Dwyer. Athey with a shot. Off the back of his chair, Sawyer. Sawyer. Stopping Cox from sending the ball down the floor. A two-on-one on the Barracudas gives Tidewater another indirect free kick. Barracudas right now unable to keep control of the ball. Nikki Dwyer back on the floor. McKee now with the pass from Sawyer. And heavy contact. Devin Athey called for the foul. Direct free kick coming up for the Tidewater Piranhas. Will they try to score from distance? So now P.J. Shaw going to take the kick. Looking for the power from P.J. Shaw. Shaw straight in and a goal by the Tidewater Piranhas. Again, I mentioned a moment ago, this was a direct free kick. And very smartly, they asked P.J. Shaw to take the kick. And you see he just blows it right past the Brooks defense and scores a goal. Tidewater on the board first, 1-0 the score. Fantastic strategy by the Tidewater Piranhas to break that scoreless draw. So now Sam Sawyer going to take the kick.
off of McKee, trying to go over to Dwyer, and she gets it. Now Justin Cox for the Brooks Barracudas, taking on Dwyer. Sawyer, back over to Dwyer. Cox with a 180 spin kick, sends the ball out of play. Kicking for the Barracuda's coming up now. Justin Cox, Devin Athey, Nikki Dwyer takes it back. And we're going to get a foul on the Brooks Barracudas. 19th minute, Tidewater Piranhas from a P.J. Shaw goal lead 1-0. And the Plasman Athletic Center is filling up as teams enter the building. This is the first day where all four conferences will be competing simultaneously. Sam Sawyer on the kick. McKee with a nice little touch there, but Athey closes it off. Dwyer with a shot. McKee with a ricochet back towards the Brooks goal area. It sails wide and out for another Brooks goal kick. Barracuda's just having all sorts of problems right now. Cox, Sawyer, over to McKee. McKee tries to go across to Dwyer. Oh, and Cox misses Nikki Dwyer now with the ball. The pass across, Sawyer. Sawyer with a shot close to a two-on-one violation. Referee Mark Jones calls it. McKee and Sawyer just getting too anxious to score a goal. Johnson, and there was a collision between McKee and Athey. And that's the halftime whistle. Tidewater Piranhas lead 1-0. We're going to take a break. When we come back the second half, you're watching the 2022 USPSA MK Battery Conference Cup Series. Uh, Nini is a manufacturing company for 25 years. Uh, we started out of our garage uh, manufacturing products and for the industrial market as well as disabled products and outdoor products too as well. Uh, we were able to help out uh, the disabled sports uh, world by building a power wheelchair. We have developed uh, many products for the industrial market like uh, vacuum fixturing that holds down, sucks down parts using vacuum power versus using double face tape that customers would do uh, and use clamps and vices and traditional stuff like that. Um, we can do full five-sided machining uh, by using vacuum chucks and different products of ours. Uh, the Strike Force has redefined uh, power soccer game, uh, giving the individual the ability to express inside of him how to play the game um, without holding back. We have built a chair, the Strike Force, to be low profile, fast, quick, um, and take over the game. The manufacturing of the Strike Force has led us into the manufacturing of the Track Force chair, which is an outdoor rugged chair built for the beach, uh, hunting uh, any outdoor enthusiast that wants to get out of his everyday chair and uh, be able to go around in his yard even.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The second half about to begin. Tidewater Piranhas up 1-0 over the Brooks Barracudas for Power Soccer Shop. I'm Tony Jackson, and I'm being joined in the second half by the Atlanta Stings, Kyle Eggleston. Kyle, how are you, sir? Good. Thank you very much, Tony, uh, for this opportunity. I'm excited. I haven't done this before, but uh, excited to uh, be a part of it. Glad to have you up here. Your first game is coming up in about two hours, yeah? Yeah, we have a, a hard match, actually. It's against uh, the Minnesota Shockwave. Um, it's going to be a hard match, but I'm excited to start, you know, with the big match early, you know? Yeah, that's a good challenge. Three Team USA players on that Minnesota Shockwave team. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, we have uh, Zach Diggy, too. He's our... He's kind of our Team USA guy, too. I'm hoping to get there one day, but, you know, uh, so very excited to play that match, yeah. You're very well on your way, sir. On your way. Tidewater Piranhas are going to take the kick to start the second half. Sam Sawyer in the middle, and a trail on the far side. Nikki Dwyer on the near side. P.J. Shaw in goal. And we are off to the races. Robert Harris for the Brooks Barracudas sends the ball out for a Tidewater kick in. Rounding out the lineup for the Barracudas, Robert Harris on the far side of the floor, Nicholas Pineda on the near side of the floor, and in goal, Greg Crawforth. That ball almost too far in front of Sawyer. And a trail now with the ball. Sawyer off to Dwyer, Dwyer. Trying to get the ball down the floor. Trail sends it over to Sawyer. Sawyer tries to get it past Bavaro. Now there's a pass to that trail. Back to Sawyer. Sawyer across off of Bavaro. Dwyer splits the defenders. Crawford has to come up and make a play. Trail is right there. Sawyer over to Trail. And a trail now with the ball. Back up to Sawyer. Trail with the ball. Trail trying to go across to Dwyer. Not enough pace on that pass. Close to a two on one violation. And Tidewater looks like they're trying to pick up right where they left off. Nice play by Harris, though, to bounce that ball off of Sawyer. Yeah, that's a hard play to make, especially when you're um, in the heat of, you know, battling someone to actually get it off them and get, you know, good inbound play. Yeah, that was a good play there by Robert Harris. Now they get the ball back. Brooks Barracudas kicking in. Sawyer right there in a good spot to defend, but that ball gets all the way through to Pineda, and that rolls all the way out. My goodness. Not a single person touched that ball, and it almost went behind Shaw for a goal, but it was just wide of the post. Yeah, it was pretty close there, Tony. I thought we might have a quick goal to start the half. That would have been quite the goal from Brooks. Shaw. Pineda for the Barracudas. Shaw sends it up to Sawyer, but it's cut off by Robert Harris. Pineda, there's a lot of crowding there. No two-on-one called. Bavaro with a 180 spin kick. Shaw with a save. Nicely done, P.J. Shaw. And now Sawyer takes the ball. The pass off to Trail. Trail, miscommunication between Sawyer and Trail. It rolls out of play for a Brooks kick in. Kyle, communication between teammates so important. Yeah, uh, there it seems like uh, to like Trail and Dwyer were on the um, same side as well. We they maybe should have communicated one to go to the other side, but uh, yeah, it's pretty hard there, especially when you don't want the two on one to occur. Yeah, it's a uh, communication is the key to teams being able to move the ball and maintain control of the ball. Dwyer now with a shot on goal, Crawford. Dwyer trails there, can Trail score just wide of the post? Oh, so close. Watch Nikki Dwyer over to Hannah Trail, and she just didn't get the right angle on the front of her guard to point in towards the post. Yeah, fantastic ball movement by Tywater so far. That was really good. Now Pineda on a break. Pineda slowed the ball down. P.J. Shaw came out. That's going to be a foul on the goalkeeper, but outside the goal area, so this will be a direct free kick for the Brooks Barracudas. One of these earlier went in. Let's see what happens this time. Bavaro for the Barracudas. Let's see if they can get their team on the board here. 
Sawyer playing a very high line of defense. That forces the Brooks Barracudas to come up. That's a two-on-one violation on Brooks. Well played by Sam Sawyer, Kyle. Yeah, he uh, he's a really good goalie. He uh, kind of, you don't see him, and then he's just there, and he's got the ball, and now it's a two-on-one. Just great play by him there. Sawyer over to trail, but Pineda's going to cut that off. Sawyer touches that ball, and it's going to roll out for a Brooks kick in. Now, great hustle by Sawyer there. He tried to save it to prevent it from going out, but he couldn't quite get there. Yeah, also, he, uh, he keeps it from being a corner kick, which is good as well. Indeed. Now, Bavaro all the way across. It's cut off by Sawyer. Now, Dwyer off to trail. Trail a little late on the pass. Crawford is going to think about coming out, but he very smartly lets it roll over the goal line. Twenty-sixth minute. Tidewater Piranhas holding on to a slim one-nil lead, trying to extend it here. Trail misses that ball. Sawyer across to Dwyer. Nice shot by Bavaro. P.J. Shaw has to come up and make a play. Pineda had a wide open space, but could not get the ball. It goes off of Sawyer out of play. Now Pineda, you see, he had all kinds of space, but Kyle, you know, especially when you started out younger. When you see that open space and that ball is coming at you, it looks so easy to score, but it's so hard to do so. Yeah, I think also uh, they probably get excited when you see that ball. You start twitching a little, and it, caught, it makes it easy to mess up and miss hit it. And I think that's what happened there. So Fantastic hustle by Tidewater, though. Indeed. Indeed. Bavaro gets it out to Harris. Harris over to Pineda. Now Pineda late on the ball again. P.J. Shaw. Heads up goalkeeping right there by Shaw. Yeah, Shaw's doing a really good job hustling and being in the right spot, keeping the goal from going in. Now here you see Tidewater with the goalkeeper in the back of the defender. This is a kick in. The goalkeeper could come out in front yeah, and help Dwyer at the top of the area. That's not a two on one violation, Kyle, right? Yeah, it's not a two on one violation, technically, yes. Yeah, a lot of teams are starting to run defense like that where, you know, it's not a two-on-one with the player being near the box. Well, if Sawyer comes out where Dwyer is, that's a two-on-one violation. Yeah. But if Shaw comes out, he's the goalkeeper, as long as he's in the goal area, that's not a two-on-one. Yes, yes. So a lot of teams, yeah, like running stuff like that because they force the uh, other team to have very little space to work with. That is correct, sir. Bavaro over to Harris. Harris with the shot. Ooh. Harris with a goal. He split Sawyer and Shaw, and he just hooked that ball around Shaw. Brooks Barracuda is on the board. Let's watch that again. You see Harris just hooks that ball right between Shaw and Sawyer. Yeah, that was a tough shot there, Tony. I was not expecting to split the defender so easily right there. I mean, that's something even Team USA guys have a hard time doing, just seeing the opening and putting it in between them. And I think the key there, Kyle, was that he didn't try to hit the ball as hard as he could through there. He used a little bit of touch to navigate it yeah. through that space. Yeah, that's what people don't realize, especially uh, when you first start. You don't need to hit the ball hard to make a play. A foul on Hannah Trail right there. And you're right, you don't have to hit the ball hard to make a good play. And you saw that right there. Robert Harris didn't hit the ball as hard as he could. Scored a goal for his team. Michael Bavaro now for the Brooks Barracudas. Trail just giving Harris all kinds of trouble here near the ball. But Harris takes the ball away. Sawyer now. Bavaro. Pineda across to Bavaro. Bavaro misses the 180 spin kick. And now Sawyer splitting the defenders. Heads up the floor. That's close to a two-on-one. Robert Harris splits out. Trail now with a shot off of Crawford. Trail blocked by Bavaro. Sam Sawyer has to pull out of the area to avoid the two-on-one. And now Bavaro heading the other way. But Sawyer cuts him off. That ball up in the air a little bit. 
Bavaro, Sawyer, the pass to trail. Hannah Trail with the pass across. Nikki Dwyer's there. Nikki Dwyer, oh, goal! Crawford slamming his chair. He's upset at himself because he couldn't stop Dwyer from scoring. You'll see right here, Nikki Dwyer had all kinds of space, but she had to catch it off the corner of her guard. Yeah, there was not much he could do there. Just they, Tywater's just, they've been, even though they're down, they've been moving the ball around really well, and that's how they got that goal. Dwyer put it within like a tiny space, probably 15 inches, and the, you know, the ball's only about two inches. Space, but she did get the goal. Tidewater's now back in the lead, 2-1. And they get the ball. Sam Sawyer going to take the kick. Sawyer, Bavaro tries to cut it off. Trail just a little late getting there. Can she catch it before it goes out? It's going to be close. She's not going to get there. Goal kick coming up for Brooks. 31st minute, Tidewater Piranhas from Chesapeake, Virginia lead 2-1 over Jacksonville, Florida's very own Brooks Barracudas. Couple substitutions for Brooks coming into the match. Devin Athey, Justin Cox, and Devin Johnson. Pass over to Athey from Johnson. Athey tried to pass it back, but he was not able to get it over there. Sawyer. Splitting the Brooks defenders. Sawyer, Bavaro. Oh, and that's close to a foul on Bavaro. Backing into Sawyer. Sawyer just pulling the ball away from Bavaro. And that ball's still in play. Nicely Ooh. done, Michael Bavaro, getting it off of Sawyer. That was a fantastic play. He just like slowed it down, hit it right off Sawyer. Cox cut off by Sawyer. Now Sawyer can run down the floor a little bit here. Devin Athey actually did really well to cut him off. Sawyer trying to pass it over to Hannah Trail, but just not really any room there to do that. Yeah, he maybe should have controlled it and get, got it over to Nikki. Dwyer now up to Trail. Trail across. Sawyer, Sawyer with a 180 spin kick off the back of his chair. Still goes towards the Brooks goal area. Well done, Sam Sawyer. He knew that there was no control with the ball. He lets it roll out. And now a kick in coming up for the Tidewater Piranhas. Yep, Nick, Nikki's dangerous here. She'll put it right where it needs to be. And a trail waiting at the far post. That's close to a two on one. No call there though. Sawyer with a 180 spin kick. And if that wasn't a two-on-one, that was certainly a foul on Hannah Trail, but referee calls a two-on-one. Indirect free kick coming up for the Brooks Barracudas. Dwyer, that ball comes across the trail. Trail, Sawyer, across to Dwyer. Dwyer tried to go over to Trail, but it bounced off of Cox. And now Sawyer retreating to collect the ball. Nicely done, Sam Sawyer. And there's a foul by Devin Athey. And that's going to be a yellow card on Devin Athey, and rightly so, my goodness. Yeah, Sawyer may be on that play. Instead of coming up right away, she just stayed back, be ready for the pass. But they got the foul here, so they got a shot. It looks like he's uh, something's going on with the chair, though, Tony. Yeah, it looks like the chair may be. Uh, sometimes they, they shut down when they get hit too hard. I know mine does quite often. Mm -hmm. So Devin Athey cautioned on the play. The first yellow card that I've seen this tournament. Oh, and I, I think that's going to be a bigger point of emphasis for the referees this year. Issuing caution cards because sometimes there is a lot of contact out there. And, and sometimes there are no cautions. So it's good to see that the referees are making that a greater point of emphasis here. P.J. Shaw, Devin Johnson taking on Dwyer. That goes the wrong way for the Brooks Barracudas. Trail tries to go across to Sawyer, but Cox stops the ball. And now Sawyer and Cox battling again. Sam Sawyer down the floor, 
Justin Cox. Sawyer can't hold on to it, and it goes out for another Brooks kick in. What a play by uh, Cox there. He, uh, he saw that uh, Sawyer had no control, and he just let him dribble it out. Sawyer, Cox, and a trail's there. Trail. Can Dwyer get there before it goes out? Oh, she saw it just a little late. 35th minute. Brooks Barracudas need a goal. They're running out of time. They are, Tony. They are. That ball off the back of Harris, and Sawyer comes racing in to keep the pressure going for Tidewater. Sawyer rips the ball away from Cox. Cox, though, regains control, turns Sawyer down the floor, and that is going to roll towards the touchline. Sawyer nicely done. Again, I love his hustle. Cox with a shot off of oh. Sawyer, but that's going to be a foul. Let's see who it's called on. Oh, another And it yellow. looks like it's going to be a, a foul on Justin Cox for backing into Sam Sawyer. The Barracudas need to be careful here. They have two players. They have two players with a card, so. Now that's two cautions for Brooks. They have to be extremely careful here. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to be down a player for the next match. Yeah, and bracket plays coming up too, and that, you know, all these games are just to get to that bracket play, so. Gotta yep. Be careful here. The knockout rounds are coming later today for the President's Conference. And you're going to need as much as you can when you get into those rounds. We are wrapping up group play here for the Presidents and Founders Conferences today. Dwyer. Now, it's actually probably a good move by Dwyer because Devin Johnson was right there. Now, she could have potentially hit it back. Yeah, yeah Devin and her are actually uh, former teammates before uh, the pandemic, so... Oh, Devin Johnson tried to make a play on it. That was a two-on-one, not called. Play continues. Brooks still on the attack. The Ooh. kick out. Cox. P.J. Shaw is there. Johnson with a oh. shot saved by Sawyer, and he is all over the place right now, Kyle. Yeah, he's all over the place, Tony. Uh, Devin did a good job there. He, instead of getting excited and just shooting, he found the spot, slowed it down, and put it right where it needed to be. Yes, it was a good move. Cox across, Ooh. and that ball misses Harris. And there's the two-on-one violation. We've seen a couple from the Barracudas. Yeah, they're they're bunching up a little here. I think they're trying PJ to. PJ Shaw over to Dwyer. Nicely done. Cox, Dwyer spins around. Nice turn by Nikki Dwyer. That ball's out of play. And the referees say it's going to be Tidewater ball. Yeah, Cox there. If he would have came on the outside of the ball, he might keep it in and uh, kept Nikki from getting his kick in because she's dangerous. 38th minute. In. I didn't mean to cut you off, Kyle. My apologies. 38th minute of the match. We're winding down here, and I just wanted to take a moment to recognize on the bench for the Tidewater Piranhas, Chris Mulholland. You see him over there with the two coaches. Now, there's a shot by Sawyer saved by Crawford, and that's going to go out of play. So Chris Mulholland sitting between the two coaches there on the Tidewater sideline right under that Power Soccer Shop banner. Um, a former referee, a longtime referee, really since Power Soccer came to the United States in 2006, was diagnosed with ALS a couple years ago. Um, and so now, although unable to referee, he... He wants to play power soccer while he can, so he joined his local team, and now he's playing with his son. And while it's a tragic situation and it's a hard situation, it's good to see him out there still with the game that he's dedicated so much of his life to. P.J. Shaw across the area. Amy McKee scores a goal for the Piranhas. It's now 3-1 Tidewater. Let's watch that again. P.J. Shaw with a devastating kick across the box. It ricochets between Cox and McKee. She scores the goal. Tidewater are going to come away with three points here, Kyle. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate for Brooks, being that points do matter in this tournament for where you are in the bracket. But, uh, yeah, that was a fantastic um, goal there. Just put it hard and got it in. Yeah, good, good teamwork there by the Piranhas. But just to finish up about Chris Mulholland, he's... He's dedicated so much time 
and so much of his life to the sport. And although he's no longer able to referee because of his diagnosis, the fact that he's out here in a soccer chair with not only his local team, but with his son also on the team, I mean, it really is the, the best you can make of the situation. Yeah, I remember when I first started playing Tony, and I haven't been around the game for as long as most, but yeah, I remember him refing our games, and it, it, he just, uh, he was, he did such a good job at it, and he just, and he loved all the players. You could tell that it was for their safety, so yeah, he, he was a fantastic ref, and it's awesome that he's playing for his uh, son now. Indeed, again, the, the best of the, the best you can make of the situation, certainly. And uh, they're winning right now. They're up 3-1. And they won yesterday against a very good San Antonio team. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're coming here to, to take home a trophy. Yeah, it's Everybody, seems watch like out. Tony. Yeah, I remember playing them uh, earlier this year. They, they're they a tough team. They're always, they're going to push you. And the key there, point. sending the ball down the floor. And Mark Jones, the referee, blows the final whistle. Tidewater Piranhas, the play made it seem a little close for a while, but Tidewater was pretty much in control the entire time. Yeah, Tidewater did a good job, Tony. That's a fantastic play, uh, game for them. Now they're going into a bracket play with, uh, and they're in a big, and they're, they have a good seed that they're in, so. Kyle, I want to thank you for being the color commentator for the second half of this match with me. I appreciate it. And now you're going to join your dad. And yes. you're going to call the next game because i got to go play now. Yes, sir, Tony. Thank you so much for this. Uh, you, you go win that match now. I will. <laughs> I will. Thank you. You two enjoy the match. Everybody watching, I hope you're enjoying the coverage so far. Kyle and Andrew Eggleston will be back on the call for court one. The next match, you're watching the 2022 USPSA MK Battery Conference Cup Series.
it up to Dowling, and there's the pass to Dowling. Dowling going to take a shot. Audrey Keener across to Keezer. Keezer shot in. Hello, folks, and uh, welcome back to the uh, 2022 MK Battery Championship Cup Series. Today, we will have the uh, Circle City Rollers and the San Jose Steam Rollers. And with me today is my dad or <laughs> coach or Andrew, something like that. I think I'm going to stick with dad, but uh, yeah, so uh, welcome, coach. How you doing? Well, thank you, Kyle, very much. I'm doing great. I appreciate it. It's exciting to be up here. Uh, this is such a wonderful um, facility up here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and just seeing everybody back out on the court after this long hiatus with the, with the pandemic, it just uh, makes my heart feel full. So uh, looking forward to a great match in between uh, San Jose and Circle City. Yeah, Coach, and uh, we have not uh, seen much of San Jose being that they're all the way out in California. What do you think about that, Coach? Well, I'll tell you, the, 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 on an off note, the, the, the greatest thing about it is all the teams from California State. There are eight teams, but I'm very excited. You're right. We haven't seen a lot of Pan San Jose, but we know Circle City pretty well, so it should be a good match. Yeah, yeah, so here we go. We have uh, Circle City shaking hands with the steamrollers to get ready and... Uh, yeah, I'm uh, pretty excited for this uh, matchup here. Um, both teams, this is only the second Premier Cup match today, so um, Premier and the champions have just gotten uh, started. And uh, Coach, we haven't been back here since 2019, so. Yeah, it is, it is absolutely a great feeling to be back and uh, to get back out on the pitch with these guys and play. Looks like we're about to get going here. Yeah, so on the pitch for Circle City, we have Michael Archer, Natalie Russo, and uh, Colin McIntyre. And in the goal, we have Kevin Perry. And for the steamrollers, we have, oh, I can't see the numbers from here, but um, usually th their main guy is uh, Sid Carnala. He, is, uh, he has 24 goals this season and uh i believe we have ryan Colley out there along with uh callum kane and goal okay and natalie over to michael archer mcintyre he gives it off to michael archer michael archer here he comes okay so now circle city has the kick here natalie's gonna kick in the archer usually archer drives it down down here but steamrollers kind of seem to be locking them in here and the ref just there called a 15 feet warning just to make sure. Oh, and here we go. Uh, Michael Archer driving it down. He has the ball. He's looking for Natalie here. He's put. He's gonna keep pushing it. He's got it down in the corner. And Natalie with what a pass down the Mc down there. Uh, she almost got it to McIntyre. Uh, and he almost got the goal there, but he just didn't quite get there. Yeah, McIntyre tried to get the front of the guard on it, just just barely missed it. Great job, though, by Natalie. Great, uh, great line of sight and phenomenal pass. Yeah, it seems that Matthew Aaron's goal. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's going down into Circle City's goal area. Will the steamrollers get lucky here? Will they get a goal? And Natalie hits it out. That will be a kick for the steamrollers. Great defense by Natalie on there to uh, get that ball out of bounds. Oh. Oh, and he just misses it. Miss hits it there and hits it out of bounds. Coach, that's something that's easy to do here. What? What? How do you think you fix that? Well, I, I just think he got a little bit excited and uh, jumped a little bit early on that uh, on that 180 spin kick. Uh, 
you know, generally he's he's Conley's right on things, and uh, so he yeah. just he was just a little bit off on that one. And uh, the ref, I would, I would put it to early 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 uh, game jitters. Yeah. Okay. So now we have, I believe it is a sidekick for Circle City. It's deep in their own territory that though, so it's a little bit dangerous here. Usually Natalie gets it out of there, but let's see what happens here. Michael Archer pushes it up the court. Ooh, that. He was trying to make a pass there, but he wasn't quite able to get it there. I really like seeing uh, what uh, Circle City did there. He kind of sealed off the offensive possession. He gave up the ball knowing that he had uh, a good line of sight and good play. So he, he basically they moved the ball right up the court about another, you know, 15 yards. And uh, and now, you know, cross court, now they're deep on the uh, attacking side. Now they gave up the possession, but, you know, let's see if they can pin him in here and get some offensive. Uh, yeah, Michael Arch had a great pass to – McKintree, but he just wasn't quite there. Now it's deep in Steamroller's territory. They pass it out. Mike's going to kind of let the ball go. He's going to let go out of bounds for a, a Circle City kick. And Michael Archer just played forever, it seems like. He just knows, you know, the rule book inside and out and knows how to, when to make the play and when not to. He's OG, man. He's got the big double spin kick. Yeah, man. That's kind of what he's known for. Here he comes. Speaking of which, oh, oh Natalie, what a shot. Michael Archer with a fantastic pass, but Natalie's not quite able to make it. Natalie is driving to the corner here. Oh, she tries to make the pass, but it's blocked by Steamroller. It looked like a two-on-one there, but they did not call it. Michael Archer is trying to keep um, Aaron Storr from pushing it. Now he's... Okay, Aaron, Natalie has it. She's driving it into, oh, and we have a two-on-one call on the steamrollers here. Conley did a great job right there trying to maintain that possession, get it up, get it up the court. And, uh, yeah, usually Mike's able to drive it pretty well, but um, so far steamrollers. Oh, over to Natalie. Natalie can't quite make a play on it, but she's she's got it now. She's going with Conley. Here we go. Natalie going down the court. She's Oh, she makes a beautiful pass to Archer. Archer to McKintree. McKintree back. Uh, but Archer can't quite get there. It was just a little too far. Now, oh, Natalie has the ball. She hits it off him. Ooh, Ooh that looked like foul. it might have. Ooh, a nice spin kick there. Earlier, McIntyre did a great job. Um, of uh, getting the front of the guard just a little bit too much on it, which uh, caused uh, Archer to have to go back for it. But uh, really yeah. good job of a you know, good front of the guard punch. I mean, that's something that uh, all these players know. If, if you try to wind up at this level, you know, generally the defense is going to jump you and get yeah. in there. So he did a great job getting the front of the guard, just a little bit too much on it. Okay, the kick in. This is uh, by Ernsdorf. He's Oh, but Natalie gets it. Oh, a pass over to, I think that's Carnala. Oh, Mike tries to hit it. Tried to get it out of there, but he can't. He's driving. Oh, and we have a call here, and it's against the steamrollers. So uh, Circle City's going to get the kick here. Yeah, for the safety of the game, we, they got, the refs have to be very, very careful on any kind of contact back by the back wheel. Yeah, especially uh, this premier level coach. They, oh, Michael Archer tries to make a great pass. To McKintry, but McKintry can't quite get to it. Yeah. It would have been it would have been that goal had he hit it, but it's okay there. They still got a shot here. Still zero zero six minutes here. Yeah. Um, it's t neither team has really had an open shot yet. Oh, right to Archer. I don't know what oh. that was. Beautiful but now, deflection by Colin McIntyre there. Yeah, McIntyre is doing a fantastic job. Oh, oh, Natalie's pushing. She's tiny, but goodness, she drives it like the best of them. That's why she's on Team USA here. They actually have her and um, Michael, who are both Team USA. Oh, and Natalie puts it right off him for the goal kick. Now this is the, or the corner kick. Yeah. Now and this is this is the uh, first time Callum Kane's been kind of in a 
spot where he has to, he's in a hard, dangerous spot here for a goal. Oh. oh. Natalie tried to fake it there, but oh my gosh, and Michael Archer with what a shot, but he didn't quite get it in. It's a goal kick now for the steamrollers. Yeah, Kyle, you, you know you know as well as anybody, you have to be on your guard with Archer on the court. I mean, 100% of the time, he will put it on goal in an instant. Yeah, that's kind of, that's one of the, and here we go, they're going, driving it. Looks like we have a substitution with uh, Mr. Faria in the game here. Yes, Mr. Faria is in the game. Kind of a coach slash player. Here we go. Oh, Steamroller is getting some birth here. They're starting to push it down the court. It looked like out. It looked like it might not have been out, but the ref calls it regardless. Great job by Ryan Collin to kind of juke that uh, inside move, kind of uh, got Archer to hesitate, and then... Uh, Moved right down the alley. That was a phenomenal job on yeah, this part. Yeah, that was almost a two-on-one, but steamrollers were also there, so it's more like a two-on-two. Two. Oh, and Mike was a good pass again. He just put it with a little too much um for McIntyre. And we have a sub here. Natalie so will be going out. out for... I believe that's for, Marie, Marie Harmon, correct? Yeah, that is Marie Harmon. Haven't seen much of her yet, but she's... Oh, well, Natalie did not come out. It was for oh. McIntyre. Um, so it's Natalie and... It's Natalie and Marie at the weak side, strong side wing. Um, Michael's driving it here. Oh, and steamrollers get it out. They're pushing it down the court. Great job again by Conley. That's it. Michael Archer is. Uh, yeah, but has Michael that Archer will. gets it there. Oh, but he does a great job and makes it so Mike puts it off, uh, out of bounds here. Now we have a kick by Connolly. Oh, he sees it. He's gonna. Oh, but it goes off the back there of the steamrollers. Now it's a dangerous play here. Oh, and Mike's. Mike's kicking it as well. He, this is dangerous here because Mike will put it, a big spin kick across the court. I'll tell you what he's famous for is getting a good spin kick and getting the deflection and putting another one hard right back on. Yeah, you got to right be careful of that. Oh, oh, and Natalie gets it to Maria, but it's not quite, she's not quite able to put it in. That was really close and to And Connolly pushing there. it down. Yeah, it was close to a tool one. I think they were maybe going with advantage there, but they never threw it up, so I guess not. Natalie's kicking it in, Michael Archer. Marie's trying to get to a spot where she can, oh, Mike tries to give and go. Natalie's got it. Oh, it's off Conley. That was a heck of a play by Natalie. She's just able to, you know, put it off of him. That's so hard, coach. I don't, some players have a very tough time doing it. Couldn't agree more. You know, it's it's unbelievable to me that uh, uh, all of the athletes out on the out on the pitch. You know, they, they, these chairs really become an extension of your all's uh, bodies. And what the control that you all do with the chairs is an absolute amazing. Because I'll tell you, you've seen me in your chair. It ain't pretty. <laughs> it ain't yeah, pretty. coach. It is not. But you know, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. that was a great play by Mike. Oh, to Natalie. Now the spin, but Callum Payne picks it up. Oh, Marie was looking for a spin, a 180 there, but she did not like the placement there. Michael that Archer, a, that careful was a here. Phenomenal, phenomenal oh, job of Archer on the on the alley yeah. there to bring that ball up. Careful here, Archer will put it down to Marie if he can. Oh, but he's to Natalie. Oh, it's off. Goes off the steamrollers. It's now another sidekick. It is further uh, up the court though, so. Not as easy to get a goal here. Yeah, it looks like Russo was trying oh, to do a little bit Oh, spin kick by Mike. Oh, but it doesn't. Callum Kane picks it up. He's driving it. Now he's goalie here, so, you know, there's not really a two when he's in the box. Oh, uh, we have a sub here. Looks like we have a sub. Looks like uh, Chris, Chris might be Faria coming off. Is coming. Is that, uh, is that Sid coming back? Yeah, now? that is Sid Carnala there. He has mostly goals for uh, 
steamrollers. He kind of. Twenty-four. I think. Yeah, that's Unbelievable. it's crazy. I don't know. Not many people scored in that much. I think he's a. Oh, and Maria oh. with the nice shot. Uh, Michael Archer with the pass to Maria. What a shot. Here we go here. If you see Michael Archer, just a huge spin kick. You can't even guard that. And Maria just puts it right in there. What a touch to put it right on the post. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something that we, we try to coach all the players and is you need you need to put that ball in like the 18 inches between the post and the edge and that's that's how you get things done that was that was yeah. just a thing of beauty it's in, it's incredible though because that's a hard kick from mike and it's a hard it's hard to make that happen oh and here comes natalie down the court callum kane's going to try and hit it out of there but natalie's going to stay with him callum's drop oh we got a two on one here I'm not sure who's I, on I, I didn't see it I didn't see it either, Coach, but uh, that's what the referees are here well, for. That's why they make the big bucks. <laughs> okay, here's a, this is big here. If, if uh, Circle City goes up 2-0 here, it's a great way to start off the game. Let's see if they can get it here. Archer, he's looking for where to pass it. He's down the Natalie. Natalie to him. Oh, Maria Herman. Oh! It hits off the post. It's not quite in. It's not quite in, but it is now a sidekick for um, Circle City. So um, Steamroller's not out of it yet, Coach. No, Marie just 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 a little bit late on that seal. I mean, she almost she almost got to it just a little bit late. But that was a beautiful looking play. Oh, oh, oh my gosh! And Mike, he puts it across like he's going to Maria, but Natalie just comes in. And she puts it right behind Aaron, Aaron's door there, what, or Conley there. That was a fantastic play, just, you know, right behind him. Natalie is one of the best in the business at closing the deal. I mean, she just, uh, whether she's playing weak side, strong side wing, uh, she can put the ball on either post. And it yeah. really, it, it leaves the goalie just not knowing what to yeah, do. Yeah, the goalie doesn't have much. any space whatsoever. They, she just, she puts it on there. So that was a that was fantastic play. And Natalie just, she saw it and she went right, she waited to make the decision. Oh, that was a big kick by, I believe, Ooh, by Conley, uh, Conley yeah. there. Yeah, Conley seems to be going all over the place here. He's having to drive it with Mike and everything. Conley definitely seems to be their, uh, kind of their enforcer. Around. Yeah. Oh, Conley's gonna, oh, he tries to make the pass, but Mike scoops it up. Oh, but they're still in the box here. Conley's just trying to see if he can get anything here, but, oh, that looks like a that two. They're not gonna call it though, because it's an advantage here. Yeah, oh, okay, now they have called it. Great job by the referee, CR. I mean, that's one of the most important things. You know, you saw right away, uh, Kyle, how he just held up that two. That let everybody on the court know, hey, I've seen it, I got it, but, uh, City has the advantage, and so we're going to see yeah, how this that's, plays out. Yeah, that's the important thing in soccer because it's like, well, they have the advantage. They have a chance to score. Don't call it because that's helping the other team. Oh, Marie just doesn't quite see it but doesn't try to push it at all. It's now a goal kick. I'll tell you, Kyle, Kyle I'll tell you, the, uh, you know, it's two to nothing. Um, San Jose's still in this game. It's been a very yeah. good game. They just got to get, they're having a hard time getting any kind of offensive yeah, transition they're not. going. They're not, they're not on the tack very much. So yeah, Coach. I think they'll, uh, they'll address that at halftime uh, and uh, hopefully come out and be, but they're certainly still in this, uh, in this match. Yeah, it's, going, uh, al going along with that, looks like he didn't even pass it to anyone there, but Michael Archer now driving with Conley. Conley's trying to fake him out here, uh, but Archer's got it. Archer puts it over to Natalie. Natalie's now on it. That's actually a bit of a dangerous play there, but oh, that looked like it might be a foul, but it is not called. It is uh, the steamroller's ball. I'll tell you, I saw Sid Conley kind of stand wide, uh, Kyle, on the outside. I think I now I know why that he has so many goals. He's doing a great job, totally unattended, and Conley almost got the ball over oh. time. Oh, Con Conley saw the space between uh, Mike and uh, Kevin Perry, but he just couldn't make the play there. Oh, and Sid right there, he's uh, he tried to keep 
keep the ball in play and get the possession, but he hits it out there. Yeah, he's it's trying to get a hard punch back on goal. Now Natalie, Natalie to Archer. Up. Oh, Archer to Maria, but Maria is just, she is just not wide enough, so she cannot get to that. There's now Steamroller's ball. And uh, I think that is Aaronsdorf, who is a, uh, like oh, we have a sub. Here. Oh, we two have two subs. Time. We have uh, Chris Faria and and uh, Liam Ile. He's actually only played for a couple, like for a couple uh, tournaments, coach. So he's brand new to this game. Yeah, I got a chance to meet Liam at uh, one of the tournaments here in Indiana earlier in the year. Great, great player, great kid. He's gonna be, he's gonna be fantastic. He's gonna be really yeah. good. Yeah. And Michael here, he's trying to find space to get it to Natalie, but. Oh, Natalie gets it now. Now that was a fantastic play by uh, Mike and Natalie. They just know each other so well and just switched off there. But now Mike has the ball, he's driving it. He's trying to find open space. Oh, yeah, and we have a call there. Looks like a pushing call earlier. He, again, the referee's done a great job of signaling it. Uh, yeah. Doesn't want to take the advantage away from 32, Michael Archer, but uh, a uh, really, really good call. And, and also, the, just earlier, they had a great transition where it could have been a two-on-one call. All the players were trying to get out, though. The, the, the play was moving. I thought it was a great no call, now, uh, Kyle. Now, this is really dangerous here again. I mean, steamrollers are still in it. They just can't let them score again. That kind of makes it very hard to come back in the next game. But it has happened before. It's been stuff like that crazier than that has happened. Looks like he, Michael's gonna go over to Liam. Oh no, Natalie, Natalie back. Spin kick by, oh my God! Archer just, I thought he was gonna split the defenders, but no, he put it just right behind Callum Kane. Callum Kane just couldn't do much. Natalie with the nice little pass behind Archer. That, there's no defending that, Coach. Kyle, that was, that was hook, line, and sinker. He waited. Archer waited to see what Colin was going to do, and as soon as he made his move, he just finished it off and went behind, uh, behind yes. the goalie. That was that so, was an amazing play. We're at 19 minutes here, so we're almost at at the end of this first half. Aaronsdorf is pushing the ball here, uh, but the ref calls it on Aaronsdorf, I believe. Michael Archer, I think he's, I think Circle City's willing to go for zip. Just in the, oh my gosh. And Natalie, what a pass, but Liam, Eli was just not quite in the right position to make the play there. And um, Mike Hayes over there, the head coach of the Circle City, is trying to tell Eli where to line up. Well, he's a young player, and it's, I, I, again, the, the thing that I'm loving uh, being back and seeing this, Kyle, we have so many new players and so many new faces, even on some, uh, you know, existing teams, uh, that just young young new players coming into sport, and that's that's what it's all about. Like we were yes, talking Coach. earlier, California bringing, you know, eight teams. I think there's three or four new teams from California the first time out to nationals. It's just, it's great. It's a great thing. So it looks like it looks we're like at Kyle, we're, time, we're yeah. at halftime we got a, we got that uh, didn't get a lot of extended play time after the clock so they're resetting the clock and um, we'll see you all in the second half yes we'll see you all in the second half and we're gonna have some words from our sponsors so see you guys in the second half Uh, Nimi is a manufacturing company for 25 years. Uh, we started out of our garage uh, manufacturing products and for the industrial market as well as disabled products and outdoor products too as well. Uh, we were able to help out uh, the disabled sports uh, world by building a power wheelchair. We have developed uh, many products for the industrial market like uh, vacuum fixturing that holds down, sucks down parts using vacuum power versus using double-faced tape that customers would do uh, 
and use clamps and vices and traditional stuff like that. Um, we can do full five-sided machining uh, by using vacuum chucks and different products of ours. Uh, the Strike Force has redefined the uh, power soccer game, uh, giving the individual the ability to express inside of him how to play the game um, without holding back. We have built a chair, the Strike Force, to be low profile, fast, quick, um, and take over the game. The manufacturing of the Strike Force has led us into the manufacturing of the Track Force chair, which is an outdoor, rugged chair built for the beach. Uh, hunting, uh, any outdoor enthusiast that wants to get out of his everyday chair and uh, be able to go around in his yard even.
Okay, folks, welcome back. This is the second half here. And the Steamrollers, they're down pretty bad here, 3-0. But, I mean, teams have come back from more than this before. I mean, it actually happened to us, the Atlanta Sting. Coach, do you remember that? Yeah, I remember we were up 3-0, and then we gave yeah. up three goals in about a minute and 30 seconds and uh, had to come back to get the tie for that one. Yeah, that was actually very hard, Coach. That kind of got us all out of bracket play. But here we go. This is only the second game, so it's not going to mess too much with the bracket. But uh, here we go for steamrollers to start it off with Conley. Oh, Conley tries to do the spin kick, but he does not put it on goal. And that is now a goal kick for the steamrollers. I think that was a coach. Uh, I think that was a play. I think they're trying to get the ball down in the uh, attacking side of the court. And uh, this way maybe they can pinch it in and get a, get a quick uh, early half transition goal. And that can change the whole uh, perspective of the game. Yes, Coach, you are right. Oh, but here we go. Um, Mike tries to put it to Natalie, but the steamrollers are taking it over. Here we go, Conley. Oh, he's trying to drive. But, oh, this is closer to a one, but it is not called. And Conley driving it down with Mike. You know, Conley's going all, oh, Conley just, just messes up there, just slips. And it happens to go out on him. Oh, it looks like oh, no, it looks no. It looks like, like Steamroll has got the got the ball. That Interesting. Was, again, I think that was a good no call by the ref. I'm sure Mike disagrees, but uh, Michael Archer disagrees. But I thought it was a good no call. Yeah, that was kind of hard. But we also don't have the best angle up here, Coach. Oh, Aaron Storf. Oh, he's on Natalie. He's with Natalie. Here we go. He's pushing it with him. Pushing it with her. Oh, Michael gets it now. Michael and Natalie. Oh, Natalie gets. Ooh. Looks like something fell out off of her chair there, Coach. Yes. Hey, Kyle, I just thought we would be remiss if we didn't wish congratulations to uh, Natalie Russo and Jordan Dickey. Uh, yes, I don't know if you saw Coach. the big news. It was all over Facebook and everything else. Uh, congratulations. They are in officially engaged. Yeah, that's the awesome part of this sport, Coach. It's not just that people become friends. It's that people become you know, fiance, so <laughs> that's uh, that's awesome there. I want to know who what teams are playing for next year. <laughs> yeah, Coach, that would be a very interesting thing. I think it would become a cool rivalry kind of anniversary type thing. Oh, and Conley puts it out for a corner kick. It's Mike. Great job of Archer setting that up. And Conley just got a little bit uh, impatient there. He should have just... You know, if he could have just stayed patient, let that ball come back to him, he yeah. could have maybe driven it out there through the middle now, of the court. Now, this is another dangerous. I'd be worried that uh, Mike would put it behind Connolly. Connolly seems to be ready for it, but... Oh, and Natalie's on the other side. Looks like a trick play. Oh, my gosh. Natalie sees the opening. She almost gets it. Natalie, she's now right in the goal. Oh, but she can't get it. Michael Archer. Oh, he tries a spin kick. It goes off of Connolly here. Kyle, I've noticed that uh, in the last few years, uh, starting with the shockwave and now a lot of other teams, put in a lot of uh, a lot of motion plays and things like that. It makes it very difficult on the defender. Yeah, the, the defense goalie. doesn't really know. Here it goes. It looks like they're doing another. Oh, my gosh. And Mike puts it off Connolly with the big spin kick here. Here's the replay. Now, this, oh, my gosh. It looks like it was going from McIntyre, but it just goes off Connolly behind him and into the goal. That is Kyle, you've heard me say it a million lead. times. You've heard me say it a million times about, in this game, it's not checkers, it's chess. That was a chess play right there. I know, they did it, they went, they shot goal, they showed uh, Natalie in the same motion package again. And this time, Archer, they, they over jump, get really aggressive on their defense, and Archer sees it and just puts it right off the back of his, uh, back of his guard. That was, something else to see yeah and coach that's kind of how uh, the shockwave were able to win the premier cup back in 2019 Connolly goes to um Carnaval. sid sid's pushing it i think sid's gonna try and get a goal here and it will be the steamrollers ball this is the first time really the steamrollers have had it in a dangerous spot here see if they can uh, make something get get something going here 
Oh, and Conley is a good spin kick. He just put it on, like, right at Ehrensdorf, and Ehrensdorf could not even make a play on it. But now Conley's driving with Natalie. Now, oh, but he just he just can't come around the ball, and that'll be Circle City's ball. Good job by Natalie by coming off it, seeing that he no longer had control. And the rest gonna call 15 here. Yeah, most of the coaches coach, and you know this, say don't give the 15 feet, but a lot of times the rest will call it. Well, yeah, I mean that's that's how we that's how we coach it. Let let uh, you know be aggressive, and and uh, when the referee calls it, you know you get back to your get that back to your spot. Uh, now this is uh yeah, coach, you're you're right about that. I remember I'm used to you telling us that aggressive mistakes, but here we go for the steamrollers. This is the most danger that Circle City's been in. Conley with the oh, he's just missing those. Spin kicks today, Coach. Just seems to be a little bit off. Uh, you know, I, I like I said, I think it's jitters. I think they might be, you know, I think the steamrollers are pushing right now. You know, they, they're down 4-0, and they're just doing everything they can to make something happen. Yeah, that Natalie now, she's in the corner. She's trying to make something happen for Circle C. Oh, she puts it to Mike. Mike all the way to McIntyre, but McIntyre just can't quite get there. It seems that he's just, ha McIntyre's been just short of a lot of opportunities here. But now Steamroller's ball goes to Ehrensdorf. Ehrensdorf gets it by McIntyre and he stops Mike's spin kick. That was a fantastic play. Oh, and he gets it behind Mike, but Mike kind of wanted that to happen and is now driving it out. Mike, oh, he pretends he get, does the fake pass to Natalie and he's driving down the court, he keeps it in. Oh, he puts it behind Conley. Oh, Conley almost makes a hit off of Mike. Oh, and Conley hits it out of bounds. That was a good, hard battle by Mike and Conley, both trying to hit it off each other there, Coach. Yeah, Michael Archer, his game this, the, today has been, the biggest thing I've noticed is he's been very, very uh, patient. Yeah, here we go now, Carnot. Uh, Sid trying to make a play here. He goes down to Conley. It's almost a two. Conley, oh, he could have made the play to Sid, but didn't see it. Now Natalie pushing down here. McIntyre trying to get to the other post. Oh, that was a hard hit there, but fortunately, I think it might be called on Natalie, but. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not sure. She had, she had ball control there. Um, it seems that Conley uh, came into the, uh, looks like it might be, Natalie might be seven out uh, here. Yeah, I think we're going to see JC, brother and sister substitution here. Yeah, that's unfortunate there for Natalie. Right. Hopefully it's just uncomfortable and just needs a break real quick. Just needs maybe J a little readjustment. JC Russo now in. He, hasn't, he just started back this year after a long uh, break from it, especially from COVID as well. So, yeah, we uh, we were lucky enough to uh, see JC earlier in the year, and uh, his his play is still he's still uh, playing at a very high level. So, yes, it'd be interesting so to see with this dynamic. Yeah. So here we go, Mike. Oh, nice fake past Sid. Sid just didn't see it. Conley is trying his best here to try and keep Mike from driving. It has not. Oh, that's almost a two by by Connolly and Ehrensdorf, but it's not quite. Oh, and JC over to McIntyre. Oh, McIntyre tries to make the pass, but Mike is going to hit it out here, and it will be the steamroller's ball. Steamrollers have been doing a great job staying in their triangle, uh, defensively, offensively, having multiple outlets, passes, staying wide. They, they, they've really played a, a really, really phenomenal match today. It looks like we have a sub in for the steamrollers. Chris, the end. Oh, nice kick by Connolly, but Aaron's doesn't quite get it over to Chris. Chris was wide open there. Yeah, the steamrollers seem to be... They know what they want to do, but they're not making the plays. They're not executing. To Mike. I, I, just, oh. I just chalk it up to first game nerves and, you know, so. Uh, 
I think I think they have a lot of great soccer in front of them this uh, during this tournament. Yeah, coach, definitely. Here we go, Conley. He's pushing it down now. He's trying to make a play here. He's Again, he's, he's just through. willing that ball. I mean, he's just doing everything he can to get to get some, you know, some space or something. Oh my gosh, Mike keeping it in there. Oh, that's almost a two. I think they're gonna call. Yep, you got the call. And no, it's not one. a two on one though. It's a. Uh, I think they called. Oh, did they call uh, for hitting? Yeah, I think. If I'm not mistaken, that is an indirect kick. But it is still extremely dangerous because all Mike has to do is put it off of any player. It doesn't even have to be his own. But Conley, this oh, but he is. caused that. Oh, Mike wanted that to happen. Over to JC. Oh, and Aaronsdorf picks it up. Doesn't hit it towards Mike because he knows he'll go for another spin. Um, now it will be the Circle, C Circle City Rollers ball. That was the right decision by Aaronsdorf to try to bring it up that alley. He had yeah. the alley open, and uh, Mike just got a little bit on it and, and uh, got it so he pushed it out of bounds. And oh, now Circle City has good possession. play by Mike. It, now 10 minutes down into the second half. Steamrollers, if they want to do something, they got to make it happen now. But it seems as if Circle City has control of this game. McIntyre. Oh, we're going to have a two-on-one call here on the steamrollers. They seem to be bunching up here. I think they're trying to make something happen. JC just a little bit off on that uh, front guard punch there. He either wanted to he either wanted to try to bring it over to his weak side wing. Oh, the kick by Mike. Oh, but no one is down in that corner that JC went to. JC saw the open alley but did not realized that McIntyre was not there. Oh, that's dangerous there, but Conley picks it up. Uh-oh, now, now McIntyre trying to make a play. Conley hits it out. Conley's really trying hard here, coach. He's just. Yeah, he's definitely been their workhorse today and uh, you know doing everything he possibly can. Now it's just becoming you know, they just, they just want to see, I'm sure they just want to see, uh, oh, a little miss kick there. You don't see that very often. I don't know that, Archer. I don't know if that was a miss kick. He seemed to spin the ball. It might have been, but now that ball is spinning. This is the new ball here that they're starting to use. Oh, JC, what a shot. Two nice shots, but his tear, it seems to turn off. Yeah, have, uh, Usually they bring it out. Usually, great job by Kane to just go ahead and maintain possession and get that ball out of the box and bring it back up to half court. Oh, Mike over to JC, JC to McIntyre, but McIntyre can't quite make the play there. It was really close to a 5 0 lead, but it will stay for Conley now. Aaronsdorf, Mike takes control. Looks like a foul. Chris here. Now only have eight minutes left in this game. Um, it seems as if it is running out of time for steamrollers. Oh, JC. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. JC looking like him from his old days. He almost spin kicked it and put it in off of the spin kick by Mike. Yeah, he wanted he, it, but that, that, that had a little bit too much uh, too much mustard on it. It was a little bit of hot sauce from, uh, from Mike. It definitely was, Coach. Here we have, we have Mike, or sorry, JC here trying to push the ball, but Conley takes it. Conley now pushing it down the court. He's trying to get a goal here. Oh, Chris Freya is not in a good spot, but he gets into good position. Oh, he puts it behind Mike, but Mike, I think, wanted that to happen there, Coach. I think he was trying to drive from the other side. Yeah, again, he's playing very patient. He's uh, working and making sure that, you know, it's it's a matter of pride. You know, you always feel good when you when you get a goose egg uh, defensively. So he's um, he's being very very patient and, and uh, tracking you know tracking the ball and the angles and not the not the player. He's certainly not ball ball blind. You know, he's uh, 
He's thinking about where the ball is going to be and not where it is. Okay, so it is a uh, Circle City ball, but this is certainly dangerous here as Liam Elay comes in. I think Coach Mike Hayes might be trying to get Liam a goal here. I yeah. think that's why he's Liam's subbing. uncovered. If I was, I would, I would get, I would have him come back a little bit. Oh, it looks like uh, Sid might be coming in now to cover him. Okay. Okay, Sid. Now he's hoping that maybe it goes to Conley and Conley hits it to him, but that's not going to happen. Aaron Storff tries to take it. Oh, that look. Oh, that looks like a foul there. I'm not sure on who. It's going to be called on Circle City. Now this is a big chance for. Steamrollers here, coach. They gotta, you know, they're near the box. All they gotta do is hit it off a player and in. It's indirect here. No, I believe it's direct. Oh, it is a direct here, guys, folks. Um, this is big here. Connolly has a big spin kick. All he has to do is put it in between them here. Let's see if he can put it together here. Oh, but it's a pass to Connolly, to Sid. Sid can't quite make the play. And Mike makes the defensive play. But it is they are still not out of it yet. The steamrollers are still have a kick in deep in Circle City's territory. Looks like now, the ball's just Conley outside sees, that. Oh, Conley just can't quite Mike there just lets the ball come to him. Oh, that looked like a foul there, but they're not gonna call it. I think they're trying to let the game expire, but oh Mike was what a crazy Fake spin kick. Now he's coming to, towards um, Callum Kane. And it looks like he's trying to get it over to Liam, but Liam's not quite in the spot where Mike can get it to. We have McKintree up in, at point looking See for. See if Mike works pass. his ball back up to the point or gets, uh, again, he's, he's relinquishing the court there. Ooh. Um, he was trying to get it over to Liam, you're right. Okay, here's a big play here. Um, Carnal and Sid miscommunicating. But Ehrensdorf has the ball. Oh, now that Ehrensdorf, Ehrensdorf with a shot. Oh, but they're gonna call, I believe, a free kick here. Now this is even closer to the box here, coach. I believe it's a direct, but I'm not positive here. Uh, I, be uh, I believe this is indirect here, bud. Okay, it is indirect here, but Conley has a big kick. Can he make the, oh my gosh, what a kick by Conley. Ehrensdorf just can't quite get to it, and that's going to give Circle City the ball. Now have about three minutes left in the game. Oh, that looked like it might be a call on who? That will be on the steamrollers. Yeah, I think it's on Ehrensdorf. Circle City has the ball. They're trying to uh, force the time to expire here. Looks like we have a big ball on the other court by the Galaxy. Update there, 3-3. Three, three. Mike now has it. I misspoke, folks. 4-3 over in the LA Galaxy game. But Conley here. He's trying to push it. Oh, he has an open space, but he get, Mike gets it past him. Back to Conley, and Mike's pushing it down. Liam and McIntyre are on the same side of the court. McIntyre rotating. We have a two-on-one here by Circle City. Conley, uh, Conley really missed an opportunity down there in the corner. He had, uh, he had good position on the ball. He had someone up at the point. Uh, one of his players up at the point. He could have uh, kind of turned around and, and put that ball at the point and maybe get a you know, little transitional offensive goal. Ehrensdorf puts it all the way down. Good job the by the side. steamrollers to pin it down low and uh, see if they can um, see if they can get a little offensive uh, magic going here. The now it looks rid of this coach, goose egg. like we're at about a minute left in the game kind of running out of time here. Yeah, that's and not how much extra time we'll have. Circle City knows that, and they're trying to waste, not waste time, Coach, but they are trying to use as much as possible. 
Mike there hitting it out. All right, looks like clock has expired, so now we've got uh, referee is uh, called for one minute. One minute of extension play. One minute, so Mike patient there, but Sid hits it. It goes out of bounds here, but there is a chance. Okay, here we go. Circle City here having has the ball now. Passing it up to Mike. Is McIntyre. Mac, uh, Mike is pushing down now, trying to use as much time as possible. Conley puts it behind him, but Mike just picks it up. He's driving it down, trying to dry it until clock expires. Oh, how, somehow. Oh, here that, we go. That is game, folks. Circle City with the 4-0 win against the San Jose Steamrollers. I am uh, Kyle Eccleston, and uh, with me is uh, da uh, Coach Dad, something like that. Uh, <laughs> thank you for tuning in, folks. Thanks for having us, Kyle. Appreciate having you. Thank you, guys. And uh, next, we'll have a next game up in the 30 minutes or so. So thank you for having us. And... Uh, have a good day, folks.
Pass it up to Dowling. And there's the pass to Dowling. Dowling going to take a shot. Audrey Keener across to Keezer. Keezer shot in. Hello, this is Alex Bitzer, and I'm here at the Power Soccer Nationals here in the United States, and I'm here with Robert from Brooks Barracuda, and I'm uh, with Shepherd, Shepherd Strikers. And we're here today to watch the glass of fire and the shockwave, and the, they have kicked off now. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. This is Robert with the Brooks Barracudas. We're here watching the Minnesota Shockwave and Glass of Fire. Yes. Should be a good game. And the... The green team is the... I'm sorry. Which... Shockwave. Thank you. The Shockwave is kicking in now. He kicks it across, and it is reflected back off the sidelines. It's another kick in for the Minnesota Shockwave from uh, Pete Winslow. Thank you. From the sideline. Here he comes. Oh. <laughs> Goes across the court. And it looks like it's going to be a goal kick. Or, no, it's sideline. Here comes Black. I'm not as. Here comes the shockwave again, bring, kicking it in. And the corner kick for the Minnesota yeah. Shockwave. Yep. This is a dangerous spot. It is very dangerous in this corner because there's many different angles you can get the ball in, too. Looks like he's going to kick it across. Yep. Yep, he does. And it's a goal. Oh, it's a goal, yes. Minnesota. Florida, Minnesota. From Riley Johnson. Now watch here. He hits it backwards across the goal. And now here comes Minnesota on a kickoff. No, this is Glasser. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Lasset brings the ball down. He's coming around. Tries to go around Mike Riley. Dribbling around. Let's see if he can get it. Passes it off and then. Let's it go out of bounds, and it is. No, no, it's not. And that was a two on one on glasses. Two so. on one. If you see something, go and speak up and say it. Okay. All right. Minnesota is yeah. coming down. He's going to kick it back. Kicks it back. Up. Oh. Oh, for another kick in from Pete Winslow to. Looks like he's going to try to get straight to Riley Johnson. Yep, nope. and he does almost. 
Bring it around the side. They're battling in the corner for the ball here. See who's going to get the, the kick in. Yep. Oh, and it touches off a of glass. So, so it's a corner kick. Minnesota gets the ball, bringing it down. Oh, it's I mean, out of bounds. Say it's Minnesota's ball. Minnesota's ball. I was wrong on that last one. That's Glasso. Kicks it across. Minnesota's bringing it around. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Looks like Minnesota's just going to yeah. let it go. Goal kick. Yep. Here comes Glasser to kick it off. Minnesota hits it back. <laughs> Comes Glasser. Up oh, two on one. Yep. Uh, Minnesota's ball. Yes, it is. Is this direct or indirect, though? Um, I believe this is an indirect kick. Indirect, okay, yeah. If it's a foul, it's a direct kick. Okay. <clears throat> the Minnesota blocked that ball, bringing it out. Important in this game to keep your spacing. Yeah, so the more those two on ones. Right. Yeah, he spins it around. <laughs> Got glass to take an ebb. Side in. Yep. From about half court. Then kicks it. Oh, oh, nice. oh Minnesota almost had a good shot there. Hey, Glasser with a kick in deep in their territory. Another side in from Pete Winslow. Yeah. 
So he's going to fire right on the goal. Looks like it. And he did. Gets a corner kick now from that. Went a little bit wide, but a good shot. Yeah. Good idea. Here comes Klaus here, about to kick off, or goal kick, I mean. Passes it off. Trying to bring it around. The Minnesota's having a little trouble getting it around, it looks like. And Mike hey, he's just gonna drive it around it. Oh, Glass has still got possession of the ball. It looks like Taking it. it. Oh. Minnesota's ball. Yep. Looks like it. Yeah. And so just bring it around, coming in. Oh. Two, on. Two on one. Yeah. See if they can score here. I don't think that was a score. Was that a score? Yep, they counted as a goal. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I think for it not to There's count, it would have to go 20 inches or higher. 20 inches, okay. Yeah. So kind of above your knee, probably, sitting in the, the power chair. Okay. Because I didn't think it could go above the guard. Yeah, it didn't. It just popped right over. That's what it did. It's like, that's why I didn't. Okay, so I know who's on the Minnesota team with the, the glass, glass, so I'm not so sure about yeah. We got 15, which is Joel Rodriguez. Okay. And who's 18? That's Anthony Mercado. Oh. And it's Minnesota ball down here. <laughs> Glass bringing it down, coming around. Oh. Pass towards middle, almost gets it to him. Riley. I believe it was out of bounds over there. Okay. Then it says bring it down, passes it off. He's dribbling it down. Pass, oh. pass it back. And Glass has stolen it, bringing it down. But Riley's fighting for it from Minnesota. And steals it, it looks like. Yep, he has. 
He's just going to dribble around. Passing it off. He brings it around. Wow. Get around. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. oh wow. Here it comes. It goes in, but I don't know if they're going to count it. It looks. There was some heavy contact down there going into the. And the, and the, the ball move, too. That's what threw me, uh, throws me off there. Looks like they're discussing it. The refs going to give it to him or not? It looks like it. Because it's going to kick off. Yep. So while we're waiting, how's your experience here at the tournament? It's been a lot of fun. Um, we played our first two games yesterday, and we played our first one today. Oh, we have yeah. another one at 5:30. Yeah. So. Huh. Y'all won a lot of them, or? We won our first two. We okay. lost one today, and okay. then cool. we'll see what happens uh, later on this afternoon. Yep. And here comes Glassa, kicking it off, and it goes out of bounds. Minnesota is kicking it in here. Looks like he's going to pass it to Riley, and Riley takes it down the field. <laughs> we got number 27 for the Minnesota Shockwave. Pass it back to probably get it back over to Riley. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. He almost got it between them. He almost did. See if he's going to shoot across or straight on goal. Tries to go across to Riley, but doesn't make it. And Minnesota still has the ball. And it goes to Glasser. Minnesota's so got the ball again coming around. And he's going to spin it. Spin it. And oh, 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 nice stop by the Lassa. Definitely. Minnesota's doing a good job of passing the ball around the box. and They really are. They're getting it moving. They're keeping the ball. Pretty well. Glass is having trouble. Yeah, it looks like they're having trouble it. passing it. And yeah. Oh. You gonna try again? Oh. Two shots on goal there. Glass did good stopping him. Definitely. Side, try to send it across to Riley. Yep. Oh, the, oh no. right between them. Glass takes it out, trying to dribble it down and down between the two Minnesota players. He's still going. Glass has got yeah. it. Yes. Driving it. He's driving it down the court. Oh, trying to pass Riley. Can he get yeah. it around him? Oh.
Well, he stole the ball, and now it's Minnesota ball. Oh, out on Minnesota. Yep. See if they can do something with the ball. Glass is kicking it in now to a triangle offense there, it looks like. Ooh. Oh. Still in for Glassa. Yep. Oh. Um, who are they going to give it to? Oh, Glassa. Yep. Glassa's ball. That's the end of the first That's half. half. So. Yes, it is. And we're at halftime now for the game with the USPSA MK Battery Cup. And we'll be back with you in a little bit after halftime. See you then, folks. Thank you. Uh, Nimi is a manufacturing company for 25 years. Uh, we started out of our garage. Uh, manufacturing products and for the industrial market as well as disabled products and outdoor products too as well. Uh, we were able to help out uh, the disabled sports uh, world by building a power wheelchair. We have developed uh, many products for the industrial market like uh, vacuum fixturing that holds down, sucks down parts using vacuum power versus using double face tape that customers would do uh, and use clamps and vices and traditional stuff like that. Um, we can do full five-sided machining uh, by using vacuum chucks and different products of ours. Uh, the Strike Force has redefined a uh, power soccer game, uh, giving the individual the ability to express inside of him how to play the game um, without holding back. We have built a chair, the Strike Force, to be low profile, fast, quick, um, and take over the game. The manufacturing of the Strike Force has led us into the manufacturing of the Track Force chair, which is an outdoor, rugged, chair built for the beach, uh, hunting uh, any outdoor enthusiast that wants to get out of his everyday chair and uh, be able to go around in his yard even.
And welcome back to the our tournament here with um, Minnesota and Chicago playing here. It is three to nothing for Minnesota, starting the second half. And Klasa from Chicago is kicking off here. Passes it off to his player. Passes it back. Oh. Dribbles it down. All right, it's coming down. And it is Minnesota ball. They're lined up in the classic triangle yes, formation. Yeah. Here we go. Yep. And he lets it go. Oh. Minnesota back. And he sends it across. And. Glass is kicking it in here. Passes it off and. Minnesota knocks it back out. Here comes Minnesota. He gets it around, drives it around to the side. Send it back to the middle. Oh. Will he do that? Yep. And a spin kick. And push. Oh. Corner kick here from Minnesota. Oh, man. It'll be a set ball. Set ball, okay. Or is it? No, it looks like it's oh, a two. Oh, okay. Thing. He's called a two yeah. on one. Or is it? Wait, no, it's a no, set it's, ball. Okay. I was confused there for a second. And the ref kicks it first. <laughs> And it's a corner kick? No. Goal kick. Goal kick. ball they got it yeah but Minnesota steals it right back <laughs> spins back passes it back to Riley passes it back to him oh nice and it is a, a goal, goal. For, Minnesota. goal for Minnesota yes gotta watch Here's out for those backspins nice nice hit yeah, there Very good passing there for Minnesota. Definitely. When you get the ball passing like that, you can get a lot of good things going for you. He's always got that open uh, far side post. Yeah. And if you got a player over there, you're usually going to score. Yes, you are. Oh, here we go. Oh. Here comes Minnesota. Glass takes the ball. Minnesota Minnesota's got it back again. There. Close. Sometimes doing this, it's like you're tempting to want to say what you think they should do. Right. Instead of saying what they're doing. It's a lot different when you're actually in the chair. Yeah. You're making split second decisions. That is true. Here we go. Oh. From Minnesota. Oh, last one. And he Minnesota ball here. (laughs) (laughs) 
Glass is kicking in, kicking it in. Got Gary Walsh taking the kick in for Glassa. But Riley steals it from Minnesota. Come on. Oh. And he still keeps it in bounds. So still their ball. He's got an open guy at the top of the box. Yeah. Very nice. Kicks it in and it is blocked. He's just gonna let it roll out. Yeah, so that's when it says kick again. Looks like he's going to kick it over to Riley and maybe kick it in here. Yep. And Man. it is a goal. Wow. I like how they have a player in motion when he goes to kick it. Yeah. The one moving to kind of throws you off. And throw the defense off, get them to jump maybe. So it's five nothing right now for Minnesota over Glassa from Chicago. It looks like they kicked it too early. Yeah, it looks like it. Brings it on and Minnesota steals it from O. It is Glass's ball. Here comes Minnesota again. See if they can get something going on this one here. Uh oh. From Minnesota got it. Here it comes again. Nice. Nice hit. So you're going to hit it back. And, and oh, nice stop for up. Set ball. Yeah. Lassie did good there on their defense. Yeah, they did. That's hard to defend against sometimes when they get the ball moving that fast. Yeah, when they hit it that hard. Yeah. Glass steals it, but not for long. Here it comes. Mm. I think the refs are a little more uh, strict on the contact in the Nationals than they are in yeah. regional play. They are. Kick it right across to him. Oh, straight on the goal. And the goal brings it out, hits it out. Don't pull it. The goal has to be very careful there. That's the one that's back into the, their position.
And Minnesota is hitting it in here. Play so Rye's going to go across. He's going to try to hit it off of him. Oh, a lot and of contact in there. You going to spin it? Nope. No. Just let it roll out. Yeah. Another motion play. Yeah, it is. Very interesting. He's going to try to deflect it off of him. And I set the ball again. The glasser does keep control of the first a little bit here. But Minnesota does steal it. Riley's bringing it down. She's just going to go around with it. Let's yeah. see. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. They passed the back to him, back across, and he's going to spin yeah. kick it. Yes. We well, can't get much on that one. Nice. Nice. Man. Oh, wow. Are you going to. Man. Now it's Glass's ball. That was a good passing. Yeah, it was. Very good passing. It's a lot important to keep that triangle formation. Yeah, it is. So he kicks it across. Minnesota's ball. Yep. About seven more minutes left in this game. Games go by so fast. They do. Especially when you're down there playing. If you're new to watching power soccer, there's two 20 minute halves, and that's what makes up the game. And it's going to be a goal kick for Glassa. See if they can get get on the board here, on the scoreboard. Yeah. Here comes Minnesota bringing it down. Oh. I'm going to say, my fault. <laughs> Again, Glasser. It's like Glasser's goalie. He came way out into the play field of play. Yeah, trying to bring the ball down the court. Right now, they don't have much to lose, so it's right on the fourth person. Yeah. Oh, 
Bounce it off. Minnesota, so it's a glass of ball. So with the kick in, mm -hmm. kick off. Are you guys playing again today? Yeah, we play later on today. Are y'all playing? I think from what I heard, we're playing San Antonio. Okay. Yeah. Oh. oh. Because I think Houston and San Antonio played earlier than they Houston won from what I heard. So. Mm. And y'all are playing later today too? Uh yeah, four I mean five thirty five I believe. Yeah, same as us, same as us. See if you can keep it in. Oh, and out. this is it. Once that ball gets rolling, sometimes it's hard to keep that ball in. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Wow. Back. And here comes Minnesota. Lassa. They're moving the ball down. But Minnesota does steal it. Oh, still in. Can he catch it? No. Wait, no. still in? Still in? Maybe, but no. no. Clock's winding down. We got about yeah. two minutes left. Yep. Out of bounds. Again. It's going to be Dash's ball. Lassa kicks it Lassa, in. Lassa, not Dash. Not bad. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Lassa brings it in. Bringing it down the sideline here. Look at Minnesota players not letting them go. It's like the rest going to give them some extra time. Yeah, I think it's like the clock ends at 39. 
I think it's usually like in the minute or so after that. Yeah. Glasses looking for one last shot, at least to try to get one goal in here. Right. <laughs> Minnesota set up a wall there of three people there. Is he going to try to kick it straight on goal or try to get a better shot maybe? Nope. Looks like he tried to keep those two players apart so he could hit it through, but it didn't work. Yep. And Glasser with a corner kick. And that's the end of the game. And the Minnesota Shockwave have won of the classifier 5 to 0. Thank you for watching our game today. This is the USPSA MK Battery Cup 22 in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Thank you. This is Alex Spitzer and Robert.
Hello everybody and welcome back to the Power Soccer Action here at the Plasman Athletic Center. We've got another premier game for you. RHI Sudden Impact in orange versus the Mass Chariots in white. I'm Pete Winslow. Joining me shortly here will be Nathan Mayer. But in the meantime, we've got action here. Troy Chapetta getting ready to take the shot for the Chariots. Going all the way across. Oh, couldn't get all of it. Great save, though, by Ginny Munson for sudden impact. Great play to get that all the way across in that triangle formation. Ooh, that one goes off the back of here, but Dickey is right there. Dickey wins that one for sudden impact. Jordan Dickey now taking it with some space in the middle. Andrew Chapetta defending him. Good pass out there, but that's intercepted by Troy Chapetta as the Chariots go the other way. But that will be sudden impact ball. Hair now with it for sudden impact. Dickey opens up, runs it up the middle. Some space for Luke Labus. That'll be a kick in for sudden impact. Luke Labus looking to rifle this one in, and he does off of. Chapetta get a little bit better position. Oh, a big save there by William Johnson. That one almost pops through, though. Hare looking to collect it. She keeps it in. Going for a big spin there. And Jordan Dickey finds the corner post and in. Sudden impact. Jumps out to an early 1-0 lead. Great replay here. Jordan Dickey left all alone up top. And with that much space, Jordan Dickey's going to make you pay. A sudden impact takes a 1-0 lead. Now joining me, Nathan Mayer. Hey, everybody. How's it going? What a shot there by Jordan Dickey. Yeah, I was saying Jordan had a bunch of space up top, and he's going to make any team pay. Absolutely. As the Chariots kick off here, Andrew Chapetta. That one gets intercepted by Luke. Luke taking it down to the corner. Looks like that'll be a, thought it was gonna be a foul, he did whistle, but it'll be a goal kick for the Chariots here. Nathan, I figured this would be a great, interesting matchup to watch. Sudden impact, very good at passing. Chariots also, Great at passing. It'll be a wide open game for sure. When I saw this on the schedule, I was very excited to see 
uh, how these two teams would match up. I mean, to the Chariots are new to this conference. So I'm just excited to, to see what they can do. Hare taking it now. Looks like that one off of mass player number 15, Mark Feely. This is prime real estate here for Labus and Sudden Impact. Got to think he might fire it all the way across. Ooh, that one looks like he pulled it just a little bit high as Dickey was going to open up, but one off the front of his guard. Jordan Dickey pounces on that one. Andrew Chapetta trying to hold his own. Doing a good job. That one's flipped out. Good passing there. Close to a two on one though. Andrew Chapetta doing a great job. Oh, and Jordan just misses that one, but that's gonna be a corner, says referee Shane. Great passing there by Impact. If you give them that space, it, they would do that to you all day long. Yeah, I mean, that's their calling card, right? These short, quick passes to uh, get the defense moving. But I think Andrew Pettit did a great job not biting. Oh, good stop there by William Johnson reading that one. They just on defense just to be patient. And the Chariots are doing a great job of that right now. They're they're making impact through the work right now. You know, even though they're down one nothing here with six minutes in, uh, Andrew Chapetta and William Johnson make a very good tandem in the box we've seen so far. As Hare works this one out, trying to get it back to Dickey. He does. Gets the shot. Oh, right off the back wheel. Hick and Hare put it in. Wow, <laughs> oh, my what goodness. A what a save. Great positioning by William Johnson, but I think on that one, Hare had to readjust herself to swing that in, and I think that little extra time helped Johnson. That one graces off of Dickey's guard. What a save, though, by Johnson. That was, a, that was an amazing save. The only thing you can do on that one is just, is just hope that you can get back to it. Yeah, like okay. I said, I think Lexi had to hold up just a little bit to get her chair into position. Um, and that gave Johnson the time to back up and just get the back caster wheel on it. Here we got a two on one with the Chapettas. Fires it all the way across, back to him. Tries to split the middle. Good defense there by the Chariots. You know, Nathan, we've been on this end for a little bit, but the Chariots are playing stout defense like we knew we, they would. They are, yeah. Great defense once again. Once again, they're just being patient in the back. They're making Impact do that work. Impact has to do the work to score the goal. If you're patient on defense and just stay smart, stay strong, make the offense work, and that's what they're doing really well right now. That one off of Troy Chapetta. See if they can catch up to it. Can Jordan touch it? Smart veteran play there to touch it out. And uh, Nathan, explain why that was a smart, crafty move by Jordan. What Jordan did there, if he let that ball go, that would have been a goal kick. Which would have put the ball on the top of the box. But instead, by doing what he did, he trapped the chariots down in their own end and made them work out of it. He basically making the chariots work that much harder by doing that move. Classic move by Jordan Dickey. Good passing here by the Chapettas. Jordan takes that. That one flips out. Ooh, very close on sudden impact. That'll yep, that'll be a two on one from Lexi and Jordan. Once again, great patience here by Andrew Chapetto. Not doing anything big, just keeping the 
Keep your eyes cool. Luke cuts that one off. Just pushing his way down. Loses control of it though. Troy Chapetta now working against Jordan Dickey. Play on. Johnson now comes out. That one goes all the way across. No one home for sudden impact. And that one grazes off of Jordan Dickey, but Jenny Munson keeps that in play. Great pass there by Munson. Great work there by Munson. Just get, get that ball wide. Don't do anything fancy, especially when you have Jordan Dickey on your team. You can just do that and give him the ball. Jordan Dickey going to work it back to the top for Hare. Good triangle movement here. Luke with the big shot. Oh, that almost got across. Great defense. But again, Andrew Trepetta not biting. Ooh, that's going to have to clear out there. Now Andrew Trepetta, the goalie, out of the box. So he's eligible for a two-on-one if it, if it gets to that. He is out now. There you go. I was just about to say, you know, this whole game, Jordan's been everywhere. But really, Andrew Trepetta has been everywhere for <laughs> Mass. Uh, you know, clearing out that box. And like I said, that tandem between... Andrew Chapetta and William Johnson has uh, been quite good here so far. I mean, taking a lot of offense, but you know, keeping cool under pressure. You can kind of sense that Sunday Pat's getting a little frustrated. They're getting the shots that they want. It's just not going in. And they have to keep their calm and, and coolness as well. Just keep, keep working it. Can't get frustrated. Just gotta keep press the process. Oh, here comes a good cross. Oh, big shot there. Sorry, we had a sub that we missed here. Owen Norton for the Mass Chariots comes in, number 77. And Moises Rojas for Ruth Ravis for an impact. Give and go there, splits the D. Andrew Chapetta, the goalie, has to get back in now. And he does. Norton now takes it. Got a lot of room as Johnson clears out. Hare to play defense. Good pass, gets it around Hare. Jenny Munson out to play defense against Troy Chapetta. Chapetta now working it. Munson flips it out. Oh! Big collision there. You could see uh, Norton was trying to clear out, just get caught in the goal box and. They collide, him and Dickey. That'd be kind of tough when you're trying to clear it out and you know all the chairs and bodies are moving. And sometimes you get lost. Sometimes you do, yeah. I mean, nothing really any player could do on that. They just kind of got caught in the moment, so. Mass still on the attack, though. That one red by here. Twelve and a half minutes in, and Sudden Impact is up 1-0. Sudden Impact in orange against Mass Chariots, who are in white. Rojas now with it. Stopped by Johnson. Could be a two-on-one. And Andrew Chapetta has to get back here. Now that's an interesting thing, Nathan. Uh, we see it all the time now as the goalie players are playing up. Um, and... You know, it's so important, though, even if the goalie's providing support playing up, they have to be one of the first ones back, or the first one back. Otherwise, you get caught in some awkward situations. They do, yeah. It's a new style. It, it works. But like you said, the goalie has to get back because when the goalie is in the box, the two-on-one rule is, is not existent for that player. So once Andrew's out of the box, like he is now, Ben he's always looking for a two-on-one call. But now that he's back in the box, that two-on-one does not exist there. So that's, that's why it's key to have the goalie back in the box. And you can have two players who are not the goalie in the box, but they have to be, you know, they have to abide by the two-on-one rule and stay 
you know, yes. that, that distance apart. But it just makes defending really tough then. Rojas measuring the kick. Oh, good touch there by Jordan. Oh, oh and that one gets through, and that goes over the line. Barely over the line. Andrew Chapetta, we'll look at the replay here, came out, almost got it, and Hare opened her chair up for the deflection, and that one went all the way across the line, even though it looked like Norton did try to bring it back across. Good move there by Sudden Impact, 14 minutes in here, up 2-0. It looks like Andrew Chipanga was anticipating that pass back from Lexi Hare, but a great move by Hare to just open up and let that ball bounce and it paid off for her. Here comes Sudden Impact moving it up. Johnson tries to cut off Hare. Good job there. Looks like that'll be a two on one on the chariots. Dicky with the shot to go all the way across. Ginny Munson in there. If she can just get around it. Wow, oh, what a great <laughs> You saw you saw what Jordan was dialing up. Ginny was right there, just a little bit late, maybe a little bit too far out, out of her reach, but what a great setup there. Great passion by that sudden impact. Also, this is a tough place for Mass. Uh, my personal worst place to get out of the, uh, you know, your own area when you feel just trapped in here and the offense is bearing down on you. Or the defense. But Andrew Chapetter with it now. Good give and go. But that one snuffed out by Andrew Chapetta. Here now with the kick. Ooh, I thought that one was maybe going to go all the way across. Great Good pass back. Andrew. Great defense again by Andrew Chapetta. Johnson brings that one back in. Ooh, and that one off of Dickey. Good move by Johnson. Great move there. Wasn't sure if that was the right move to bring it in, but he got around it and was able to flip it off the front of Jordan's guard. Possession chariots. Jordan going for the quick kick. Ooh, could have been close there as well. No call though. Oh, good spin, but no one home at the top for sudden impact. Great idea there by Lexi Hare. Ginger Munson was just on the bottom part of the box. But still a great move by Hare. Troy better now. Taking it down, trying to win it on the sideline. Getting turned by Jordan Dickey. Probably pass it up to the top, holds on to it. Now looks for that. Hair with it. Good shot, but couldn't get all the way around it. Andrew Chapetta, good defense. Take it out. Well, that one looks like it grazed off the back of Andrew Chapetta's guard, or back guard. Looks like they have a sub coming in here. Munson going out, coming in. Michael Rodriguez. Jordan down in the corner, catches it with the front. Gonna look to turn on it. No one coming out to play defense. Good job by Andrew staying put. Not biting on these passes. And that's going to be a two on one on Lexi and Jordan. It was almost like Jordan Dickey was using Andrew Chapetta to get that ball moving more. Great play there by Dickey. You know, it can be tough in these corners, Nathan, trying to keep your space as well as trying to be the first person there to, you know, get the ball as well. Absolutely.
Oh, good shot there. Oh, yeah. what a shot by Lexi Hare. Well, look at that replay. Good pass by Jordan to get it back to her. And boom. She rockets it home. Great shot by Lexi Hare right before halftime as well to take a 3-0 lead, sudden impact over the Chari Mass Chariots. Honestly, Nathan, that's a tough one to defend if you're uh, Norton back there. Yes, I've been in those situations before. Those are not fun to defend. But a great shot there by Hare, too. I mean, that, that was a great shot. Hair now with it. Johnson trying to rip it away from her. Doing a good job to stay in front of her. And that'll do it for the first half. RHI Sudden Impact up 3-0 against Mass Chariots. Nathan, what do you think... Uh, you know, the halftime speeches will be here and the adjustments that uh, each team is going to make. I think percent impact, just keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're passing the ball great. You're, you're moving that, that defense around and the shots are starting to fall. So percent impact, I wouldn't change much. Maybe you speed up their play a little bit, but overall that was a great half percent impact. So chariots. They've been playing great defense. They've, they've played great the entire half. They got a little spaced out here at the end of the half, which is where I send them back to make the pay. But just just keep staying calm, staying collected, and, and but you have to get the offense going a little bit. You're down 3-0 with 20 minutes to go. So you have to try and find a way to get the offense moving a little bit, but their defense has been playing great. I guess it is. 3-0, but, but uh, overall, that was a fun half. Yep, a lot more action to come. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be back with second action, second half action here in a little moment. Uh, Nimi is a manufacturing company for 25 years. Uh, we started out of our garage uh, manufacturing products and for the industrial market, as well as disabled products and outdoor products too as well. Uh, we were able to help out uh, the disabled sports uh, world by building a power wheelchair. We have developed uh, many products for the industrial market, like uh, vacuum fixturing that holds down, sucks down parts using vacuum power versus using double face tape that customers would do uh, and use clamps and vices and traditional stuff like that. Um, we can do full five-sided machining uh, by using vacuum chucks and different products of ours. Uh, the Strike Force has redefined a uh, power soccer game, uh, giving the individual the ability to express inside of him how to play the game um, without holding back. We have built a chair, the Strike Force, to be low profile, fast, quick, um, and take over the game. The manufacturing of the Strike Force has led us into the manufacturing of the Track Force chair, which is an outdoor, rugged chair built for the beach. Uh, hunting, uh, any outdoor enthusiast that wants to get out of his everyday chair and uh, be able to go around in his yard even.
All right, everybody, welcome back to the Plasman Athletic Center here. Pete Winslow along with Nathan Mayer. We've got second half action here between RHI Sudden Impact, who's up three already against Mass Chariots. We'll see what adjustments they make here, Nathan. Um, still a lot of game left for sure. Definitely. That one just out of the reach of Munson. Like you said, great defense uh, on Chariot's part with Andrew Chepetta and you know, a bit of mix of Johnson and Norton back there, but they gotta find a way to get up the floor and press a little bit, make Rojas work a little bit. Well, and that one's going all the way back to the back, but Norton's there. Great clear there by Norton. Got yeah, it. going back to what you said, like they're down 3-0, there's really nothing more to lose. They just had to start tick tick and chances. Well, that one bounces up, and that'll be a set ball. We we're just talking on the break about how the soccer balls have been a little bouncier than they have in past years, we feel like. Uh, not terrible, but yeah, uh, that one bounces up. The game definitely feels faster with these balls, but it does add some danger that the ball is bouncing that high. Dickey gets that one back out here. Oh, good catch by Dickey to hold on to that one. And keep it in, get it back up to the top. Hair spins on it. Oh, couldn't get all the way around it. And that one goes behind Munson. Good setup, though, once again. Looks like Munson was expecting that a little lower from Hare. Chapetta's got to get back in. Oh, good move there by Johnson. Just to let her flip that one by him, but go out so that they regain the possession. Because they were in trouble there with Johnson and Norton both in the box. and. Especially in the defensive end, the sideline is your best friend. It, it allows your team to reset, get everybody in the box. Oh, good setup there and hit off of Troy Chapetta, but if he had just gotten a little bit less, that would have gone through the gap, and we had Johnson running up the sideline. But good interception there by Troy Chapetta. Dickey now with it. Goes up the sideline, finds the gap. Norton's got to come out and play it. Great pass there by Norton. Chapetta chasing it now. Another kick in for sudden impact. Here, lining the shot up now. That one goes off of Andrew Geppetta. Good pass there. She's going to turn on that one. Finds Munson. Great pass there by Hare. Great pass back by Munson, too. Troy now doing a good job to hold on to the possession. See if he can flip it back to Andrew, who's waiting for it. Or win the sideline. Oh, and that one just goes off of Dickey. All right, we'll see if the Chariots can keep the pressure on. They're past half court. Johnson now taking a kick. Going all the way across, but that goes right into Munson. Norton thought about coming out to play it. But just lets that go harmlessly out. Andrew Geppetta sealing off here. That one's going right to Dickey. And, oh, I couldn't tell if that went in. Looks, hey, like it went, okay. looks like it went wide. Great shot there by Dickey. Look at this replay here. From our vantage point, I couldn't tell if it went in. Dickey all alone up top. Takes a nice shot and just wide of the post. Munson was there, too, and Norton was right there to potentially get the save. But goal kick for Mass. Good touch there. Could have been a two-on-one in the middle there, but it'll be mass ball nonetheless. Troy Treda now taking the kick for the Chariots. Good touch. 
Oh, good passing. Pass. That's the kind of triangle setup you want to see. Can't catch up to it, but that's all right. Move the ball down. Force the other team to get out of their own end. Great pass there between uh, Andrew and William. Here, running up the sideline now. Johnson playing stout defense. Trying to flip it back, but Geppetta's right there. They're going to call a foul on Dickey. Dickey doesn't agree with that one. Might have backed up into him. They were kind of right on top of each other. This prime position here for Chariots. That one goes over to Troy. Troy opens up. Lexi going to try to clear it. Andrew jumps right back on that one, gets it back in the box. Dickey and Moises oh. have to work together. Good defense there by Dickey. Jordan doing a good job to talk to his, his defensive mate there, Rojas. Andrew trying to bounce it off and get possession. Chapetta has to find a way to get this ball to the top here. They have to get a goal here soon. That one goes back in. Oh, and that could be a 2-1. Oh, and that could have been an advantage. Once again, Dickey didn't agree with that one. He was hoping to have the advantage, but either way, it's their ball. Good job there by Jordan Dickey talking to Moises, telling him to back off because he was outside the box, and that could have been a 2-1. Good give and go there. Andrew's right there, though. A little bit of a collision there. Oh, good move to keep that in. Andrew Trepetta taking it up the sideline. In control right now. Once again, similar positions here. Once again, Trepetta has to get around the ball. Can I get in front of it more? Can I get back to his teammate and brother, Troy? Because you're not going to get through a defense like... Lexi and Jordan there. Lexi just taking it up the sidelines. Got leverage now to do what she wants with it. Let's that go out smartly for a sudden impact kick. Great play there overall by Hare. Just letting Chapetta do the work for her. And as soon as she got the leverage, boom, she was out of there. Yes. And she was all the way down the sideline. Hare now lining up the kick. See if she tries to find Munson on the far side. And she does. Just a little bit high. I thought they'd go off of William Johnson, but it looks like they're going for a goal kick. Johnson doing a good job to seal out Munson so that Munson couldn't readjust to that ball. Dickey gets that one back. See if Hare can catch up to it, but she won't. But locks Mass down in that one corner. Good goal kick coming out, but Jordan was ready for that one. Just want to thank everybody tuning in so far this weekend. Lots of games happening, lots of games still to come as we're here in the Plasman Athletic Center in, in Turnstone. It's so good to be back, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. After not being able to play, you know, a national tournament for so long, and then to hear everybody, to hear how loud this place is now, oh man, it feels so good. We said we had a sub for Sun Impact. Luke Rabus came in from Moises Rojas. Let's see what kind of an impact Rabus can make here. Oh, I got a sting suspicion. <laughs> Free kick specialist here is Luke. Oh, goes behind Chapetta, but Norton does a good job to collect that. Those are really tricky to defend. You just don't know where they're going to bounce off the back guard. Yeah, great defense by the Chariots. You have to trust each other, especially in that type of situation that each other's going to do each other's job. Oh, so many players in. And that one goes all the way across to an open with Johnson who tips it back Andrew Chapetta now with it. Goes up to Troy Chapetta.
That one's going to get flipped back. Hare controlling it now. Finds Dickey. Touches it down. Labus, oh, with a great turning shot. Wow, what Splits a great the defense. shot by Yeah, what a good pass by Jordan to get it to him. But, man, he turned on that one and just kissed it between the defense. 4-0, sudden impact. Good passion play there overall by impact. It was a tough play by Luke, too, because, you know, when you turn it into the ball, you're not quite sure where it's going to go. And you don't have as much control on it, but, man, put it right where it needed to be. As we get a sub for a sudden impact, uh, Kelby Smith in. And Mass subbing in a few players. Luke Labus was very efficient down his time on the floor there. He was only on for about two minutes, but he got to go with it, so. Do your job and then get off the court. <laughs> it's the best way to do it, right? We had number 11, Dana Parrott, come in for Mass, as well as Mark Feely, number 15, back into the match. Now, if I'm the chariots here, you've got to start taking chances. You've got nothing really to lose now. You're down 4 0 with 10 to go. You just have to start, start trying stuff right now, which is a very hard task against Sun Impact. But I'd really like to see them get their third win more in Baltimore. It's been uh, a two man game kind of after the chariots, which. Uh, between Jordan and Mechie, they're going to collapse on that all day. Good defense there by Andrew Chepetta to not bite and move himself out of position. Here now going to bump it down to Dickey in the corner. Ooh, there was daylight there, but that gets shut down by the Chariots. That one looks like it went off of the front of Andrew Chepetta's guard. This will be a corner kick for sudden impact. Hater take it. Smith on that far side, waiting for it. Good touch there. Smith back across, great pass. Hater gets it back up. Johnson doing a good job to play defense. Great pass Goes all the way across. Chapetta does a nice speed turn there. Could be a two on one. Here, another speed turn. Good kick. But again, we've seen it. Andrew Chapetta all over the place. Parrot now with it. Close to two on one there. Oh, very close to two on one there. Well, I guess there's two, but no one. Andrew Chapetta now with it. Dickey with a shot all the way across, but just wide. Good movement by Sudden Impact. Mass doing everything they can to play defense and doing a great job. It's just tough when you get those cross court passes. Exactly. And that's, that's what I'm meaning by that's what the Terriers have to do here is try to get those passes going, and those passes have to be across. All three players, which is what Impact is doing very well right now. It's mainly between Dickey and Hare, but they're getting Munson and Smith involved as well, which is why it's so hard to play defense against. Dickey catches that one, trying to turn it around. Johnson flips it out. That could go down court by Feely. Feely gives chase. Hare cutting it off, flipping it back. Johnson's right there, taking it. Good flip there. Feely with it now, driving up the gap. Good ball movement. That one gets stripped. Oh, they're close. Oh, good move by Jordan to hold on to it. Andrew Chapetta steps up. That one gets flipped out. But Andrew Chapetta's right there. Dickey doing a good job to control it. Good chess match between Chapetta and Dickey here. Dickey trying to turn him. Flips it out to here. Here's right there. That one goes all the way. Feely 
Munson gets it. Parrott takes the shot. Now Harris can take that up the sideline. See if Parrott can cut her off. She does. And that's going to go mass ball. We're going to get subs here. Looks like Jordan's coming off. Looks like Moises Rojas is going to, has got the goalie penny on. 35 minutes in, sudden impact up 4 0. That one all the way across. Good shot by Feely. Moises has to make a save. Feely and Hare with it now. Andrew is right there, very close. Both teams very close as they peel out. That's going to be a two-on-one, and that's going to go in favor of the Chariots. Great striking distance here. You can really see the offense kind of picking up here for Mass. Yeah, definitely. They really have to capitalize here, too, though. And Hare pounces on that one. Great defense by Hare. Johnson now stepping in to kick. Might as well at this point. All the way across. Oh, just out of the reach of Andrew Chepetta. That was a good idea. There was space there. But you just gotta try, try something right now. Gonna really get that ball moving. Great give and go between Munson and Hare. Textbook, I'd say. Andrew Chepetta, though, trying to turn around. Here, very hard to move on that ball. She knows exactly where to put that ball in her chair to give her the most leverage, and it's been working for her all game. Munson turning on it now, carrying it down in the corner. Oh, just escapes her off the edge of her guard. Johnson now, trying to get all their players down the court. Finds the gap. Parrott giving a chase. We'll see if she can catch it. Oh, just out of reach. Good idea, though. But again, you try to turn that defense into offense here now. You got basically four up, creating a wall. We'll see what Munson wants to do here with this ball. Got to imagine a crisp give and go. Andrew turns on that one, takes it all the way into the corner. Going to try to get it up to Feely. Good battle here between Hare. And that one gets flipped out. Chapetta still on it, though, as Chariot's offense rotates. Got to get around it, though. Good move there by Lexi to just let that go off the side of Chapetta. Chapetta was right there. We are approaching the 30, 39th minute here. Sudden impact, just moving it down. Not in any rush, obviously. Lexi and sudden impact are totally okay with just moving the ball down. They're up 4 0. Why not? Splits the defense. And that goes out for a Chariots goal kick. See if they can get one back. I would send everybody down court. Which is what they're doing. Close to a tone on there. And it was. Great idea there. Getting it up to the middle with Feely. 
Uh, we just needed Parrott to be out just a little bit maybe towards the sideline to connect that pass. Parrott taking a quick kick. That goes off of Andrew Trapetti. He catches it. Oh, good job keeping that in. Great keep in there. Hair with it now, driving it in. And that's going to be it for this game, ladies and gentlemen. Sudden impact four, Mass Chariots zero. A lot of offense by impact. And like I said, Chariots played great defense, but I mean, it gets tough when they can connect, you know, long passes like that. And, uh, you know, Jordan gets space on top of the box. That's tough for anybody. And uh, you could see it. I mean, he only stops so much on defense. Yeah, absolutely. The ascendant pad can move the ball so well, like you said, that at the start of a game, that's their specialty. Those quick one-two passes. And the Cherry is quite a great game. They played great defense. Like I said at the beginning of the game, this is their first time in this conference. So this is a great game to build on, and I'm excited to see what they do in the future here. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we'll sign off for now. There's a lot more action coming up. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I'm Pete Winslow. With me is Nathan Mayer here at the Plasman Athletic Center in Turnstone. Uh, like I said, stay tuned. Plenty more games coming up.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the 2022 USPSA MK Battery Conference Cup Series for Power Soccer Shop. I'm Tony Jackson. And joining me from the Wisconsin Warriors, Bill Schultz. Bill, how are you, coach? I'm doing well, Tony. We uh, had a tough game just a few minutes ago against Minnesota Northern Lights, but loving, whoops, thanks. Had a great time, uh, having a great time back at Nationals for the first time in three years. It feels great to be back. It certainly does. Um, like you said, the first national since 2019. So, and it's great to see we have 36 teams out here. Um, it's been wonderful to see people that we haven't seen in a couple of years. Absolutely, that's the best part. Walking in this gym yesterday, I just get so excited seeing all these faces finally after so long, and it's great to see the players back in action. I think everybody's glad to be here. Too long of a break. It has been a little too long. So it looks like we're going to get an indirect free kick here. Chippewa Valley Hooligans with an early opportunity. Be interesting to see what Chippewa Valley does here. We see these guys a lot being from the same state, and they've changed a lot of strategy even the last half of the season here. So it'll be interesting to see what they do here. And that ball across saved by Jim Weiss. Another kick in for the Hooligans. Brett Betcher taking the kick. Betcher right into the breakers defense. Corner kick for Chippewa Valley. Betcher, Chipley missed that ball, and now Ben Anko with a shot on goal, saved by the Breakers. Another corner kick coming up for Chippewa Valley. Keep creating chances for themselves. Betcher, Grant Chipley oh, collides with Jim Weiss of the Boston Breakers, and a penalty has been called. It looks like, let's see, did he call a penalty? Yes, he's pointing Point. to the spot, so we are going to get a penalty kick for the Chippewa Valley Hooligans. Seen a lot of penalty kicks today, Tony. And that was certainly a foul in the box. Jim Weiss slammed into Grant Shipley. And so the goalkeeper, Matt Pellegrino, is going to try to stop this. Now, if you're unfamiliar and you've been watching Power Soccer for a long time, FIPFA, the international governing body of Power Soccer, Changed the rule coming into the season, and now goalkeepers can sit sideways along the goal line to m reduce the chances by a little bit, but he's not allowed to move until the ball is kicked. <laughs> Swapped Grant Shipley out for Brett Betcher here. See him take a lot of penalty kicks for them. And that is in the goal, Brett Betcher. Nice shot, and he did not hesitate. As soon as he wound up, he fired that one right through there. It's 1-0 Chippewa Valley Hooligans. What do we think about that rule change, Tony, where the goalie can now sit sideways on a penalty kick? Well, considering that I sat through 47 rounds of penalty kicks back in 2014, I like the change. <laughs> Gives the goalie a little bit more of a chance in that situation. A right? little bit more of an opportunity. Now, the goalkeeper still can't move until the ball is kicked. So, I mean, from a strategic standpoint, if you're a goalkeeper, you maybe leave a little more space to one side to try to influence the kicker to get him to go where you want him to yeah. Yeah. and then try to stop the ball. It's also a lot harder to get that strike force chair moving backwards than it is forward. So I wonder if we'll start to see goalies kind of cheat to the back so that 
like you say, it, it encourages the kick taker to move forward and gives the goalie a fighting chance. And now that's going to roll off of the Hooligans defense. We've got a corner kick coming up for the Boston Breakers. That ball rolling off of Ben Anko and out of play. Now for the breakers, Joe DePeace. He's got quite a nice kick. And that ball goes to Pellegrino off of Shipley, and Shipley's going to try to scoop that out of the goal area. Pellegrino trying to find the ball. Grant Shipley now driving, trying to turn Pellegrino. And that ball's off of Shipley. Boston Breakers ball. Joe DePeace. Ben Anko over to Juan Carlos Ramirez Tapia. Pellegrino. Tapia trying to make a play on the ball. Pellegrino now on Shipley. The pass out. Cut off by Anko. Nicely done by Ben Anko. Kicking coming up. Brett Betcher for the Hooligans is going to take it. Nice play there by Anko to let that ball go out of bounds rather than try to touch it in advance as it's going to come off and go out of bounds. There. So you see these guys a lot. Bill. We do. We're what? just down the road from them a couple hours. They're probably the closest team to us. And so what can you tell us based on your extensive experience with this team? <laughs> well, they've changed a lot. Their offense has certainly gotten a lot more potent. Uh, Brett Betcher, you know, that kid gets better every year. Um, Grant, Shipley as well. I mean, those guys in their offensive uh, prowess we see these guys scoring all kinds of goals moving the ball around and Ben Anko who's joined this team in the last couple of years uh, provides them kind of a really good passing option too on the wing so what it does it allows uh, Chippewa Valley to they just move the ball better they move the ball around a lot more uh, which causes problems for teams like us that have to play them a lot because we have to uh, resort to or uh, react to that so certainly uh, they become a very effective ball moving team yeah, being in Phoenix, we don't really see either one of you very often. Uh, so thank you for that insight. Um, it's interesting because I've been watching Grant and Brett play together for a long time, and it's been wonderful to see their development. And there's Grant Shipley with a shot saved by Matt Pellegrino and Tapia now for the Breakers, taking on Betcher. Shipley and Tapia going at it. Now, Jim Weiss earlier hit somebody at the top of the goal area, and he really needs to be careful because he's already committed a foul in the penalty area and given Chippewa Valley the lead because of it. Pellegrino, Shipley with a shot saved by Pellegrino, and he's not going to be able to control that. It's going to go out of play for a breaker's goal kick. You can really see the confidence in Chippewa Valley right now. Yeah. They're feeling good. They need to keep the pressure on here. If they can keep Boston in their own zone here, they're going to get another scoring opportunity. They're a lot more confident here. Tapia right into Shipley, and he sends that one out with authority. Even though it went out of bounds, Boston able to move that ball closer and closer. It's good for Boston. Betcher, that one off of Tapia. Change of possession there just again by not touching the ball. Those are like great decisions to see Chippewa Valley making. When they started playing, they were only 10 and 11 years old and now they're 17, 18, graduating high school, going to college. And so you, you can't replicate that kind of chemistry 
with each other. They've been playing together. They've growing. They've grown up together, and and so they know each other. Yeah, it's it, it becomes instinctive, right? And when we have we have three players on the Wisconsin Warriors that are very similar, that have kind of grown up playing together, and and you really almost can't. You can't teach that kind of chemistry, right? You start to understand the way a player plays and and react to them and, and almost, you know, supplement their play. So, yeah, you see that from Grant and Ben, and the older they get, the better they get playing together, for sure. Ben Ankle here has been another great addition, like I said. And he's got some nice power to him as well, which... I see that Shipley and Betcher, they have power, but I think Anko gives them that nice, really strong, longer distance striking ability. Yeah, he does, and he's always in position too, Ben. So, uh, you know, the, when Grant and Brett are trying to work the ball together, they know Ben's going to be there as that third option, and then he's very reliably there for him. So, yeah. There with some power, you'll see him take some nice shots too. Tapia taking on Betcher now. Betcher, nice touch there. Now Pellegrino taking on Betcher. Betcher gets the ball away. Betcher looking for an outlet here, and it goes out. Shipley's there to pick it up. Nice touch by Tapia. Joe DePeace is there, and he bumps it at the back of his chair. Anko takes a shot towards the goal area. That ball off of Pellegrino and out of play. Grant Shipley was just a little bit more aggressive to the ball there. He probably would have had it moving down the middle. Wide open. Anko caught that one off the corner of his guard, but Tapia gives him a couple more feet closer to the breaker's goal area. Anko right into Pia, right into the guard of Tapia. So now this is a really good spot for the hooligans. Let's see if they can convert here. Betcher is parked right at the far post. Shipley at the near post. Try to thread it through here for Betcher. Pellegrino's right there, however. Tapia trying to split the defenders, and he does. Both of them peel out, and now Tapia counterattacking. Now Shipley gets the ball back, though. Nice. Tapia turns around. He's going to catch that ball. DePeace waiting at the far post for Boston. Pellegrino, Pellegrino looking to go to DePeace, DePeace, Pellegrino. Close to a two on one, and Shipley just scoops that ball very calmly out of there, and DePeace touches the ball last. It's a good defensive sequence, really, for Chipley Valley. That could have gotten ugly. That was a tense moment for Chippewa Valley, but again, Grant Shipley handled it very nicely. Anko. Pellegrino, Anko still on the ball. Anko gets turned around though. Pellegrino, that one looked like it went off of Anko and it did. So kick in coming up for the breakers. Breakers can get that ball into Chippewa Valley zone and spend some more time down there. We'll see some opportunities for them. And Anko not giving enough space on the ball there. Yeah, you have to give five meters. Defenders like to creep up into that space. Nice little move there by Shipley to open up, but he pushed it a little too hard. And it's going to go out for a breaker's kick in. 15th minute of the match. Chippewa Valley Hooligans in the lead. Betcher. Jim Weiss, that ball just... Bounced off the post after bouncing off of Weiss's chair. He left a little space between him and the goal post. Betcher saw it, and he went right there. Unfortunately for Chippewa Valley, it wasn't quite enough space for the ball to get through, but they have a corner kick. Betcher, that ball s just gets to Shipley. Now Shipley with space. Pellegrino makes the save. That ball out of play. Ball still in play, actually. Still on play. 
was a lucky moment there for Boston. If Grant had gotten a little more of that ball, far side post, that would have been in. Referee says it's out. Hooligan's ball. Anko going to take the kick. Anko all the way across. No one there. Miscommunication on that one, I think, Tony. Teammates weren't where we thought they would be. Boston needs to make a few passes here and get the ball down in the offensive zone. Not a lot of pressure on keeper Julie Enders down there yet in this first half. And that ball is out. Another kick in for the breakers. Boston really hasn't been able to get any rhythm going on offense. Their defense spending a lot of time working here in their goal area. Yep, and for it, they've managed to keep the ball out of the goal. But, yeah, just kind of real steady, constant defensive pressure from Chippewa Valley Hooligans here, keeping Boston from advancing this ball up the floor. Now that's close to a two-on-one violation. The referee's going to call it. Chippewa Valley with an indirect free kick coming up. Betcher back to Anko. Anko, Shipley. Oh, Shipley just missed times his strike. And that ball is going to roll out for a kick in in favor of the Hooligans. Boston now on the attacking side of the floor. Boston can make a defensive play here and get a real good scoring opportunity. They need one. Betcher. That ball gets all the way through off of Tapia. That's pretty much all you could ask for in that situation if you're Chippewa Valley. Yep. Anko Make. looking to take a quick kick, and he does off of DePeace, but DePeace sends it towards the Chippewa Valley goal area. DePeace now driving, fighting with Anko. Anko turning DePeace around. Still in play. Anko holds on to it, and he does very well to keep it in play. Anko just trying to work the ball, trying to create a little space. Creates a corner kick. That's the best he could ask for there, too, I think. Create himself a corner kick. Those, those two defensive players for Boston Breakers weren't, weren't moving, and they had the angle. Ben wasn't going to be able to get it up to the top. Ben Anko, Shipley, cut off by Tapia, kick in, Chippewa Valley. Chippewa Valley's happy just creating these scoring chances for themselves. They like this style of play up 1-0. Now, that ball was rolling before Anko kicked it, and he didn't stop to readjust, and he kicked it out of play. It's going to be a goal kick for Boston. And in those moments, you really just have to pause and take a breath I think the player's instinct is to get moving. Sometimes they're surprised the defense, but because that ball's rolling, to your point, Tony, it, I think it took a direction that Ben didn't expect it to come off his guard. Tapia, oh, that ball rolls down the touch line all the way out for another Boston goal kick. They just can't seem to keep it on the attacking end of the floor. I mean, if you're Chippewa Valley, you're happy with this, I think. You, they, you go ahead and let them play defensively in their own zone. Let them try to make, you know, they've just been real. This has been a real grind for Boston to try and get the ball down the floor. It really has been. I think grind is the best way to put it. They're just, just inching up the floor, inching up the floor, and every time they make progress, Chippewa Valley is just pushing them back. The piece takes a wild swing and misses the ball. It's going to have to regroup here. The piece now sends that ball right into Shipley, who stops it very well. It's out of play. Another kick in for Chippewa Valley. Be interesting to see if Chippewa Valley is happy with this style of play in the second half. But you know, this this is sort of playing to their advantage right now, not giving Boston any opportunities. And Chippewa Valley's had a lot of set plays. One of them is going to go in. Tapia trying to get around Betcher. 
Betcher trying to get leverage. Nicely done by Tapia. Shipley can't get around Tapia. Now this is a little bit of momentum, and just as they start gaining something, the halftime whistle is blown. Chippewa Valley pretty much in control this first half, Will. Yeah, it's been, it's been all Chippewa Valley. It's been a slow half, but with them getting that 1-0 lead with the penalty kick at the very beginning of the half, they're fine with that. So we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, the second half, you're watching Boston Breakers versus Chippewa Valley Hooligans from the 2022 USPSA MK Battery Conference Cup Series. Uh, Nimi is a manufacturing company for 25 years. Uh, we started out of our garage uh, manufacturing products and for the industrial market as well as disabled products and outdoor products too as well. Uh, we were able to help out uh, the disabled sports uh, world by building a power wheelchair. We have developed uh, many products for the industrial market like uh, vacuum fixturing that holds down, sucks down parts using vacuum power versus using double face tape that customers would do uh, and use clamps and vices and traditional stuff like that. Um, we can do full five-sided machining uh, by using vacuum chucks and different products of ours. Uh, the Strike Force has redefined the uh, power soccer game, uh, giving the individual the ability to express inside of him how to play the game um, without holding back. We have built a chair the strike force to be low profile, fast, quick, um, and take over the game. The manufacturing of the strike force has led us into the manufacturing of the track force chair, which is an outdoor rugged chair built for the beach, uh, hunting uh, any outdoor enthusiast that wants to get out of his everyday chair and be able to go around in his yard even.
Chippewa Valley Hooligans 1, Boston Breakers 0. We are about to start the second half. We're coming to you live from the Plasman Athletic Center here at Turnstone in Fort Wayne, Indiana. For Power Soccer Shop, I'm Tony Jackson. Joining me, Bill Schultz, the head coach of the Wisconsin Warriors. And Bill, Chippewa Valley just pretty much dominated that first half. Even though the score is still tight, Boston still has an opportunity. The way Chippewa Valley was playing in the first half, Boston just wasn't getting any opportunities. Yeah, Chippewa Valley just controlling the, the pace of play. Real slow, real grind for Boston to get the ball up the floor. They just really didn't weren't able to move the ball down into the into the scoring zone or anywhere near the box. So Boston needs to concentrate on this half on moving the ball and getting some scoring opportunities for themselves. Chippewa Valley probably needs to do more of what they were doing. Keep the ball out of their own end. Boston trying to get something going here. And that ball off of Pellegrino, not what they wanted. Not the start they were looking for. Yeah, I thought it was maybe promising their first chance in, in Chippewa Valley defensive zone, but not this time. Ben Anko going to take the kick. Anko, Pellegrino cuts it off, but a better position for Chippewa Valley, certainly. Change for the Boston Breakers in goal now. Number 13, Steve Hirsch. And Anko, little miscommunication between him and Betcher. That's close to a two-on-one violation. Yeah. And the referee's going to call it Pellegrino and DePeace just way too close together there. Betcher winds up and sends one through, and Anko just did not read that properly. That pass was intended for him. Pellegrino, Shipley, backing up and stopping that ball from going any further. Oh, Shipley over to Tapia, and Shipley just cuts that one off. Boston advancing here, Tony. You didn't see as much of this in the first half. Getting up the floor, that's what they need to do. And really for them, it's just about maintaining possession in the attacking area. Shipley, DePeace. DePeace now trying to turn Shipley, but Shipley just outweighing him and moving him up the floor. And now Chippewa Valley on the counterattack. Shipley uh, right into Pellegrino. We were talking about the kind of maturity of, of Grant Shipley in the first half, Tony, and you saw it right there, right? He's learned how to use his body and his chair to, like, reverse those types. He turned uh, the attacking player around right there just uh, by using his chair. And it looks like that was a two-on-one call on Boston. So Chippewa Valley with an opportunity to score here. 24th minute. The Hooligans already with a 1-0 lead. Referee doing a little repositioning here. They don't like how Ben Anko set up. So Anko sitting right there in front of Pellegrino. Let's see what they do here. They're going right to Shipley, and that ball goes through. That's not going to count. That was an indirect free kick. So this will be a goal kick for the Breakers, and that was a good idea. The ball just needed to touch Shipley before it went over the line to count as a goal. So Pellegrino looks like he's going to take this kick here. It looks like Pellegrino wants it on the right side of his goal area. Going right to Tapia. Shipley's there. Tapia touches it and it goes right to Betcher. Anko, Pellegrino with a 180 spin kick that sends it all the way down the floor, relieving a little pressure from the defense. And now Boston with an opportunity to try to keep Chippewa Valley in their attacking end. Yeah, it might not have been a bad idea in that situation, Tony. Just kind of 
ice the puck, right? To use a hockey phrase, just get out of your own zone. And now Boston has an opportunity to hopefully create an opportunity by playing some tight D here. Now, Anko, the ball moved, and I don't know if he noticed or not, but that's likely the reason he missed on that kick. And so now he's just electing to just send it in, Betcher with it, Tapia trying to turn Betcher. Tapia passes it across, Pellegrino there. Pellegrino with a shot, saved by Endres. <laughs> Nicely done. Now, Boston Breakers with a corner kick, a rare opportunity for them to try to get one back and find the equalizer. It's all about capitalizing on your opportunities, Tony. They can find a gap here and get this ball through. It's a 1-1 game. Tapia across. Pellegrino with a shot. Saved. A shot again. Saved by Shipley. Tapia. Now, he could have uh -huh. just let that ball go out of play. And I think he just got a little excited. He wanted. It looked like he wanted to turn and spin kick the ball. But it goes out for a goal kick. Yeah. Again. Just creating opportunities for yourself so you can get out of the way of the ball and create another opportunity for yourself there. It's not always about winding it up and putting it back on. I understand the thinking, though. Boston has had so few opportunities in this match that you sometimes feel like you just got to take whatever you can get. Oh, absolutely. You're just trying to create there because it's in front of you, and, you know, that looks like the opportunity, but... Unfortunately, in that situation, didn't work out for Boston Breaker. So Grant Shipley's going to take this kick. Now, if you notice, Grant Shipley is wearing a different colored jersey because he's the designated goalkeeper, but he is actually playing up on the attack. Julie Endress is sitting in goal playing the defender role, which gives Shipley a lot of flexibility to move around the pitch out here. Pellegrino now, the kick across, not a lot of pace on it. The ball goes back to Pellegrino. Pellegrino with a shot, saved by Endress, off of Shipley. And now Boston with another quick opportunity here. Austin doing what they need to do here, creating opportunities in the offensive zone. Keep Eau Claire, excuse me, Chippewa Valley back on their heels. Pellegrino waiting at the top of the area to piece. The shot off of Anko. Good luck. Good luck. Almost could have thread it through there, but not quite. To piece again with the shot across. Pellegrino with a shot. Matt Pellegrino with a goal for Boston. And after fighting off Chippewa Valley for so long, they finally got the opportunity they needed. They scored a goal. It's tied at one. We have a new game here, Bill. That's exactly what we've been talking about. Eau Claire is just completely, excuse me, Chippewa Valley, uh, just dominating the run of play here, right? Completely in control of the pace, but all it takes is one opportunity, right? Uh, Chippewa Valley had some scoring opportunities that didn't go in in the first, and now Boston takes advantage of one. It's a new ball game, one one Betcher decides to send one down the floor and out of play. And that was a really good kick. He's got them trapped pretty much near the corner mark down there. The piece and the breakers are going to have to kick their way out of here. Piece opting to take a, a short little kick. Anko bounces it off to Peace, but that one backfired on him. And to Peace now making a move down the floor. Good idea by Anko, but it just did not go where he thought it was going to. Boston able to take a little bit of pressure off. Now they got to keep the pressure on. Keep up clear. Excuse me, Chippewa Valley for being able to move the ball down the floor. Anko. Looks like he's trying to just send it through everybody, but Pellegrino is right there. Shipley, Pellegrino diving in to try to make a play here. That ball 
over to Anko. DePeace with a pass. It's going across Tapia. Tapia with a pass. Pellegrino with a pass. Tapia with a shot. Tapia with a goal. Oh my goodness. Boston Breakers looked dead in the water in the first half and have come alive and now lead 2 1. Some great passing by the Breakers and just so much space in that Chippewa Valley defense. We were talking before the game, Tony, or during halftime about this game being all about ball movement, right? If you can move the ball, especially in your own offensive zone, it's gonna create opportunities. And Chippewa Valley just wasn't able to keep up with the with the quality passes that Boston were making there in 2-1 ball game. Anko touching the ball but going out of play. And now Chippewa Valley is the team that looks a little flustered here. You can feel the momentum shift in the gym. You can just feel it. Pellegrino looking for Tapia, who was more central than Tapia, I think, or that Pellegrino was hoping for. Be interesting to see hooligans need to react here. They need to pick their heads up and make some good passes, get the ball down the floor. Very quietly at some point, during the action, Jim Weiss was substituted back in for the Boston Breakers, so he is in goal at the moment. Pellegrino to peace. Down the floor it goes. Andres forced to make a save on it. Pellegrino comes crashing into the area. Pellegrino tried to pass it off to DePeace, but it was blocked off by Shipley. Betcher has to move out of the way to avoid a two-on-one. That ball is out for another Boston Breakers kick in. And you said it a moment ago, the momentum has really shifted here in this match, and Boston is a team that is now completely in control here. Tapia going down to DePeace, but it's cut off by Anko. Now nobody for Boston was over there to collect that pass. Anko, now Anko, that's a mistake that he could have avoided by letting the ball just simply roll out. But now Boston still attacking here. Boston advancing the ball, that's what they need to do. To Peace, Pellegrino, Tapia. That ball goes right to Betcher. Betcher now trying to get around Pellegrino. Pellegrino didn't get quite as much of that ball as I think he wanted to. Still in play. Pellegrino trying to reposition himself. See if he can get the ball away from Betcher. He does, but Betcher's still right there, nicely done. But now Pellegrino makes a move and gets the ball past Betcher. Now Tapia and DePeace, too close together, close to a two-on-one, but a defender from Chippewa Valley not close enough to make the call happen. Tapia trying to get the ball down the floor, but Shipley doing very well to turn the ball around. And he got caught thinking and just let the ball roll off his chair and out of play. Chippewa Valley needs to put the pressure on here. Not let Boston advance the ball up the floor and control the pace. Looked like there was a problem momentarily with Anko, but things have been resolved. Anko now with the ball, trying to drive through. That's close to a two-on-one violation. Play continues. Anko still with the ball, but he's gone all the way around to Pia and now sends the ball towards the Breakers goal area to, to Peace now, the last to touch it. You don't see that every day, a full 360 while maintaining position. I shouldn't say 360. He, he did went. make a complete circle all, all the way, way around. around I think he just kind of lo lost track of where he was for a moment because he had beaten to Pia with the ball and just kept going around. Yeah. to Peace, Fetcher. That ball goes to Pellegrino. Pellegrino over to Tapia, who's got space. De Peace now, De Peace with a pass. Tapia now. The pass across De Peace. De Peace has got space. Great passing by Boston to create this opportunity. Shipley driving the ball out of the area. Now that would have been devastating for the Hooligans if Boston were able to score. That's out of play. Chippewa Valley now with a kick in. That's what you said breakers need to do, right? 
And that's exactly where they've created those opportunities is on those great passing sequences in the offensive box. A little less than five minutes plus at a time left here in the match. And Chippewa Valley is the team this half that have really struggled to get opportunities to score. Strange to see. We talked about the momentum, but it's you can feel it in this room, right? It just has changed completely. Pellegrino, DePeace, De, DePeace passing back to Pellegrino, but really nothing on that one. Betcher takes the ball and heads the other way with it. Well done. Nice ball handling there by Betcher. Shipley into Tapia. You hear the screams for a two on one. And they're not going to get it. Tapia now trying to turn Shipley. Tapia's got a little bit of leverage on Shipley. Tapia looking to pass out. Pellegrino off of Shipley and out of play. More opportunities for Boston. Hooligans need to get this ball out of their defensive end. DePeace waiting at the far post. Tapia going to try to sneak the ball through the defense, and Shipley got there just in time. Betcher, down the floor it goes. That one's going to be just wide. Looked like it was rolling in on goal, but Jim Weiss has a much better vantage point than we do down here. Looked from here like Jim Weiss was going to have to touch that ball and didn't let it go out of bounds wisely. Shipley over to Anko, close to a two-on-one violation. Both teams lobbing the ball back and forth right now. And that one off of Shipley and out of play. Everybody on the Boston bench signaling for possession. Tapia, Pellegrino, that ball goes to DePeace. DePeace with a pass across, nobody there to follow up on it. Hooligans need to play with a little urgency here. Give themselves an opportunity. Nice give and go between Betcher and Anko. Pellegrino's right there for Boston, though. Pellegrino very aggressively driving into the area. The pass across to Pia. Back to Pellegrino. Shipley's got it. That ball goes over to Tapia. Tapia with a shot. Grant Shipley has to make a save. Corner kick opportunity for Boston. A goal here this late in the game would really potentially seal the deal for them. Chippewa Valley needs to play stout here. Tapia going to take the kick. Pellegrino at the top of the area. DePeace at the far post. Tapia. DePeace with a shot off of Shipley. Now, Pellegrino's got an opportunity. Can he get it through? He can't push through there, though. He's going to have to figure out another way. And it looks like play was stopped, but from my vantage point, I couldn't quite see. It looked like a two-on-one violation between Pellegrino and DePeace. So because Pellegrino was backing up as he was making that kick and DePeace was coming into the play, and that ball did not take a good bounce for the hooligans. Tapia taking on Shipley. Tapia trying to pass the ball off, but it sticks to Shipley's chair. Tapia driving towards the post, looking to kick it out, but again, Shipley just holds on to it. The kick out to DePeace, nowhere. Betcher now heading around close to another two on one. Advantage called, and Pellegrino sends it out. 39th minute, and what seemed like a sure victory in the first half for the Chippewa Valley Hooligans has really turned into something else. Boston Breakers have come out and really just controlled the match in the second half. And it doesn't really look like they did anything much differently in terms of tactics. They just, they were just able to get their passing to work. Yep, that's it. The, the, the more passes you make, the more passes you will make because you create space, right? And that's what we're seeing this game turn into is, is you've got to be able to pass the ball 
accurately uh, and consistently in order to open up the floor. That whole first half was just Eau Claire controlling the pace, but Hooligans being in the passing lanes and not giving Boston an opportunity to advance the ball up the floor, they found a way and they capitalized on a couple opportunities. We are in added time now and DePeace now on the attack for Boston. DePeace, very nicely done by DePeace to just kind of force Shipley to make a move. And it wasn't the move he wanted. DePeace looking to take the kick to Pia is over there, but Shipley right there to intercept if it comes all the way across. Pellegrino with a shot that goes off of Anko. Betcher a little late on the swing. Remarkable turn of events in this game, just seeing how Boston turned it around. The shift in momentum has been extreme, really. This, pretty much the entire second half, the breakers have been in total control here, outside of maybe one or two moments where Chippewa Valley had a half a chance. That ball somehow stayed in play that ball is now actually Ooh. still in play. Betcher still has the ball. Now's the time for Hooligans. Betcher's got to find this here. Betcher now making a move towards the area. He loses the ball, but he regains control. Pellegrino trying to turn him around and get him out of the box. And that ball out of play. Kick in coming up. This is really going to be the last chance for Chippewa Valley. They have to score here, you have to imagine, Bill. Yeah, this is a huge moment. Betcher, Shipley with a shot off of Pellegrino. Corner kick. And that's the final whistle. Boston Breakers in a fantastic display of resilience after getting overpowered by Chippewa Valley in the first half. Found a way in the second half to take it back and just completely exert their will over Chippewa Valley and win the game 2-1. Great game, entertaining game. I'm sure that one hurts for Chippewa Valley. They were totally in control and weren't able to get it back when Boston weren't able to create some opportunities. So, great game. It was indeed. We're going to take a break when we come back. More action from Court 1 here at the Plasman Athletic Center here in Turnstone. You are watching the 2022 USPSA MK Battery Conference Cup Championship Series. We'll be back in a little bit with more.
can't stand sitting up anymore. Stand it up. Come on.
Pass it up to Dowling. And there's the pass to Dowling. Dowling going to take a shot. Audrey Keeter across to Keezer. Keezer shot in. And Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back at the Plasman Athletic Center here at Turnstone in Fort Wayne, Indiana. For Power Soccer Shop, I'm Tony Jackson. Coming up next, another Founders Conference match. The Courage Kenny Blizzards against the Dasa Firecrackers. This should be quite an exciting match here. The Blizzards have been playing extremely well. You saw them here earlier today where they won their match, and now they take on the Dasa Firecrackers. And it looks like the Blizzards are going to start off with the ball. Joe Boerboom with it. Greg Abbott for the Firecrackers on Boerboom. Boerboom moving down the floor. Boerboom in on goal. Mark Pratt. There to stop him. Bardell. Bardell with a shot. Save. D. Bardell, who was just lighting it up out there in their last match here on court one. Mark Pratt. The ball's still in play. Mark Pratt getting around Bardell, and he keeps it in. Pratt now moving down the floor. Netball is going to go off the front of his chair for a goal kick. Nice play by Brighton McMahon. Boerboom over to Liam Kopp. Back to Boerboom. Very dangerous to pass it back towards the goal area, but they managed to get away unscathed. Actually, they're getting a little bit of contact there. Kicking coming up for the Blizzards. Boer boom. Cop off of Bardell. Nice play there. Cop. And that one touching off of McMahon. So the Firecrackers are going to take the kick here. Abbott looking for Cop. Boerboom's right there. Now driving Cop down the floor is Joe Boerboom. Now, Jenna Phillip, very close to causing a two-on-one there. That ball still in play, but now the referee is going to signal a goal kick. Phillip. Boerboom's right there for the Blizzards. Mark Pratt with the save. Boerboom. Chasing. D. Bardell calling for the ball. And that ball is out for another goal kick for the Firecrackers. Real quick, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that today is Mark Pratt's birthday. Happy birthday, Mark Pratt. I hope you come away with at least one win today. Phillip 
McMahon off of Cop and out of play. Bower boom. All the way across, it's cut off by Phillip. And another kick in coming up for the Blizzards. Bower boom down the floor. Bardell's right there. Bardell trying to get that ball through, and she does, but Phillip is there to stop her. Bardell keeps it in play. Pratt just trying to get the ball out of danger. Bardell trying to work around Mark Pratt. Bardell trying to kick it off of Pratt. Pratt sends it out. Another kick in coming up for the Blizzards. Boerboom, a quick kick. Jenna Phillip just cut it off in time. Boerboom all the way across. Bardell with a shot, and that ball off of Jenna Phillip out of play for another corner kick. That was very close. Boerboom. D. Bardell with a shot saved by Pratt, and that an awesome save by Mark Pratt there. D. Bardell with a powerful shot. Jenna Phillip now advancing the ball. Wyatt Sexton, the goalkeeper for the Blizzards. Off to McMahon now. McMahon heading down the floor. Abbott into Phillip. Now the ball back to Abbott. Abbott tries to kick it up to Jenna Phillip, but Bardell right there to cut him off. Abbott now driving into the goal area. Bardell still fighting against Abbott. Bardell trying to get the ball on her chair to save it before it goes out, and she does. Nicely done. Abbott looking to pass across potentially here. No, he's going to just look to drive the ball in. And there's some contact, heavy contact. And that is going to be a free kick for the Blizzards. Joe Boerboom going across, cut off by Abbott. Liam Kopp over to Abbott. Abbott runs right into Wyatt Sexton, the keeper. Play continues, close to a two-on-one violation. The referee calls it. It's going to be a free kick for the Courage Kenny Blizzards. And now a little bit of momentum shifting over to the Firecrackers. They start out kind of slow, but they're starting to find their way here in this first half. Ninth minute. We're scoreless at the moment. And now joining me in the broadcast booth from the Northeast Passage Wildcats, Lucas Courier. Lucas, welcome to the broadcast booth, sir. Thank you, Tom. You have played one game so far, is that correct? Yes, we played the San Jose Flash. We tied 1-1. Yeah, that's a pretty tough team to play there, Michael Rayton. Uh, Gets a, a lot of attention, and rightfully so. He's very good with the ball. Um, but it, it's encouraging for your team that you held them to only one goal. 
Yep, we were happy with the result. He's very quick with his chair. And so you have another game today, correct? No, I, no, we don't. Oh, you only had one game yeah, today. Yeah, that was, I'm not sure why, but. So the referee is going to move the ball out just a little bit. And Joe Boerboom is going to give himself a little bit more space to kick this ball. Some discussion going on down there. I'm not quite sure what it was about. Boerboom over to Bardell. And that's close to a two-on-one violation. Referee's going to call it. Here's an opportunity for the Blizzards to break the scoreless tie. Boruboom. Looks like he's going to go over to McMahon, and he does, but that's off the back of his chair. Boruboom with a shot that's punched out of the area by Pratt. Abbott now. Can't control this chair, and he sends it out. Now, Lucas, it's a pretty dangerous situation if you are on the firecrackers. Yeah, definitely. Trying to set up the triangle. Boer boom down to Bardell. Bardell with a shot. It bounces off of Phillip. Bardell spins around, and Pratt is there to meet her. Pratt trying to push his way through. Gets past. Boerboom now heading down the floor, and he just rushed himself a little bit. Referee says the ball was out of play. Phillip glances it off of Boerboom, and it's out. Gas of Firecrackers now on the attacking half of the floor. So Lucas, can you tell me, it's been your first national tournament since 2019. How has it been so far? Yeah, it's been a really long time. I'm glad we can enjoy it again. I'm already having a lot of fun. That's good. And so the last time, if I remember correctly, the Northeast Passage Wildcats finished fifth in this competition, and uh, your, your team has been together for a number of years now, so how do you like your chances this year? I'm feeling pretty good. We have a few new players that are starting to learn the ropes a little more. Substitution coming up. Brighton McMahon coming off the floor and coming on in, in his place, number seven, TJ Rana. Bardell can't control that ball off of her chair and the Firecrackers will get the ball back. Now, if you've been with us all day, the last game that the Blizzards played started a little bit slow as well in terms of offense, but they, they really started picking it up, especially in that second half. So let's see if this game plays out the same way or if they're able to get some offense started sooner here. Boom. That ball coming out to Rana. Rana makes a spin move to try to shoot it on goal. He couldn't quite get around fast enough. And so now Jenna Philp going to try to drive the ball out of the area. Rana, the kick out. No one's there to collect it. Greg Abbott cuts off Bardell as he tries to make a move to circle around and get the ball. 
But the Blizzards now with another kick in. Bower boom off the back of Phillip, and that is going to go out for a Courage Kenny corner kick. So, Lucas, here the Firecrackers are setting up on defense. Can you tell us what you see out here? Um, far post was open. The feet could have kicked it a little harder. And a goal kick for Dasset, and they survived that one. 15th minute, we're still scoreless. Both teams are trying to find their way here. Bardell stops that ball and keeps it in the area. And the Firecrackers are going to have to take another goal kick here. <laughs> Philip. Bardell cuts it off, but Abbott's able to take it. Rana trying to get around Abbott, and he does. Nicely done. Good move. TJ Rana now breaking down the floor. Phillip coming back into the goal area to help out Pratt. Rana, the pass. Bardell looking to take a shot, but she can't quite get there quick enough. Phillip nicely done to recover and get in position to block Bardell. Bower boom now trying to set up a pass here. Bower boom heading down the floor and the kick out comes to Rana. Rana tries to get it past Phillip but he can't. Lots of crowding going on here. Uh, that's a two on one. And that is indeed a two on one violation. Liam Kopp surrounded by Blizzard's defenders. And so now an indirect free kick coming for the Firecrackers. It's a little far out. We'll see what they can do. Yeah, it's a little far out, but if they can at least connect on the initial pass here to give themselves an opportunity to extend this scoring threat, they might be able to get one through. Let's see what happens here. Joe Boerboom is waiting for the ball to come across to Abbott. Now that is also a two-on-one. The Blizzards are going to kick it out. Abbott off of Bower Boom, and now Dassa is going to get another opportunity here. Nice play by Abbott. Abbott trying to find some space here. That goes across to Phillip. Phillip, Abbott. Abbott just misses the ball and it goes out for a goal kick. And the threat is over from the Dassa Firecrackers. Rana, Phillip, now TJ Rana again. Jenna Phillip with the ball, trying to get around Rana. And that is out of play. Jenna Phillip did not agree with that call. But Bower Boom now for the Blizzards is going to take this kick. First half coming to a close. We're about to hit the 20th minute. Greg Abbott with the ball. Bower Boom tries to send it out. Phillip and Bower Boom. Now Bower Boom gets past Phillip. Bower Boom heading down the floor. Mark Pratt called into action here. Well, 
Bo Orboom trying to get around Pratt. He's just about there. That ball bounces around. Can Bo Orboom get it over the line? He's trying to work his way through. He's got to be careful, though, not to foul Phillip. And this right here is where you really want to pass the ball out. There's a lot of space on that goal line. but Yeah, it doesn't seem like they'll get through those two chairs. Bower boom, just working the ball patiently, trying to get it out. But well done by the Firecrackers defense. Yeah, they were very patient there. Really patient. Now Pratt out of position. Joe oh, Bowerboom driving. Let's see that ball still on the nine. No signal from the referee yet. And somehow the oh, Firecrackers wow. have been able to keep it out. That ball still on the line. Trying to push it. Pratt. Phillip combining on defense here. And they've managed to stop the Blizzards from scoring. That's some great defense right there. Boerboom, the kick across Bardell, oh. oh, wide open, oh. but it's blocked by Phillip once again. Incredible defense. Mark Pratt now with another save, Phillip with another save, and now a fight at the goal line continues. Boerboom working desperately to score, and somehow, some way, the Firecrackers have been able to thwart this attack. That was great defense. Rana now. The kick out. Boer boom with a shot. And that ball is going to roll oh. wide. Incredible defense by the Dassa Firecrackers, Lucas. It sure was. Now, the Blizzards had about four scoring opportunities right there. And Dassa somehow managed to keep all of them from going over the goal line. Bower boom, Phillip, that ball ricocheting, last touching off of Bower boom. Kick in for the Firecrackers coming up. We are in added time here. We're still scoreless, although it's not for lack of effort, especially on the part of the Blizzards. And there's the halftime whistle. And Lucas, if you are on the Dassa Firecrackers, you're feeling pretty good right now. Yes, sure are. Hanging on with your defense. They are definitely hanging on. Let's see if they can score a goal in the second half. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll bring you that second half. You're watching the Courage Kenny Blizzards versus the Dassa Firecrackers from the 2022 USPSA MK Battery Conference Cup Series. Uh, Nimi is a manufacturing company for 25 years. Uh, we started out of our garage uh, manufacturing products and for the industrial market as well as disabled products and outdoor products too as well. Uh, we were able to help out uh, the disabled sports uh, world by building a power wheelchair. We have developed uh, many products for the industrial market like uh, vacuum fixturing that holds down, sucks down parts using vacuum power versus using double face tape that customers would do uh, and use clamps and vices and traditional stuff like that. Um, we can do full five-sided machining uh, by using vacuum chucks and different products of ours. Uh, the Strike Force has redefined uh, power soccer game, uh, giving the individual the ability to express inside of him how to play the game um, without holding back. We have built a chair, the Strike Force, to be low profile, fast, quick, um, and take over the game. The manufacturing of the Strike Force has led us into the manufacturing of the Track Force chair, which is an outdoor rugged chair built for the beach, uh, hunting uh, any outdoor enthusiast that wants to get out of his everyday chair and uh, be able to go around in his yard even.
but he didn't blow the whistle yet. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the second half of Blizzards versus Dassa for Power Soccer Shop. I'm Tony Jackson. And joining me for the final 20 minutes of this match, once again, from the Northeast Passage Wildcats, Lucas Courier. And Lucas, we had a, a lot of back and forth that first half, and, and you saw it, we all saw it, a defensive display, display of the day by Dassa. It's still scoreless here. Absolutely. Let's see if they can get some scoring going. Abbott. D. Bardell with the ball. Bardell just could not control it. It's out of play. Into the match for the Dasa Firecrackers, number three, Sam Eslinger. Liam Kopp, the substitute for the Firecrackers. Rana taking on Phillip. Jenna Phillip got an opening there, and now she's heading up the floor. It's close to a two on one violation. Eslinger, Phillip, too close together. It's going to be an indirect free kick for the Blizzards. Bower boom, all the way to oh, Bardell, and she's just not fast enough, and it was a really good kick. Bardell was just not ready for it, Lucas. Philip. Philip right into Rana. Rana down to Bardell. Bardell oh. looking to get an opportunity there, and she just could not get the chair to turn enough to connect with the ball. So another goal kick coming up for the Dasa Firecrackers. Rana, that ball sent out by Abbott. Bower boom, Bardell's there, and that oh. ball bouncing. Can Rana get there? He can't, he just was not in the right position, that ball Got loose, Rana had a little window, a small opportunity, and just could not get his chair in place. And Lucas, those opportunities, when they come up, you have to take advantage of them. Oh, definitely, especially in this tight game. Bardell. Taking on Phillip. Bardell gets through. Bardell trying to get around Pratt. Bardell, D. Bardell. And the referee calls a foul on Bardell for pushing against the back wheel. Yeah, you gotta be careful with that one. And that will kill your offense in a heartbeat. No doubt about that. Rana, that's close to a two on one violation, and the referee's going to call it. And the Blizzard's pretty much picking up where they left off. And a substitution for the Firecracker, Sam Eslinger, coming off. Coming back on number 11, Liam Kopp.
Top, Bardell, Bardell with the shot, Bardell. Oh, oh, oh. and that ball bounces over the line. A goal, it looked like TJ Rana hit it. Let's see what happened there. Bardell hit the ball, and that ball bounced around. Mark Pratt tried to clear it. TJ Rana was right there, oh, no. and it bounced over the guard and into the goal. It is 1-0. Courage, Kenny Blizzards. And Lucas, when that happens, there's really not much you can do. Yeah. Just have to keep on going and try to score one. Now, the guards on the strike force are 11 inches roughly at the top. The ball has to go over 20 inches for it to be reset for play to resume. And that ball just barely made it over yeah. the foot guard. And it's a goal. Courage Kenny Blizzard's up 1-0. And Greg Abbott now. Now, that's not something you see every day. The guard for the strike force came loose, and honestly, that's kind of a dangerous situation. I don't see how Greg Abbott can continue right now with the guard up like that. I mean, I have to believe that he's probably missing some bolts that hold the guard to the frame. Oh, boy. But from a player safety standpoint, I don't see how Greg Abbott can continue right now until he gets that guard secured. Yeah. But as it stands right now, play is going to continue, and Greg Abbott is still in the match. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah. I mean, that guard could come loose again and really present a dangerous situation for really everybody involved. That ball off of Bower Boom out of play. Now, the Firecrackers do have a substitution. Sam Eslinger could come back into the match. Abbott, Boerboom, splitting the defense. And that ball's going to go out. Is it going to be a kick in? Yes, it is. A kick in very deep in Dasa territory. Now, Abbott is close enough where we can kind of see him and it doesn't look like he, he has any bolts holding onto that guard right now. So again, uh, just from a safety standpoint, there isn't anything really securely holding down that guard right now. I'm not sure how yeah. Abbott can continue playing. And there's no bolts, and I, I've seen both sides of his chair now, there are no bolts in that chair holding that foot guard down. And there is like a little metal wire in the back of it, holding it down, but that's really not enough to keep it from moving, as we saw a few minutes ago. Bower boom. Rana. Rana with the ball. Philip. Rana still on defense here. Oh, no. A close to a two on one violation yes. for Dassa. Liam Kopp and Jenna Philip were really close together there. Bardell, Phillip. Just a little chess match between these two yeah, out here. Tight the, battle. The kick out, Rana's there, everybody's there. It's close to yeah. a two on one on both teams, quite frankly, but play continues. Boerboom driving into Pratt. Phillip trying to get the ball out of the area, and she does, uh. but she can't control it, and the Blizzards set up for another kick in. And Bardell was calling for a quick kick. Dassa was not ready. See if you can get it to the defense here. Phillip is playing a really high line here. Yeah. So Bower Boom's gonna have to kick it really hard. Let's see what he does. 
And now they're having a little conversation here. Lower boom. The wind up, the kick across, not enough pace on it. Abbott bounces it off the back of his chair. Boer booms there, and he's going to take it back towards the Firecrackers goal oh. area. And he gets around Phillip. Nice move. Joe Boer boom now trying to get around Mark Pratt. And I think he got a little excited there, Lucas. He had an opportunity, and then he just pushed it out. Yeah. Looked like he was trying to pass. Now Greg Abbott out of the match. Coming on in his place, Sam Eslinger. That ball ricocheting between Rana and Phillip. Play continues. Again, Very more two on ones. Rana across the Boer Boom. Boer Boom's got space. Pratt closes it off, though, and sends it out. Kicking coming up for the Blizzards. Bardell waiting patiently at the top of the area. Rana at the far post. Boerboom sends it across. Cut off by Phillip. Another kick in coming up. 32nd minute of the match. Courage Kenny Blizzards holding on to a razor thin 1 0 lead. Trying to extend it here. Lower boom across. Rana, Rana with a oh. shot. And he, it was a great idea. He just could not get around fast enough. Rana coming up to the top of the area. Bower boom switching and going all the way across. Rana with oh, a no. shot. He had space, but not enough pace on it. They're very close again. Two on one violation. And Lucas, if you play for the Blizzards, you got to be a little frustrated at this point. Yeah, you sure do. So Try many scoring opportunities. Exactly. Boerboom sends it back into the Dasa defense. Phillips sends it out. Yeah, everyone's really far away from him here. Now Rana slides over and gets a little closer. TJ Rana, a little give and go. Bower Boom now yep. going to collect that ball. Nice teamwork there. Bardell tries to get out of the way before a two on one is called. The kick out. Rana with the ball. Rana with a shot. Bardell, can she get there before it goes out? She nice can. Save. Nicely done. Good hustle by D. Bardell. And now she very smartly lets it roll out. Another kick in coming up. 34th minute. Time slipping away from the firecrackers here. They haven't really been able to move the ball down the floor through the latter part of the second half. Yeah. Bower boom, all the oh, way across. Nice and there's kick. a shot. And there's a oh, goal, TJ wow. Rana. Off of Mark Pratt, who made the initial save. Boerboom sends it across. Bardell ran a screen. D. Bardell screened out Phillip. And again, Mark Pratt made the initial save, but Rana was right there to get the rebound and score another goal. 2 0. Courage Kenny Blizzards. Phillip, that ball touches no one. Another kick in for the Blizzards, and Lucas Dassa just having a tough time getting any kind of offensive rhythm here. Yeah. Rana, the goal scorer, trying to add another to the stat sheet. And again, you see it again, the, the 
Firecrackers get the ball for just a moment, and they just can't do anything with it. Yeah, I know. Bower boom. Another big kick. That one off the back of Bardell's chair. Phillip keeps it in play, though. Now Rana with it. Spacing here. Bower boom. Those two getting a little close. Rana's going to save keep the ball before it goes out. The pass across Pratt. Bower boom trying to get the ball over to Bardell, but he's going to hold on to it himself. And that ball goes out for a corner kick. Nice play by Joe Bower boom to get the ball off of Mark Pratt, who himself is a pretty experienced keeper. Mark Pratt's been involved with the sport for a long time. Rana, Bardell, that one off the front of her guard. It bounces the wrong way, and a little bit of a break for the Firecracker defense. Bardell, Phillip, oh, that glances off of Bardell's chair. Liam Kopp keeps it in play. Bardell sends it back down the floor. Oh, and that's a two-on-one violation. Yeah. I got to watch the spacing here. D. Bardell rallying the troops. Boer boom. Going to seek out Bardell down the floor, but that one right off of Eslinger. The referee almost got taken out there by Liam Kopp. <laughs> Bower boom, Bardell, Phillip. Hard move there by Jenna yeah. Phillip. Now, D. Bardell trying to get through the Dasa defense. Oh, these two are going at it. Good battle between these two. And now that ball comes out to Rana. TJ Rana now. Not going to get to the ball before it goes out. 38th minute. The Courage Kenny Blizzards are up 2-0. Phillip, Bardell takes a shot, sends it back into the Dasa goal area. Bardell, Kopp, Rana, and Boerboom took a swing at it, but he missed. It went off of Kopp. Kicking coming up for the Blizzards. Substitution for the Blizzards. Coming off TJ Rana, coming back onto the pitch. Number one, Brighton McMahon. It looks like Greg Abbott for the Firecrackers has also returned. Abbott comes away with that ball. See if they can get a pass going. Yeah, they need something going here. They haven't really been able to get much of anything, Lucas. Nice play there by Boerboom, just waiting patiently for the right time to just drive Greg Abbott out of the area. And it's out of play. Bardell calling for the ball from Boerboom. Boerboom off of Bardell, and Abbott almost got away with it. But Bardell, nice turn, gets around Abbott, and now she's heading back toward the Dasa goal area again. But no one's there for her. And now Phillip trying to get 
the ball back the other way. But Dee Bardell, she's had a wonderful tournament so far. She's driving in, trying to get through. You've got to be careful of the contact. You do have to be very careful with the contact there. Bardell. Boerboom going to oh. take a shot. Boerboom going to go wide of the post. Just missed. We are in added time here. And Lucas, the Blizzards have been completely dominant pretty much from the opening whistle. Yeah, every time Dasa tries to get the ball down. Courage County gets it back. Phillip. And that ball off of McMahon. Now Sexton's going to save the ball. Good job by Sexton. Very heads up play. Otherwise that would have been a kick in for the firecrackers down there. But oh. Wyatt Sexton just very aware of what was going on. Yeah, very smart play. Bardell off of Phillip, off of Abbott. Oh. Bardell gets the ball back. Now she's trying to get around Phillip. Bardell just could not get around the ball enough to send it back up. Philip, Bardell, the touch to Boerboom. Boerboom working against Abbott. Boerboom with the pass across. Bardell's going to get there. A fortunate tip off the back of Philip's chair. Philip, Eslinger, and that ball's going to roll all the way to the Blizzards' goal area. Wyatt Sexton right there, though. And he sends it back up the floor. McMahon is going to send that ball out of play. And time is almost up. Blizzard's kick in. Bardell. The final whistle has blown. Courage Kenny Blizzards, two. That's a firecrackers nil, an impressive performance by the Blizzards. After a slow start, they came away with a win. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, more action. We have two more rounds of games today. You are watching the 2022 USPSA MK Battery Conference Cup Series. Lucas Courier from the Northeast Passage Wildcats. Thank you for joining me here. Thanks for inviting me, Tony. We'll be back soon. Take care.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Plasman Athletic Center. Turnstone here. We've got some Premier Cup action. I'm Pete Winslow. Along with me is Chad Wilson. Chad, I'm excited for this game. Yeah, I'm really excited for this game as well, Pete. I mean, these teams always have great matchups, so I, I, I'm really excited for it. It uh, should be an interesting one as well with uh, kind of some new play, uh, a new player on, on CNY, and we'll see how that kind of affects things here today. Yeah, we've got the Circle City Rollers in yellow and black, coached by Mike Hayes. And then we've got CNY United in their dark reds, coached by Tom Cunningham. Uh, a lot of a lot of talent on this floor. Um, you know, a lot of past and present Team USA players as well for each side. Um, obviously, you know, the matchup that intrigues me is uh, number 32, Michael Archer versus number 18, Peyton Savick here. I think that's going to be a, quite the chess match going forward in this game, Chad. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's back and forth. Those two have practiced and played against each other so many times. They know each other well, so it's always fun to see them uh, lock up. We're going to see them guard to guard quite a bit here today. <laughs> Team's getting set for action. Just want to thank everybody for tuning in this weekend. So much power soccer. Uh, you know, when I was on earlier, Chad, I, Nathan and I alluded to it. It's so good to be back. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, it's great to see familiar faces and seeing so many people I haven't met before, newer players. Um, you know, there's a lot of great young talent here today, so it's just been a great weekend so far. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all, all the teams, top to bottom, from the top conference to the lowest conference, you know, 1 through 10, all these teams are so talented now. Um, and, and it just makes for exciting soccer seeing new players and new teams showing up uh, for the first time, or seeing those veteran teams come back. It's, it's always a show, and uh, we've got a lot of action still left this weekend, for sure, and Power Soccer Shop live stream here on YouTube will be bringing you all the action, as it'll be Circle City ball here. Like I said, Circle City rollers in the yellow and black, CNY United in their dark reds. And, and Pete, you alluded to the, the talent that's out there on the, on the court here today. Uh, I think I'm counting five current or former Team USA members uh, out here, so wonderful town out here. And here we go. Close to two on one, but there's not really a one, so that's going to go uncalled. And here we go already. Archer versus Sefik. In that battle we knew we would see. Sevek wins that one for CNY. So you'll notice here that, that Drew's wearing the goalie pin. He's playing up. We'll see how that dynamic goes the rest of the game here. Drew gets that down for Tony. Tony lets it go out for Circle City. Look, looks like number seven, Nally Russo, will be in to take the kick for Circle City. Great, right, Chad. We'll see if that... Uh, Changes anything in this matchup as Circle City does not do that, or at least aren't, haven't started to do that uh, in this match so far as they're playing more of the traditional goalie role. That'll be a two on one on McIntyre and Russo. CNY ball. Oh, and uh, I want to say uh, congratulations to Natalie Russo. She recently became engaged to uh, Jordan Dickey from the RHI Sudden Impact. Uh, so, kind of nice seeing those connections uh, between different teams, and, you know, it's it's always fun to watch them face off, but especially now with those um, extra things involved there. So, Yeah, absolutely. I, I do believe Natalie's diamond ring is uh, blinding the others on the court right now. I can see it from here. Um, but we'll see CNY here with a prime opportunity with this free kick. All the way down to Tony, takes it. And that goes through, but it has to touch an opponent. Well, it has to touch anybody because uh, that was an indirect free kick, whereas a direct kick, you know, if someone fouled somebody, that could go straight in. But uh, that was a good, you know, good savvy move there by Archer to know that, hey, I didn't have to touch this, and now we get the ball back. And I think that the shot there, you're hoping it hits off somebody, or you're hoping maybe they're just napping over there, not paying attention. So great awareness, as you said. Well, and honestly, nine times or ten times out of ten, you know, reactionary, I'm going to go get this ball. I can't let it go through. But uh, obviously, Archer is one of the smartest players around. He knows when and when not to uh, go after it. He's got a kick in here. It's going to wind up. Russo jumps on that. He's going to try to work it down in the corner and flip it back to Archer, who's waiting for it at top. And she does. Archer gets around it. Doesn't get all of it. Referee takes the uh, flag. There was a two. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Three in a box, I believe, on that far side. 
So just as New York had a great opportunity on the end a couple seconds ago, Circle City within striking distance on this set play here. And set plays are really where, where Circle City gets it done over the years. So we'll see what they come up with. Uh, I've seen them use a little motion in their offense. Uh, we'll see if they try some of that here. Archer with the kick. No, oh. Takes a big kick. Up the middle, right into Sefik, though. And that one jumps out for Tony. Tony locking horns with Archer. A little, little bit contact. of contact. Yeah, a little contact. Got, just guard on guard. Archer, Tony locking up. Tony now turning it, trying to get the leverage, but that's very tough on the sideline there. Is That's going to be a Circle City ball. So it was interesting talking to some of the CNY players uh, here today before the game. And um, here, let's see this play here. All the way across. Oh, big, big collision there. And so the, the, the players really haven't practiced together much in the last year. Um, and so, uh, you know, for one, uh, Drew Cunningham has now moved to Colorado, is my understanding. So he has not practiced with the team, but watch them there. They, they've looked pretty sharp working together. Yeah, but, you know, just, it's kind of like a bike, right? <laughs> and uh, him and Sefik do such a great job in the box together. But this, this is going to be a direct kick, so this could theoretically go straight in. Ooh, just out of the reach of Russo. Good play there. Both teams having some good chances early on here. Still think they're trying to feel each other out here almost five minutes in. Sefik now for CNY with the goal kick. Since... Cunningham up the middle. Archer spins on it. So it was interesting watching that, that goal kick there. Uh, CNY using uh, three people up. That could be a two-on-one, and it is. Yeah, I mean, it just gives you options um, when you have three people up uh, to pick your spot, to choose a hole to go through. Here's Circle City now. That one gets snubbed out by Tony. Good read there to not let Archer take a free shot. That's going to be a contact foul on Michael Archer. Archer jumps in on that one, working it to the corner. Trying to turn it, get it up to Russo. So the ref dug their called advantage on the two-on-one there. Yeah, you don't have to call it right away. You can let the play. You know, that's something I feel like a lot of refs know you don't always do. And so you know, I always appreciate that when you can tell they're, they're looking at the finer details of the game. Right, and then obviously he can call it back whenever he wants or, you know, within that time limit. Archer, big kick there. Looks like that went out before she connected on it, though. So New York ball here. Stefik takes the kick. Right now, referee Doug Wolf enforcing the distance. McIntyre's got to stay back. Cunningham and Archer now. Oh, they look like a three in the box there. Close. I don't know if Matt, I don't know if Cunningham was quite in there yet, but it was close. Oh, and that one pops up. Still in. Ref calls it good. Again, it's really to the ref's discretion since it didn't break that the, the uh, you know the height rule. You know, if the ref thinks it's okay to play on, they can play on. So, observing that ball this weekend, it seems like it bounces a little more than maybe some of the balls we've had in years past. So you just got to kind of uh, get, get comfortable with that. We all got to use the same ball. So it's just yeah. another key difference. Nathan and I alluded to that earlier that it seems like there's a little more spring in this one. Um, not always a terrible thing, but 
McIntyre with it, getting it back up to Archer. Archer tries to spin on it, but Sefik is right there as Sefik gives chase. Let's, let's see if Sinwa can get something on the counter here. Archer doing a good job to hit it off of Tony on the sideline to keep possession. Very difficult to move Michael Archer on the sideline when he's got position on you. Absolutely, he's one of the best players with, with leverage. Good give and go there. Sefik does a good job to stay back and not bite. Like we said, Chad, I mean, these teams know each other so well. It's, you know, they know exactly what the other's going to do. And we've seen it thus far. Almost eight and a half minutes in, 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, just in club, club play, they play each other so often. And then when you add in uh, the, the Team USA members, they've had hours and hours of, of, of practice against each other, so they know each other so well. Yeah, absolutely. Archer wins that one as he moves up the floor. Tony stops to play defense and just drives him out. And that will be Circle City ball. Michael does such a good job when locking up, making sure he's the one on the outside to get possession of that ball. Right, because the rule is it's, you know, the person trying to keep the ball in um, is the one that should win possession. Archer down to Russo. Tony grabs that one, though. Oh, and that one pops out. Ryan Grimes with it now, giving chase. Sefik's got to jump up there. That's going to be on McIntyre. Direct free kick to New York here, 10 minutes in. Tony does a good job to win that on the sideline and move up the floor. Tony stays down. He's going to hit it across. Oh, oh, right off of the goalkeeper, Kevin Perry. Archer keeps that one alive. Sefik has to jump in on it. Great job by Michael not to give up on that play. He stuck with it and, and kept it in. Because they easily could have gone off of Kevin for a corner kick. And uh, you know, obviously, if you want to you limit giving your op opponent that opportunity to uh, get a good playoff. Definitely. I mean, the corner kick's the, the best way to to score in power soccer these days, so. There's Archer still with it. Cunningham is there. That one goes out. We circle City's ball. So going to this tournament, is always interesting to see, you know, are these teams going to change their tactics from when we last played 2019? Uh, slight changes, but the teams are kind of similar to what we've seen over the years. Good defense there to close down that passing lane by Ryan Grimes. And like we said, it's always tough when you play a team and you know them so well. Good job by Sefik to punch that down the court. Archer with it now. Stopped by Drew Cunningham. Also a great battle between these two we've seen so far, and we'll see. Obviously, Drew Cunningham not afraid of the contact. D definitely not. Drew's a very uh, aggressive player within the rules. See if he can get it back up to the top, and he does, but Archer does a good speed turn, gets that around Sefik. Archer looking for that to glance off the front of Sefik's guard, but I don't believe it did, so that'll stay with New York. Yeah, I don't think it did, Pete, but Michael still did a good job of taking away that scoring opportunity. Cunningham with it now. Archer. Oh. Nope. I think that was just going to be a... <laughs> I 
Well, I've lost track of what's getting called at this point, but I believe that was a two-on-one against New York. And then Michael tried to quick hit it, and then it hit Drew, but my, my thought is if the ref hasn't said, I mean, if you hit it and they're there and they're on the, their way out, it's an interesting way. What's the right call? I mean, technically they're from the five, so should be called back. Yeah, like I said, I mean, it's to referee Doug Wolf's discretion. Oh, good move there by Drew. Maybe a better move by Archer to pick pick his pocket. Oh, that's yep. going to be a two-on-one, but referee lets it play on as Circle City still controls it. Oh, good pass uh, all across, the way across. across. Let's see. Harmon, who came in earlier, tried to get that back, but that's a good clear by Cunningham. And now, Chad, we've seen it a couple times where referee Doug Wolf has let it play on, and I think that's so important because sometimes if the – ref calls it too early, you know, that can really take away uh, a great opportunity for the team that was going to get the call anyway. Um, and, and that's why it's important to just let it play on and see if anything develops. And see, just like that, he let it play on, but then he called it once he saw that the advantage, um, you know, lo no longer favored the team who was going to get the call. And, um, yeah, I mean, as a player, I think we can all appreciate that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, I think it's difficult to make, you want to make the right call, but give the right time, but... Uh, Doug does a great job of, of letting the play develop. Cunningham with the kick now. Going to go down to Tony. Tony trying to go to Peyton. Oh, just gets over there, does Archer. I think that was the best opportunity scene-wise had, had so far. It looks like they're, they're warming up here, feeling a little bit better. Uh, they took a lot of pressure early on. Yeah, but you can see that great triangle formation that Drew went down to Tony. Tony spun it in and follow it up and Sefik was right there but Archer did a good job to get to that post. Let's see what they do here on this corner kick as Sefik is about to let it ride. Takes the shot. Archer's right there. Harmon turns it down the court. But Sefik brings it back. Sefik now with it. Going to try to get it to the top. Cunningham rotating over. Back to him. Good punch passes there, but Archer does great to get back in position. And that one goes down. Safik takes the shot, goes all the way across, and splits the defense and in. What a great sequence there of passes. Drew lets that go. Peyton finds the gap, splits it between Archer and Perry. I, th that's what makes it fun to watch CNY is they have some of the best passing you're going to see out there. It, it leads to goals. Um, and, you know, Michael does so good at covering things. You've got to get the ball moving back and forth to get around him like that. And a beautiful example of it right there. Tactical change here is J.C. Russo has now entered the game for Circle City. And almost 16 minutes in, New York up one nothing as we edge near uh, halftime. And J.C. Russo subbing in. He's a former uh, Team USA member as well. Um, he's, uh, he, he, he was away from the game for quite a few years, so it's great to see J.C. back out there. Yeah, and I mean, him and, him and Michael have always had a great rapport on those Team USAs and playing with Circle City. So, um, like, like you said, it's great to have J.C. back in the game. Savick with it now. Trying to walk the tight line, tight rope there. Got me confused there for a second. He'd blown the whistle and it looked like <laughs> right. they were still trying to <laughs> battle there. Well, Chad, this goal can be huge, especially as we, you know, creep towards halftime. You know, it's, it's always tough, I think, when a team gives up a goal right before halftime. Um, obviously, there's a little bit more time on the board here, but, you know, you got to think that that usually can swing the momentum in one team's way, uh, you know, as they go into huddles. Oh, I, I agree with you. And, you know, you don't want to play too cautious, but in these situations where you have a lead with – only a few minutes left in the half. I like to play maybe a little bit more conservative. Maybe you're not going to take quite as big of a kick just because you don't want to give something up because I think having a lead going to halftime is huge. Right. What's even worse is getting a lead and then giving it up a couple minutes later. So, Exactly. And then you go into half down, not having the momentum. So, Circle City now with the goal kick. Oh, a little bit of miscommunication there. Between yeah. Russo and Archer. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit of the rust with JC being, being away from the game a little bit there. Um, but, you know, those, those, those things just happen. Sevic with the kick now. Uh, 
they put Cunningham down in the corner. Bouncing it back. Archer doing a good job to stop that. Tried to keep it in, but just rolls out of bound. Now, I said being careful. I mean, if you're still in these scoring opportunities, I'm not just saying give it up, but I'm just saying wait till you're in those great spots. Oh, could be a two-on-one there if someone got in there. Good pass there by Russo to Harmon. Harmon with it now. Cunningham doing a good job of turning and taking it. Oh, also could have been a two-on-one. That'll go out for Circle City Ball. Russo now to take that kick. Slow roller, but Archer opens up and tries to work it around Cunningham. Cunningham doing a good job of forcing Archer to retreat. Savick with a big shot, takes a shot. Perry is right there, though. Tony gets it back to Drew. Drew takes the shot. Now back to Tony. Good defense by Circle City. Great play there by Tony, though, to knock it out off of Michael. I mean, great ball movement, but, I mean, again, Circle City does a great job of getting back into position to uh, stop that ball movement. It, yeah, I mean, Michael does a really good job at, you know, with Kevin, Kevin back there in goal as well, uh, navigating those, those big passes like that. So, I mean, that's can be very difficult. So, um, you know, to have that composure is, is a, a great attribute to have uh, back there in the box. A little bit of a tactical change here is Coach Mike Hayes puts J.C. Russo, Russo as the goalie. Russo and Archer work very well together. That one goes all the way through. Archer's just going to carry that out. Tony cuts him off. And that's going to go out for Circle City ball. We're into stoppage time here, so i got to imagine not very much stoppage time. But we'll see what Doug Wolf wants to do. So it looked like with the sub in there of JC, then Circle City was able to play that stack defense then with the goaltender goal up. Right. Archer splitting the New York defense, and that's going to be a two-on-one. Getting closer to a good position here for Circle City to maybe try to set something up. Yeah, if I'm Circle City, I'm trying to come up with a play right here. Since we don't know how much time is left, I would try to get a playoff quick here. Archer, big strike up the middle. Looking for the rebound, but Sefik does a good job to not just serve that back to Archer for the rebound. And that'll be halftime, ladies and gentlemen, as New York is up 1-0. Uh, man, what a, what a good first half. Started off a little slow, but I really do think that, you know, it's just those teams knowing each other and getting back into the swing of things, you know, like you said with Russo and, you know, Drew coming back to New York. And so, um, you know, it kind of divulged into the game we thought it would be um, initially as a low-scoring game so far. Um, good opportunities, but all around, I mean, it's what I thought it would be. Yeah, and I mean, I would also say, you know, it, 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 kind of the first 10 minutes, it was CCR really controlled it, and then it flipped, you know, towards the end, you know, especially with that goal from CNY. So I'm excited to see what they come back with in the second half. Yeah, I'm, I got to imagine both coaches are going to tweak things up a little bit. Um, both have a lot of talent, and I got to imagine this game probably won't stay one nothing. but we'll see. Uh, when we come back, we're going to step away quick for halftime, but then we'll be back with all the action for you here on the Power Soccer Shop live stream. Uh, Nimi is a manufacturing company for 25 years. Uh, we started out of our garage uh, manufacturing products and for the industrial market as well as disabled products and outdoor products too as well. Uh, we were able to help out uh, the disabled sports uh, world by building a power wheelchair. We have developed uh, many products for the industrial market like uh, vacuum fixturing that holds down, sucks down parts using vacuum power versus using double face tape that customers would do uh, and use clamps and vices and traditional stuff like that. Um, we can do full five-sided machining uh, by using vacuum chucks and different products of ours. Uh, the Strike Force has redefined uh, power soccer game, uh, giving 
the individual, the ability to express inside of him how to play the game um, without holding back. We have built a chair, a strike force, to be low profile, fast, quick, um, and take over the game. The manufacturing of the strike force has led us into the manufacturing of the track force chair, which is an outdoor rugged chair built for the beach, uh, hunting uh, any outdoor enthusiast that wants to get out of his everyday chair and uh, be able to go around in his yard even. Hello everybody and welcome back to second half action here. Pete Winslow along with me is Chad Wilson as we find ourselves with a 1-0 lead for CNY United over Circle City Rollers. CNY in dark red, Circle City in yellow and black. And Chad, I'm interested to see what kind of halftime tweaks uh, both coaches went through. Like I said, both coaches very tactical, so I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, they got to change something up. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if, if Circle City plays a little more aggressive here being down by one. I mean, it's one goal. You don't want to change everything necessarily, but it will be interesting to see if there's more aggression here as far as play calling. Yeah, plenty of game left here as Sefik draws a two-on-one. Interestingly, I noticed that uh, Drew Cunningham has a different pinion for this half as the goalie. He had yellow the first half. The refs must have been confused by that, so he's got blue on now. That one goes all the way down to the corner. That'll be a goal kick for Circle City. Another tackle change as J.C. Russo stays in goal, I suppose. It's not really changed. He was that before the half, but giving a different look back there. Russo cuts up the middle now. Natalie Russo, I should say. Not that they're both on the floor. <laughs> Savic with it now.
Another goal kick for Archer. Let's see when he wants to dial up. Goes all the way far. Cunningham returns that one. Didn't quite get that flush, but kept it back down in the Circle City zone. Archer up to McIntyre. That one goes back to Russo. Russo swinging on it. Let's see if Tony saves it. Cunningham now. Was going to spin on it, but decided to hold off. Yeah, I didn't think he had the best angle to Peyton there, so I, I think that made sense to hold back on that. Russo and Cunningham now. Cunningham takes the shot. Archer's right there. Close to a two-on-one there on Circle City, but New York ball nonetheless. Drew now. Sizing up what he wants to do. Archer jumps on that one, though. Yeah, Michael had that pretty well uh, <laughs> scouted out there. Oh, good move there. Archer swinging that up. Sefik has to grab it. You know, that's a big thing, too, Chad, how important it is when your goalie's playing up. they got to be the first person back in the box. Yep. Otherwise, you can get into some real sticky situations. Yeah, that's key, and you know, likewise, you always got to make sure that somebody backing them up when they are are coming up front. Um, you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of own goals over over the years with with goalies leaving and nothing being back there. So, you know, it's really on your teammates to make sure they cover you when the goalie's playing up. Again, no issue with having two players who are not the goalie in the box, but they have to be separated uh, so that they don't get two on ones because uh, they do count for that rule since uh, they don't have the goalie penny on. When they're in the box. Oh, oh. Good, good shot there by McIntyre. Great touch there by McIntyre. Wow. Peyton jumped out thinking it was maybe going to go across and just kissed it into the left corner there. Great touch there by McIntyre. You think that deflected off uh, Sefik a little bit? Uh, I don't know. It looked pretty flush coming off of Collins' guard, but nonetheless, 1-1. One, one. That's a real early goal here. Like I said, there was a lot of game left. Wasn't surprised if things were going to change. And that, I mean, the touch is a lot of times more important than the power on those, the way McIntyre just got a little bit on there. Yeah, that's all he needed to. It was a good, good, strong pass from Archer, and now they've tied the game up. Safik now with the kick. Good give and go there. Oh, and that goes through, and that goes in. Wow. And just like that, I mean, what? That wasn't even a minute. Let's see that replay. That was great give and go passes by Cunningham and Sefik, and then Cunningham let loose, or uh, no, Peyton let loose on that full 180, and it bounced perfectly off of the side of Drew's chair. And, uh, you know, that's a tough read for goalkeeper J.C. Russo um, as that one came off at an odd angle, and it went got tucked in right uh, inside the post, and now New York has seized the lead back less than two minutes after Circle City tied the game. And that's how you respond, ladies and gentlemen, after giving up a goal. Definitely. I mean, the way, you know, kind of used himself as a backboard there, uh, Drew did to, to lead to that goal, so. I mean, we've seen it time and time again, a hard shot off the side of the chair. You never know where it's going to go. Um, and so, you know, that's, that was a great setup by New York. And like I said, they find themselves up once again here, 26 minutes into this contest. McIntyre with a shot, went all the way through. Ooh, almost two on one. Russo on it now, and that one goes. Grimes now trying to catch up to it. Archer playing defense. A little bit of contact there. Grimes with it now. Tony jumps in on it. Grimes with it, but that's going to be a two on one on New York. Circle City with a free kick now. Going to go up the middle looking for McIntyre, but Sefik grabs that. Archer, huge shot, but calmly blocked by Tony. 
So Michael's a player you can't leave open on any place on the court. I've seen him score full court before. So <laughs> Absolutely, and you can see that he's looking for that rebound to come back to him. Because, you know, sometimes defenses defend the first shot but aren't ready for that second shot. Just like that, he played the ball to himself, and now he's off and running. Sefik with it now. Ooh, big contact there. Good dish off to Natalie Russo. Cunningham trying to turn her on the sideline, though. Flips it back to Archer. Archer goes all... Tried to inside out that one. Couldn't get enough on that one. And New York's got the ball. That would be a really difficult shot to, to take, but uh, I, I like the thought there. Give and go for New York. Savick now battling Natalie Russo. Drew jumps in. A little close there. Yep, and that's going to get called two on one. Both teams, I find, are uh, getting caught playing just a little close. Yeah, I agree with you, Tony, but I mean, luckily for these teams, a lot of times it's in the middle of the floor, so you're not giving up anything too big, but we have seen a few farther down, most of them middle of the floor. Um, so, of course, you don't want those, but they're not the end of the world. Yeah, absolutely. You get to reset your defense, and that's, you know, one of the most important things. It's you're not giving up a huge opportunity from here. McIntyre bobs that back into the middle. Russo takes a good move to get around Sevic. One-on-one -on -one with Grimes. Good job there by Ryan Grimes holding off until Cunningham could get back into net. But we got a corner kick, I believe. I believe it's corner kick. Yes. For a Circle City. So watch for the motion on this play on this setup. Yeah, they're going to send Russo in motion here. Archer's going to take a big shot. Just missed it, though. We're off and running, going the other way with New York. Russo, savvy play to stop it, hoping for some reinforcements. I got to think that's going the other way. It's, it's always uh, considered a dangerous play when a player pushes into that back wheel and jars the chair. That'll usually get called. Oh, good move there. Tony with it all alone again. Russo's got to come out and make a play. Finds Natalie Russo. That one goes out, not quite a corner kick. Be a kick in for New York. Takes the shot all the way across. Archer's gonna run that one through. Just some great teamwork by, by JC Russo and Michael Archer on that play. They hit the back of JC's chair and he, he knew Michael's there to, to back him up so well that shot goes through good clear though by Russo JC's had a couple great moves back there a goal coming up and uh, you know Chad we see games all the time you can't stress good goaltending like that how helpful it is especially relieving some of the pressure off your sweeper yeah definitely it, it's it, it's helpful I mean when you can trust both players back there to, to be sound defensively it can let you take more chances up the court. Archer now has got a lot of leverage off and running. That could be three in a box or two on one, whatever, whatever you'd like. Like I said, that's one of the tough things when you stick a player back there that's not the goalie. You know, the rotations have to be pretty clean on things like that, and that can just be tough. Uh, trying to find the most efficient way, you know, to uh, clear out and switch places. That extra two or three feet can really make it powering across the box easier. So let, let's see if Michael can use his power and take advantage of that. moving down now on that far post. Russo with the shot, but just met it a tad too early and put it wide of the post. 
I guess they just didn't like the angle far there, Pete. Got a goal kick now for New York. They send Sefik up the middle. Notice they only used three up this time. Good touch there by Sefik, but Tony wasn't quite on the outside ready to uh, receive that up the sideline. If he had gotten a good start, that would have been, they would have maybe connected that play, but good feed, good idea overall. So I wonder if that strategic change on the goal kick only having three, two up instead of four was due to the score, trying to defend your score with a, about nine minutes left, eight minutes. Yeah, that's right. Towing now with it, sweeps that out. Yeah, absolutely, Chad. I mean, there's not necessarily a need for, you know, all four to be up when you're up one, especially when teams can score, you know, at the drop of a hat. Now oh. Drew and Michael taking this all the way. That tech change also makes sense when, when you take into account they just had that play before where that switch over between the goalie going back and the sweeper was, was kind of strange. So it, it's much easier to, to avoid those situations if you only use three. Looks like it'll be New York ball. I thought maybe it might have been a Circle City ball. But regardless, you got a goal kick for New York. 33 minutes in, New York leads 2-1. to one. Just to recap, Circle City pulled, pulled even, and then, you know, a minute and a half later, uh, Cunningham found the opposite side of the goal to regain that lead. Good touch there by Sevek to get the, keep the ball rolling. Russo stops it. Drew now trying to work Archer. That one drops back for Natalie Russo. She tries to punch it through the gap. Ooh, almost two on one there. Tony doing a good job to hold on to the leverage. But Russo strips that away. Oh, good pass. Ooh. That one went right into uh, Tony's hands there if Natalie not touched that. Ooh, soft touch, just a little bit too soft as that one rolls out. You can hear Coach Mike Hayes telling Circle City they got to go now as the clock is their enemy at this point. Like you said, Chad, it, I think it comes at this point where New York will take the open shot if they have it. Oh, my goodness, what an awkward switch. Cunningham right there, though. Uh, but what I was going to say is New York, you know, in no rush at this point to do anything. Definitely not. And if, you're, if you're CCR, though, I'm starting to take chances here. Um, I mean, maybe it's throwing the goalie, getting them involved somehow. I don't know. But y you really need a goal here, so it, it's time to take those chances. Big chance here, though, for Circle City is Ryan Grimes got caught in the corner, causing a two-on-one. This shot got to imagine is going to try to go all the way across, but Archer strikes it. Russo touches it. Good save there by Sefik. Close to a throw one there was McIntyre and Russo, but. So with the power Michael Archer has, I'm surprised on those plays where they've had it in like that. They haven't tried to take that shot just because that extra space you have, I would think his power would be enough to get it over there, but uh, they know they know Peyton Sefik well, so they must figure he has it covered. Yeah, absolutely. And Archer grabs this one. Going to try to get it around Cunningham. Ooh, big collision there. And that's the one that's going to get called. Yeah, you can see there that ramming signal was... Uh, and they're going quick. Russo with a big, big shot, and what a goal! Natalie Russo, great pass by Michael Archer. Over to McIntyre. Russo 180s it right past Sefik. Wow, Dad, what a beautiful goal, 36 minutes in to tie this one. I wasn't even sure if, if Natalie was going to get to it. That's, that's just wonderful finishing uh, ability out there. That's, that's great. 
But what was important there, I think that, uh, you know, on that foul, as soon as the ball's set, you know, if the referee sets it, it's a live ball. And so you could see Circle City had to go quick, and I just don't think New York was quite ready or set. Um, and it caught them off guard. And, I mean, like I said, that's, what, that's how you take advantage. And, and now it's 2-2. See how they respond. Savic takes that one in the corner. Circle City's always that team that, that that's that's ready. They play fast. They're ready to, to get into their plays right away. And I, I think most premier teams have gotten scored on by them at some point in time. I know I know Shockwave has. So yeah, you can't uh, can't ever relax with the uh, with any team really. The Savic tries to get that one back into play. J C Russo meets that for Tony. Tony grabs it. That one goes off, big shot, oh, good defense there by Archer, but that was two on one. I think Drew and Peyton were a little too close. The level of play is just so high at the premier level that it, it, that extra half second can be the difference between a goal and a stop, and as, as we just saw in that, that most recent goal. Yeah, that's why they always say play to the 40, right? Play to the whistle, because you know, within an instance, you know, the game can change, like we just saw. As we get up to 38 minutes here, 2-2 between Circle City and CNY United in this Premier Cup battle. Archer with it now going up the middle. Good touch by Russo. McIntyre just a little bit out of his reach. Good play though, good play design. Nobody likes ending in a tie, but it'll be interesting what mindset each of these teams have has with this uh, last few minutes here. Right, I mean, you only got two minutes plus whatever stoppage time is going to be. Do you play aggressive and go for the win, or do you just try to conserve and, you know, go for the tie? We'll see what they want to do here. Oh, and that's going to split off. Could be a two-on-one. Doug's going to call that back. You know, it's Tony wanted to get out of the way there, but it was it was just coming so fast. It wasn't time to get enough time to get out of there. This is a. Uh, Pretty good opportunity here to set something up for New York. We'll see what they want to do here. As Drew's going to take this shot. Bounces it back. Tries to cross it to Tony. Stefik has it. Couldn't get anything on that. Still controlling it. Archer now. Trying to get past Drew Cunningham. And that's going to be a similar call that was called on Drew earlier just for that ramming. Usually should be a foul if they're ramming into you know that back part of the chair or the side of the chair, the back wheel. Archer jumps that one, but that's off of him. It seems with the introduction of the strike force, they don't quite often call that because I, I don't think the refs are as concerned about uh, you know chair slip or anything. But it's still in the rules. So Tony now with it, setting up. We've reached stoppage time, so I don't know how much we're going to get here. Can't imagine too much. Cunningham lets that one go. Archer now weaving his way through. And that's going to be a two-on-one, but they're going to let that play. Peyton doing a good job to call Grimes out of the box so that they could switch. That's going to be a foul on New York. Maybe a two-on-one that got called back. This could be the last scoring opportunity of the game here, so let, let's see what happens. Yeah, it could be the last play in general. Oh, good good shot there by McIntyre. And that's the final whistle. Not much stoppage time at all. Chad, what a game. Two to two. You know, both teams playing well and striking um, off of some set plays and Open field stuff. I mean, it was a great game all in all. Um, and like we said, not too high scoring. And, uh, you know, both teams played extremely well. Yeah, they played great. I, I thought it was going to be a good matchup. I thought it would be close. I wasn't really honestly expecting a tie. But, I mean, great performance by both teams. They both had, had wonderful moments. Uh, I think throughout the rest of the weekend, the, these are two teams that are, are going to be a, a tough out to beat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, got plenty more games. Uh, should be entering into the last batch of them for today after this, but more games tomorrow. 
um, as all the action will be here on the Power Soccer Shop live stream. So with that, Pete Winslow for, and Chad Wilson, thank you very much for tuning in. More action to come.
Dowling, and there's the pass to Dowling. Dowling is going to take a shot. Audrey Keener across to Keezer. Keezer shot in. And Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the final round of day two here at the 2022 U.S. Power Soccer Association MK Battery Conference Cup Championship Series for Power Soccer Shop. I'm Tony Jackson and joining me now from the Sacramento Valley Flames, Josh Berger. Josh, good day to you, sir. Oh, thank you for having me here. I'm so, I'm so glad to be here. Our next match is the... Shepherd Strikers from Atlanta, Georgia versus the Strap Scorpions from San Antonio, Texas. This should be a very entertaining match. Quick rundown of the lineups in goal for Shepherd. Number 33, Carlin Camp on the far side of the floor. Number 23, Dustin Swafford in the middle. Number zero, Taiwan Britain, and here on the near side, number one, Scott Stokes. For the Scorpions in goal, number 12, Eddie Gonzalez on the far side of the floor. Number 17, Carlos Barrera in the middle, Jacob Narendorf, number 21, and on our near side, number five, Jada Cano. And we start off with the Scorpions attacking the strikers defense. Cano spinning around, trying to get past camp. Camp, aggressive defense down there. And Jada Cano equally aggressive, but getting turned around by Britain. And that ball is out of play. Now Jada puts up a tough, tough battle. I've seen her play, she's really good. Yeah, Jada is uh, one of the better players you'll see out there. Mm -hmm. She's been playing for about five or six years now, at least. Yeah. Actually, she's been playing longer than that. There are pictures on the internet of her as a small, small child. Um, and I understand that she is either graduating or just graduated high school. So she's been playing for quite a while. Wow. Um, and she's developed into quite a player. Yeah, absolutely. Netball. I can't wait. It's okay. After I, you. Yeah, I can't wait to play against her one day. Because I, I feel like... She's just an amazing player. And so now Cano is going to take a kick deep from her own end. That's going right into Swafford and out of play for a kick in. Excuse me, a goal kick. Lots of action here on day two. As I have mentioned a couple times, there are four conferences in the U.S. Power Soccer Association, and all four conferences are in action today and tomorrow. Tomorrow, the President's Conference, which is the third division, and the Founders Conference, which is the fourth division, will wrap up their weekend tournament and crown a champion all conferences will be playing for the Finn Cup, named after Chris Finn, the late coach of not only the BORP area programs in Berkeley, California, but also the two-time winning world champion head coach with Team USA. I had the pleasure of playing under uh, Chris Finn for about three or four seasons, and it was a real pleasure to work with, and he taught me so much about this game. And uh, I will forever be grateful for that. He's a wonderful coach and even better person, Chris Finn. Absolutely. And that ball goes out of play. Kick in coming up for the Scorpions. And the striker setting up in a walled defense, which has become incredibly popular among teams. 
And that ball right off of camp. And now to play another kick in, Jada Cano will take another shot at it here. Wasn't a wall defense inspired by the World Cup in 2017 from the English team? No. no. I've seen other teams play this way, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in Japan. Okay. But I cannot tell you where it originated. Yeah. Cano with a shot right off of Stokes. Now Stokes is going to take that ball and head the other way on the counterattack. Cano with the ball. Stokes just going to drive right around her. Nice touch there by Narendorf. And that is a two-on-one violation. Play continues, however. And now referee is going to bring it back. We're just waiting to see if the advantage was going to play out, and it did not. Can I say, Tony, that it is so refreshing to see so many young new faces in this conference this year. Indeed. There are so many young new players yeah. out there. Um, that ball off the front of Taiwan Britain. But to finish that up, I don't know when they started playing mm -hmm. because we've been away from each other for over two years now. Yeah. yeah. And so for us, they're brand new. Yeah. Which is, as you said, very exciting to see. Mm -hmm. Two it's on one violation here. Constantly growing. It is. It, and it's wonderful to see. It's awesome. Two on one violation on the Strap Scorpions. So this is an indirect free kick for the Shepherd Strikers. That ball off of Gonzalez. Cano now heading down the floor. She is free. She has a beat. Carlin can't. Can she do it? Trying to get around him, and she can't. Well done by Carlin Camp to stop Cano. She was breaking free down the floor. Narendorf has to move out of the way to avoid the two-on-one. Narendorf, Carlin Camp sends the ball back the other way, and that's going to roll out for a straps kick in. Stokes. Now, Cano has to be extremely careful. Scott Stokes has a powerful kick. He's got that large frame that generates a lot of energy, and he gets wonderful velocity on the ball. Yeah, kind of reminds me of a uh, little bit of like Pete Winslow. A little bit like Pete Winslow, but I will say Pete Winslow kicks much, much harder. Oh, yeah. But Stokes is definitely up there in terms of power. He's got really good power on his kicks. So. Really nice technique. Well, really, he's extremely tall, and he's leaning back, which generates a lot of force with the weight mm -hmm. on the back of the chair. Mm -hmm. You see he goes all the way across. It didn't touch anybody. Swafford with a save. Excuse me. Gonzalez with the save. Swafford with the shot. And you saw an example of that power right there. He just managed to get that all the way across, and not a single person touched it. Cano sends that ball out of play. And the strikers will do it again. And now the Scorpions with an opportunity here. Cano going to take the kick. Now that ball is off the touchline. I wonder if Cano will yeah. request that it be moved. It doesn't look like she's going to. Mm -hmm. So this ball going down to Narendorf. Back up to Cano. Cano. 180 spin kick, but that was off the back of her Narendorf across the box, oh. but Ferreira, although he was there, he could not react in time. Nice kick by Jake Narendorf. Beautiful pass. Stokes off of Cano.
Swafford back across to Stokes, back across to Swafford. Some good open field passing here by the strikers. Cano going to take a swing and send it out. Britton, that ball going to Swafford. Swafford, what's he going to do with it? Cut off by Narendorf. Britton into Narendorf. Good save. Britton across. Cano needs to be careful. That's a two-on-one violation right there. Play on. Narendorf is the goalkeeper, but he was out of the box. Gita is not backing down to anybody. And she never does. She is she's fierce. Oh, yeah. It looks like Scorpions are going to try that play again. And Barrera setting up much higher this time to prepare for a shot that comes across. And Cano just misses there. Does she save the ball? She does. It's still in play. Can she get there before it goes out? I think she's going to get there. And she does. Nice hustle there. Narendorf with a shot and a save by Camp. Carlin Camp right there to save it. Wonderful play. Oh. And play continues now. Gonzalez comes out. And we'll see right here a quick replay. Narendorf with a spin kick. Camp barely got there in time. They do say that power soccer is a non-contest sport, but it does happen every once in a while, as you saw a couple of seconds ago. That is correct. There is a lot of contact mm -hmm. out there. But these referees do an amazing job to keep us safe. Yeah, I will say the referees have done a much better job this season mm -hmm. of, about keeping the contact more under control. Mm -hmm. I've seen at least two players cautioned today so far. <laughs> Stokes over to Swafford. That goes off the back of his chair. Britton is going to have to pick it up. And there's a bit of contact there, speaking of. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get a foul, a direct free kick in favor of the Shepherd Strikers. Okay. Twelfth minute of the match. We are scoreless here. Both teams playing pretty even so far. Mm -hmm. It's been a defensive game lately this, so far. Yeah, both teams have had a couple opportunities, mm -hmm. but nothing coming of them. Stokes over to Britton. Back to Stokes. Cano right there, nicely done. Now Cano gets around Stokes. Britton's going to have to come back into the area. Nicely done by Taiwan Britton. Now, Taiwan Britton, one of the most experienced players you're going to see out here. But nicely done by Jada Cano. And that ball out of play. Now Taiwan Britton used to play for the Atlanta Synergy. Years and years ago, one of the top Premier Conference teams, they were in the championship game every year. And then that team unfortunately broke up. But he's doing a really good job here with this Shepherd Striker squad. He's a solid leader back there. Barrera with a shot. Barrera saved by Camp. Cano, the pass across. Barrera passes it back up to Narendorf. Narendorf over to Cano. Cano with a shot. Saved by the strikers' defense. Lots of contact down there again. But Cano driving around. Britton trying to drive her out of the area, and he does. Well done by Britton. Cano now. Can't hold on to the ball, and Britton is just moving her down the floor. Now we saw the Scorpions yesterday, and I have to say, this is a much better performance from them today. Cano, Stokes, Narendorf, Stokes, cut off. Now Britton's there. Barrera, can he hold on to the ball? Can he get it before it goes out? He's trying, but he's not going to get there. It feels like the momentum is shifting slightly in favor of the Scorpions. I would agree with that, too. And that ball gets right through to Swafford, but Britton cannot pick it up. 
while we wait for the soccer ball to set up, I gotta say, these new soccer balls are so clean looking. Yeah, they look really nice. Yeah. There's the blue and orange ones mm -hmm. that we saw yesterday, and today the black and electric pink. Oh, is that what it's called? I just... Made it up? I love it. Made it up. I love it. Swafford, nice touch there. Narendorf now back trying to counterattack. And Britain, the last to touch that, it's going to go out for a kick in. Cano, right to Britain. Narendorf, that ball over to Swafford. Swafford controls it. Gonzalez is there to stop the ball. Narendorf. Cano's got to be careful, but that's actually not a two on one because Narendorf is the keeper. So good combination play, good defending between those two. Stokes right into Cano. Britain. Britain a little too early on the turn. Cano looking to set up quickly here. Narendorf. And everybody moves out of the way of that one. We're going to get a two on one violation, though, on the strikers. So an indirect free kick coming up for the Scorpions. No, nicely done. Britain over to Stokes, but he can't catch up to it. We're going to get a substitution for the separate strikers coming off. Dustin Swafford coming into the match now, number 19, Alex Spitzer. Now, Alex Spitzer. Not only does he play power soccer, but he's also a dancer. He actually performed at the 2017 World Cup in Florida. Really? No wonder he looked familiar. A kick in for San Antonio. Speaking of World Cup, man, I cannot wait for it to come back. It should be a fantastic competition. Oh, Lots of strong teams out there. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it myself. Yeah. In Sydney, am I right? It is in Sydney, as long as it's not postponed again. Right. Cano taking on Stokes. Now, Cano is having a tough time working against Stokes because not only is Scott Stokes about 13 inches taller than she is, but he also outweighs her by about two and a half times. So Cano is going to have a really difficult time if, she, if she's going to try to drag Stokes around. But she manages to get the ball away there. Nicely done. She loses the ball there. People are screaming for a two on one, and that's a foul on Spitzer. I can't say, that was a beautiful technique by Gina going up against somebody bigger than her. I, myself, I only weigh 55 pounds soaking wet. It's all about technique, trying to get to rip, rip the ball off of somebody so much bigger than you. It is all about technique. Mm -hmm. Cano pushing through, but she. Can't quite keep it in play. She was close. Stokes, a little too far away to fire the ball towards the goal area, so he's just going to hit it to Britain, but he can't reach it. Spitzer's going to have to come up and save it. To no. Trying to get around Britain, and she does. Britain now getting dragged down the floor. Cano, good, good job there getting the ball through. Now she has one person to beat. Can't she get there without getting a two on one? Oh, and Carlin Camp does very well, but the ball comes loose, and Taiwan Britain just hits it out. The Straps supporters desperate for a goal. They've had trouble scoring this weekend. 
And Cano getting pushed out by Britton. And in those situations when you're getting dragged, it, it's so helpful to let go of the ball. The only reason that works for an attacking player is because you, as the defender, are pushing the ball against their chair, and that's what they want you to do. That's what they need you to do in order to drag you down the floor. Nice turn by Cano, but she couldn't get there soon enough. That's a two-on-one violation on the Shepherd Strikers. To, uh, to comment on that uh, technique we were talking about, about pulling off the dribble, it seems so counterintuitive, but it works. It yeah, really works. It, it certainly does. Your, yeah. your natural tendency is to hold on and try mm -hmm. not to let them go, but yeah. you're only helping out the opponent when you do that. Narendorf into Britain. Oh, Cano oh. had an opportunity. That ball flashed right in front of her. It was a little off the ground, too, so that would have been a tough ask. Now Cano going to go up to Narendorf potentially here. He's sitting way high right now. And she elects to go right into the wall. Narendorf with the ball now. Oh, and that ball kicks off of Narendorf's chair. This is going to be a corner kick. Now Scott Stokes going to use that powerful kick to try to get it across the defense. Alex Spitzer sitting at the far post. Taiwan Britton sitting right in the middle of the box. Let's see where Stokes goes. Stokes right into the defense. Tried to get the defender to move out of the way and hit that gap, but good job by Eddie Gonzalez. And now he's got a different vantage point to work from. You wonder if he shot it that way on purpose, because sometimes it's a better angle to work with. Yeah, it looked that way. Mm -hmm. It looked like he was actually trying to get the defender to jump Yeah. by aiming towards the center, mm -hmm. but actually shooting it across yeah. closer to the goal line. So now Dustin Swafford back into the match. Stokes all the way across, but that goes right into Cano, and Stokes going to just let it go out. Cano trying to save it before it went out. Now you can see just, there's just a lot of speed on that ball when Stokes fires it across. Now Swafford trying to screen Gonzalez here. Stokes all the way across Britain, wide open space, but he goes back towards Stokes. He had plenty of space right next to him. If he could have gotten his chair around the ball a little bit more, you saw Gonzalez got there, but he didn't quite fully commit, which was good seeing as the ball went back across the goal area. And I say those would be back doors always gets you. It's so hard to do. Britain with a 180 spin kick. Narendorf cuts it off nicely done. And that is the halftime whistle. Quite an entertaining first half despite there not being any score. The Strap Scorpion supporters are happy. We're going to take a break. You're watching the 2022 MK Battery Conference Cup ser Series. Uh, Nimi is a manufacturing company for 25 years. Uh, we started out of our garage uh, manufacturing products and for the industrial market, as well as disabled products and outdoor products too as well. Uh, we were able to help out uh, the disabled sports uh, world by building a power wheelchair. We have developed uh, many products for the industrial market, like uh, vacuum fixturing that holds down, sucks down parts using vacuum power versus using double face tape that customers would do uh, and use clamps and vices and traditional stuff like that. Um, we can do full five-sided machining uh, by using vacuum chucks and different products of ours. Uh, the Strike Force has redefined the uh, power soccer game, uh, giving the individual the ability to express inside of him how to play the game um, without holding back. We have built a chair the Strike Force to 
be low profile, fast, quick, um, and take over the game. The manufacturing of the Strike Force has led us into the manufacturing of the Track Force chair, which is an outdoor, rugged chair built for the beach, uh, hunting uh, any outdoor enthusiast that wants to get out of his everyday chair and uh, be able to go around in his yard even.
the final 20 minutes of day two here at the Plasman Athletic Center here at Turnstone in Fort Wayne, Indiana. For Power Soccer Shop, I'm Tony Jackson. And joining me for one final half from the Sacramento Valley Flames, Josh Berger. Josh, it was a pretty good first half. It was a pretty good first half. Oh, yeah. No score, but plenty of chances by both sides. Oh, it was beautiful. Barrera, a hard shot into Taiwan Britain, and he is not moving right now. And he's back running again. That ball is out of play. Yeah, I, I've been on that with Steven Anikle getting hit so hard, the, the chair just kind of shuts off for a split second. Yeah, that, that definitely can and does happen. Mm -hmm. It's a very helpless feeling. Indeed. Indeed. Jake Narendorf is going to take this kick. That ball sails all the way through. Stokes with a hard shot down the floor. And the Scorpions advance about 10 feet. Cano with a shot. Stokes tried to go for another big shot, and he was just a little bit late on it. There were three six he got fun to do, and they're even more fun to watch. <laughs> Cano, Britain's there to cut that ball off, but he can't control it. So the Scorpions will swap sides. And it looks like they're gonna try this tactic again. A little short, soft pass that's close to a two-on-one violation. Referee allows play to continue, however. Stokes is anticipating that, so I think Maybe the move here is for Narendorf to just take a shot into the goal area. And that ball right to Stokes, but Cano manages to grab it. Well, that's close to a foul on Stokes. A little contact there. Cano, nicely done. Cano driving Britain. Cano loses the ball, but she turns around and prevents Britain from just taking off. But now Britain getting turned a little bit. Britain to Narendorf. Narendorf stops the ball from advancing any further, but now it heads up the floor. A two on one violation on San Antonio. Stokes, Narendorf sends one off of Cano. Now Swafford could let that go out, and he does. Smart veteran move. Let it go. Dustin Swafford, another player who has been in this game for quite a long time. He's very experienced. Taiwan Britain waiting at the far post. Swafford trying to screen. That ball all the way across. Britain with a shot. And Taiwan Britain breaks the tie. Goal, Shepard Strikers. Let's watch that again. Again, that power by Scott Stokes makes it easy for Britain to score. It's 1 0. Shepard Strikers. Picture esque goal. Again, Stokes, he, he's such a large frame. And because he leans back, there's so much weight hanging over the back of his chair, and that's what generates so much power for him. So now, Jake Narendorf is going to take a shot. It looks like he's gonna take a shot down the floor. And he does, Stokes is there though, he read that all the way. Good shot by Cano. Now there's open space, very dangerous by Carlin Camp. He could have let that ball go out for a goal kick. Now Cano winds up for a shot. Cano saved by Camp. Now he's made a couple of good saves in his defense. 
He's made some good saves this afternoon. He almost made a huge mistake, though. It's going to be an indirect free kick. Now Narndorf looking to go to Barrera. Now Carlin Camp sees what's happening, so he backs up just a little bit. Barrera just kind of getting into position here. Looks like something's going on with the yeah. chair here. Looks like the, the foot guard got bent a little bit, maybe pushed in some. Now that's one of the older style foot guards that we used to use, and it's held down. It's actually kind of just wedged in place with some bolts. Those are solid bars that are running through the mounts, and so there are a couple of bolts that just kind of press against them to hold it in, and they do move sometimes. Now with the strike force, those guards are bolted directly to the frame and so they do not move at all. Let's see what the Scorpions have drawn up here. Narendorf and that ball goes right to camp. Stokes good touch to just get that ball into the middle of the floor. Gonzalez well done. And the Shepherd Strikers defenders had to split. Camp is in the box, defending, close to a two-on-one violation. Barrera's there, and you can hear the calls for a two-on-one. Stokes, Narendorf, Britton. Oh, he couldn't control that one. Can he hold it before it goes out? He can't. So. Cano is going to take a kick here. It's such a great opportunity for them to equalize the game. Now there is a ton of space in this striker's defense. There's a good six feet sitting behind Carlin Camp. Let's see if Cano tries to go for it. She does not. Narendorf late, and it goes out. Now the greedy side of me says just Act like you're going to kick it one way and then redirect it and go another way. Yeah. And just see what happens from there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. also, you can understand why they would go to the top. That's what they had drawn up. Mm -hmm. Taiwan Britton, the pass across to Stokes, cut off by Narendorf. And now Narendorf breaking down the floor, but Stokes recovers very nicely. That ball's still in play. Stokes, Narendorf. Driving. Nice turn to get behind Stokes. Britton. Oh, and some contact there. Referee swallowed his whistle. He was about to blow it. Nice turn by Cano. The ball got behind her. She was able to recover. And now trying to head back the other way towards the striker's goal area. Carlin Camp patiently waiting. Still in play is that ball. And now Cano hits it out. Swafford tries to go back to Britain, but Britain now has to just push it out. Cano, now she sends it down towards that area. Cano, right into camp. Cano pressuring the st striker's defense. Two on one violation coming up. Advantage played. Taiwan Britain now racing down the floor. And here's another potential two on one. Narendorf trying to back into the area. Again, the, the strap scorpion's getting a little too close together here. But the referee allows the advantage to play out. And a great recovery by Narendorf. Thirtieth minute of the match. Shepherd Strikers with a one nil lead. Now Stokes can go all the way across to Britain and it looks like that's what he's gonna do. And he goes all the way across. Back to Britain. Stokes winds up. Oh, and he knew he was late. He and he stopped, but not soon enough. Oh, this could be disastrous for the strikers. Let's see what happens here. 
Stokes wanted to go back to Britain, and he was too late, and he wasn't in the right position. And he still kind of made contact with the ball, which gives the Scorpions a tremendous opportunity here. Narendorf doesn't look like he can change directions mid-kick, so he's already played his hand here. Good idea, and if somebody were up there, that would have been a fantastic move. Swafford. Britain touches the ball, but he's not going to be able to keep it in. Cano. Britain over to Swafford. Swafford's right there. Cano now trying to get it away from Swafford. Britain, Cano the last to touch. Scott Stokes going to set up here. Stokes all the way across. Britain's going to take a shot. Blocked by Narendorf, and that's a two-on-one violation. They're going to bring that one back. Strat really had to watch his space and could, there's nothing more worse feeling than having to kill your own momentum. Indeed. And they've gotten some chances here. They just mm -hmm. can't get it to work. Swafford. Now Cano, can she recover and get to the ball before it goes out? She can't. Good shot by Dustin Swafford, but Narendorf was there. And now Scott Stokes for the strikers. They send another ball across. Stokes to Swafford. Gonzalez off of Swafford. That one touched him. And it's going to go out. Kick in coming up for the Scorpions. 33rd minute. Time is winding down. They have to do something soon. The Scorpions, if they want to get back into this game. We saw a momentum shift earlier from the Strikers to the Scorpions. But now it's shifted back to the team from Atlanta. Stokes was licking his chops for that one. He saw what was coming, but he couldn't get there in time. The pass across, Stokes, two on one violation. But play continues, referee holding up his hands because the advantage is We got a dead out. wheelchair. We got a dead wheelchair. Well, the referee is not under any obligation to stop the match for a dead wheelchair. So now Narendorf trying to get Stokes down the floor and he does nicely done Jake Narendorf Cano right there but she loses the ball and now Britain oh heavy contact between Britain and Cano and that one off of Britain that ball off of Stokes Cano is going to take another crack at it Narendorf with a shot off of Stokes That ball is out of play, and Scott Stokes and the Shepherd Strikers are now going to have an opportunity here. The referee signaled that it was the Strikers' ball. At least the assistant referee did. Let's see. It looks like the Scorpions are going to take this kick, though. That one off the back of Narendorf's chair is not what you want. And that's definitely a two-on-one violation. And the referee's going to bring that one back. The 
Indirect free kick. Now Alex Spitzer has come into the match for Dustin Swafford, and it looks like the temperature in the building may be having an effect on Swafford. And sometimes people, when they get cold, it makes it difficult to move their fingers or grip the joystick. So Taiwan Britton, oh my goodness, Taiwan Britton. Instead of going between the defenders, he goes behind Jake Narendorf and scores a goal. Watch this play again. That one was right off of Britton behind Jake Narendorf. Shepard Strikers up 2-0. Well done. That was such a tight, tight window. Beautifully executed. And that ball goes out for a Shepard goal kick. Stokes, Spitzer, that one glances off his chair. Now Gonzalez understood what was happening and let that ball roll out. Well, Scorpions are not out of the woods yet. They have four minutes to go. They, they can still uh, even this game up. Stokes off of Cano and that ball goes flying in the air. Oh my goodness, I think that one went off the camera. And it just went off our good friend Devin Johnson. If you're a fan of the NFL, that was good from at least 25 yards. Absolutely. A little mini punt. Oh my goodness. Have you seen it go that high before? Yes. That was insane. And it usually happens when the ball is rolling towards the kicker and there is a defender charging at the ball. And that is the result. Mm -hmm. Shepard Strikers ball, no. That one's oh. off of Stokes and Scott Stokes is not happy about that call. And I can't say that I don't disagree with him on that one. Cano, right into the defense. Now Britton's going to be able to get to that ball. And he swings it up. Oh, and Jada Cano almost with a goal. But Carlin Camp, I have to say, he has been right there the entire time. Just when it looks like the Scorpions are about to score, Carlin Camp has been the savior of the strikers. And now the Scorpions with a prime opportunity here. Can they take advantage? Narendorf goes across. Carlin Camp steady as always down there. Clears the area. Two minute warning. Taiwan Britton, Alex Spitzer, the ball springs out and that is a two on one violation on the Scorpions. We are in the 39th minute. And the Shepherd Strikers are gonna try to make it three nil. Stokes off of Gonzalez. Britain. Britain with a hard shot. Very dangerous play there. He was surrounded by other players. That was a dangerous kick. But Scott Stokes is going to take another kick for the Shepherd Strikers. Now Gonzalez leaves space behind him, and Scott Stokes saw it, but he could not connect. Goalie's best friend. You see it right here. And just missed, not by much. About five inches to the right, and that very well could have been a goal. Stokes again, blasts one. It goes over the guard of Cano. And Scott Stokes is just launching rockets out there right now.
Little give and go between Stokes and Britton. Spitzer, that one cut off by Narendorf. Britton. Narendorf. Britton takes a shot. That one goes off of Narendorf. Out of time here. Barrera sends it out of play. Just trying to make something happen here. Yeah, center left leg, looking at his clock. Look like you can end anytime, anytime. And referee Mike Hayes blows the whistle. It's a final. Shepard Strikers 2, Strap Scorpions nil. Scorpions had their chances, Josh, and they just could not convert. It was so, so close. And on the other side, Carlin Camp for the Shepherd Strikers made some fantastic saves out there, and it allowed them to keep their two-goal lead, and they come away with three points. So we're going to take a break for the rest of the day. That was the final match of day two. When we come back tomorrow, we will begin day three. Championship Saturday for the Founders and Presidents Conferences. The Champions and Premier Conferences will continue group play. And we will see you then. For Power Soccer Shop and Josh Berger, once again, I'm Tony Jackson. It's been a pleasure bringing you the games so far, and we will see you on Saturday. Good night.